Hold up. Yep. We're live. All right. So, ATM Hold up, actually. Welcome in peace. Today is Tuesday, August 10th, 2020, 2021. Excuse me. I'm a whole year behind. <laughs> 2021. And you are listening to the Seshu Maani Metal Nature. Actually, listening to uh, myself, Brother Wujau, on the Seshu Maani Metal Nature YouTube channel. So again, peace to everyone. Hope everyone is enjoying their evening, Tuesday evening. And so we're going to just have a pretty much um, a review. Another review. This is another after another after another review of figurative expressions. And I wanted to have a discussion about it. Again, even though we, we've discussed this many times on our channel. And um, and in our archives, we have a a um, pretty rich amount of content in our archives covering a lot of topics that you'll hear to get repeated and repeated and repeated. And so I'm just going to showcase those particular previous conversations and kind of have a, um, a, a, a reviewed conversation about it, figurative expressions. And so. Just going to kind of buy some time right now. Uh, I'm going to post a link, the panel link, because as you know, lately we've been having these discussions. I want to give everybody the opportunity to chime in and participate on the panel. And again, if you, you know, if you're a bit hesitant to come on the panel, you don't have to have your camera on or anything like that. You just need a cell phone or laptop, computer iPad, whatever. Just click the link. Come on in. This is a Zoom session. You can come on in and participate. All right. So we're just here. Uh, want to go with figurative expressions. Uh, Hotep Strife is in the chat. Strife is in about in the building. Strife. Hotep. Yeah, and if you're if you're listening in now, you know, make sure you you um, type something in chat so we can see who's who. All right. Sometimes we have um, a nice bit of people watching, but you know, if we don't see your name pop up in the chat, we don't we don't know. So, uh, and and again, as people may tune in, just want to remind everyone the the link to come on the panel to, to participate is in the chat. And we also have, you know, uh, we activated the super chat. A few people were asking us how to, you know, support in that way. And we didn't have super chat uh, even activated before. So now it is. So, you know, I uh, just want to remind everyone from time to time, I'll just be reminding everyone um, that super chat is available and appreciate any, any support um in that way so i'm not alone uh we have uh son at so i don't know if you want to say a few words Hotep, hotepu, ren -i my name is emiket and um yeah i just want to welcome everybody and i just um looking forward to the discussion all right all right so we have five thousand people watching already that's good that's good um Balancey Strife in, in the chat. So peace, shout out. So if you're in, if you're watching, you tuned in, uh, type something, some people tune in on their phone, you don't want to type too much, you can't really type too much uh, there. Sunnet Safa is in the building, Hotep. So I want to have an interesting conversation. Well, we're going to have an interesting conversation and I just want to remind, I'm going to, I'm going to say this a few times because I know people may, may tune in. And um, so, again, the title of this live session is a, Another Review of Figurative Expressions. And I, I have to say that in my experience in dealing with people online on the social media platforms from Facebook to um, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and every, you know, all these social media platforms, I think, 
a major, major stepping, not stepping stone, but a major um, hurdle, a major stumbling, stumbling block in the understanding of a lot of things that people attempt to talk about is due to the lack of knowledge of figurative expressions. And that's just a, a, a general overall assessment of a lot of these pro problems, you know, arguments, debates, and things. So, and lately, I mean, it, it comes up so much that we've done many shows. And again, if you go in our archives, we have many shows dealing with this topic. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just quickly, I'm, I'm, because, you know, we say this, but people, I don't know if people actually go in the archives or know, know the titles of, of the show. So maybe, Emmy Cat, I don't know if you can find them and post a link to, to at least the, the obvious ones. But we talk about this quite often on, our, on the shows, but we have actual shows dedicated to this. And, you know, I know at least of four, four shows. One involved our um, commentary on the brother Rob Bourne and the brother Jabari sit down when they had a sit down. This was like late 2019, early 2020, because we did our show January 8th, 2020. And, and we talked about their show. So it was somewhere around there, the first week of, of um, January or the end of the, that year. Um, and so we played clips of the video and we, um, we spoke about things and then we had a follow-up show, um, um, open discussion show. And Rob Bourne came on the show uh, towards the end, you know, had a discussion. Um, and then another show after that, not, you know, and they weren't necessarily back-to-back -back shows that we had, but we've dedicated shows to this topic. And then the topic has come up or the subject has come up in other shows. So, you know, at this, at some point it's seen, you know, it kind of is, gets a bit frustrating because it feels like we're beating a dead horse. And, and so here we are again, you know, um, August, 2021, and we're talking about figurative expressions. Now I don't mind doing it. it, it and, and what's, what's a good thing about it, although it, it is a bit frustrating is when I do see progress, people are actually taking up time to learn and, and gain a better understanding and, and informing themselves of what figurative expressions are, what figurative language is, and the utility of it to many cultures around the world and how important it was or how it compares to today, everything. So I, I do see people are, they are actually doing research into that and they come back and, and they chime in on discussions and I, and I can see the growth. But it gets frustrating when there's more people, the overwhelming amount of people are not doing that, but yet they have so much to talk about, so much to say, so much to argue, debate and everything. And so it's, it, you know, it's, 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 it, it, for me, it's, it's, um, it's part of the problem. And so anyway, here we are, um, another quick review or another discussion about figurative expressions. All right. And so just want to have a talk about uh, discussion about it. So again, if you want to chime in on this, on this conversation or offer something to it, bring something to the table, the link to the panel is in the chat. And I'm not, actually, it's just myself and uh, Emmy Cat uh, right now anyway. So uh, Emmy Cat, what, what, what do you have to um, speak on this subject right now as we begin to talk? Man, uh, I don't know. I, I would feel like, I just feel like um, we've talked about this so much, but I guess it, there's just a point where um, we got to figure out what is it that makes people not understand, um, you know, something that would seem so basic that it's, it's kind of like, I don't, I, I don't know, trying to figure out where the disconnect is because because um, these are elements that are just always there in, you know, in communication, in, in the written language, in the arts, uh, you know, and all that. So, um, and we see it every day. It's just 
So I'm, I, you know, I'm trying to listen while trying to figure out in my head where the disconnect would, would be. Is it like a legitimate disconnect where is um, maybe people who just are not familiar with these things? Or is it just something that people are just using as an excuse not to, um, you know, not to engage in something? But then, of course, they engage in that thing just in the other side. So I'm thinking, is it just an excuse to bash things at this point so that's what I'm trying to figure out like while you're talking because clearly we've done um so much uh of that and um you know and it's just something that anybody should be able to understand in language and communication so I don't know I, I I'm leaning more towards the uh, side of um people just trying to find an excuse to bash something because like we've talked about it even just with the judgment scene where it's like why would somebody say one thing and then um or, you know and then uh, you know where where do they make a switch between taking things literal and then taking things figurative like where how you know where do they put that switch at so uh, you know and that doesn't seem to make any logical sense so i think it's just people having some kind of bias and 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 just trying to find an excuse to bash something at this point because even when you ask them for that logic where 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 do you turn the switch on for this and for and off for the other they can't explain it which means that it's more just like i feel like doing it so you know if i don't understand something and i don't have time and i don't want to and you know i think it's difficult for me then i'm gonna use um you know you know this spooky stuff and all that as a crash to you know to just say you know that i am that this is beyond me this is above me i ain't got time for this i don't have the capacity mental capacity to understand this or whatever yeah i think you said something important um i actually think that it's willful ignorance at this point and you know i give considerate i give benefit of consideration on a case-by-case basis you know i know not to blanketly um label everyone but there, you know, on a case by case basis, for some people, this is willful ignorance, and it's a it's an excuse, it's a cop out. When I see people who refuse to put in any time to to research research or investigate um, symbolism, uh, metaphors, or all types of figurative expressions, especially on topics of discussions when it involves culture, you know, if we're going to talk about science, if we're going to talk about um physics if we're going to talk about medicine if we're going to talk about those things that is going to be outside of the realm of figurative expressions we all know that and if you notice more so see right now we have we have this a new age movement uh a new age um atheist movement you know um and based on the patterns of behavior and discussions it's it's clear, and I put this on Facebook. To me, it's clear that you know that meant that mindset of or or you know to have that mindset that stance is very restrictive because it's a mindset that's very dismissive for how others express themselves because people refuse to even look into it. So it's almost like trying to have a conversation and a person wants you to hear them. But then when you start talking, they're very dismissive and they don't care about what you're saying. It's all about what they're saying. And that's how people, certain people are, are treating cultures and everything. They're not, they're not trying to find out what the culture means when they say this, that, and a third. What does, what's the real meaning? What is the meaning behind it? You know? and things like that so it's foreign and so it becomes a cop-out in my opinion because it it allows people to not do any work in that regard and for me there's absolutely nothing wrong with that like if i don't have time or even the interest to do to do the necessary work to understand something that should be cool everybody has is entitled to to be that and do that but here's where the problem is, and this is where I have a problem. If I'm, if I'm a person that I don't have time to investigate, to research, to study about something that I'm, I'm not fam too familiar with, then at the same time, I have no business 
trying to debate, argue, or coming to some kind of conclusion about it. Though those two things do not match. So on one hand, yes, not everybody is going to be interested in everything. Not everybody's going to even have the time, even if you're interested, to do things. People got to work. People got children to, to raise, um, uh, families to feed, jobs to do, and stuff like that. So not everybody's going to have the time to go hard on everything that you know they may be interested in. And I get it because that's everybody, including myself. I wish I, I wish I had the time to do the things that, you know, I'm interested in, but here's where the, the, um, discipline comes in or just to, just to being honest with, with yourself type of things come in. And this, this speaks to character is that you have to have enough wherewithal to say, Hey, I, although I, I may be interested, I haven't studied it. I don't have the time to study it. Therefore, I'm not going to pretend and argue about it. I'm not going to debate about it. I'm not going to um, hold a stance about something or a conclusion about something because I haven't done the due diligence. That's where people should be. But there's a, there, there, are, there, are, there are many people in the so-called conscious community that don't do that. They feel empowered or, you know, um, I don't know. They just feel compelled to talk about something that they didn't study. They feel compelled to have a conclusion about something that they don't know anything about. And, you know, everybody has opinions. So it's like, what's the point? Everybody can have an opinion. I can look at a book. I, I can go to a bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, and... 90% of the books I probably never read, but then I could stand at the front door and just give it, just hand out my opinions about all the books in the store. What value would that be? <laughs> it's absolutely zero. <laughs> I'll be faking the funk. And so that's what's happened. A lot of people are faking the funk, pretending to be something that they're not, talk about things that they're not. And so people need to stay in their lanes, really, and understand their limitations. Yeah, see, you mentioned something very important, and it's like, and we see this all the time. It's like, um, like, you know, people will argue, and and I'm I'm gonna talk, um, you know, in regards to, um, you know, Kemet, the language and the culture, because that's what I, you know, I focus primarily on, so I can, you know, I can tell when something is, you know, off and amiss. It's like, um, somebody will come and argue about something you know very well that you probably uh, spend a lot of time. And when we talk about time, it's like years studying something. And then um, somebody will be like, well, then they will like, they will say, they will pull up a source, they'll pull up whatever it is. And they, will do, and, and they will say, well, this source says this. And you know that they don't even understand why the source says what it says. And if, if they're to argue with you to prove the source wrong and you're gonna go to the, to the primaries, they have no capability of even telling whether you are right with what you're reading from the, from the direct uh, primary or even if they're source. They can't even tell or even have, they don't even have the right tools to argue whether, you know, uh, whether the, the source is right or wrong, but they will argue you to that. And this happens from, um, you know, that thing that we see where people just like, like you could go to the bookstore, you could go to the library, you could go on YouTube, or Google, Wikipedia, and then you could find something to try to rebut a point. But then you're trying to rebut something that you don't even understand the fullness of it, only because, you know, you're, you're on, you're, the only mission most of these people have is actually to be on the combative and, and you know, side of things where it's like, I can argue this point. At this point, it's not even about trying to learn because when you're learning, you're not learning while you're talking. Like you can't eat and talk at the same time. So it's like, you can't be learning and teaching at the same time. Learning is a process, it takes time. And then you come out, you know, and then later you can actually share what you've learned. What we see is, you know, people who just be like, I can, I can research something real quick, find a source that can rebut something, and then I can go on YouTube and I can argue people to that. And those people have not, they don't have any rigor, uh, put any rigor in the work. They don't have years of actually studying anything. 
you know, and that's, that's a problem. Like if your job is just to find sources to argue people down, that's not scholarship. Yeah, those are excellent points. Yep. Excellent points. And so what you're speaking to is this adversarial nature that these platforms and this uh, community has, has created. Everything has to be adversarial, you know, and that's very detrimental to progress. I, I've been saying this for years now. I sound like a broken record. I know I do. I sound like I go on my soapbox all the time. But one thing that people may be able to describe it as those, and, and I would describe it myself. Like I tell myself, I sound like a, a broken record. But one thing that people will not be able to do is to refute what I'm saying. Because the record shows all of these YouTube videos and live streams are archived. Unless somebody's channel gets taken down, you can go into the archives of people's channels, different channels, different platforms, and just look at it. You know, there's a lot of content that supports everything that I say about the detrimental ways in which we are handling these things. It's just outright detrimental. There's no progress. And so here we are in 2021. I can show you all a video that we did in 2018, 2019, and another one in 2020. Um, in 2020, where we spoke about figurative expressions. Emmy can put a, li uh, a link to a couple of them um, in the chat already. So when you have time, go check it out. You know, if you haven't, if you've never seen it, go check it out. You know, check checked out the video and and uh, let us know what you think. But we talk about this all the time. But yet now I don't expect everybody to see it because we're not we're not one of those platforms where we get a thousand views when we're live. Right now we have 20, 20 some odd people watching right now. And shout out to everybody who's who's tuned in. But we have 20 people. So that's that's very small. That's that's like just a little, um, you know a small little crowd compared to other platforms. So I get it. Not everybody's going to be exposed, but here's the challenge that we have. See, in order, in order to get bigger exposure, we got to do goofy stuff. We got to, we got to, we got to do, do, do uh, noisy stuff, circusy stuff, goofy stuff. We got to get into pseudo st stuff and gimmicky and, and, um, and and um name our videos with shock value you know title a video with shock value like this this live is called another review of figurative expressions who's gonna watch that like really oh they, they over there another review of figures that's that's too that's too boring if i if i title the video so-and-so against so-and-so so-and-so rips a new one out of so-and-so or, or whatever the case is. And then I use popular names that everybody know about and fill it, fill, fill in the blanks and stuff. Yeah. Clickbait. I'm going to, I'm people are going to click that bad boy and they're going to watch and they want to see some drama. They want to see some fussing. They want to see some arguing. They want to see who, who is going to knock somebody out with this information, who has the aha moments and, the, and the, um, you know, all those kinds of things. So I'm saying that to say, I get it as far as exposure, but this is where I hold all of us accountable, you know, all of us, you know, everybody, like even the, the, the small numbers that we get that watch our shows, because it's such a small number, everybody should, should at least share um, for those people you think are interested and just create the, create the buzz because, you know, we don't, we don't um, go out there and beg cash app the 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 super chat we don't we don't have a show where where we want to hear accolades and praises and stuff like that you don't see any of that stuff on our channel at all and that's not to say that other people shouldn't do it i'm saying as a consequence of us not doing it i get it to the point where what we discuss is not um out there and popular you know it's not it's not reaching people I get that. And because I get it, I do understand why these topics keep coming up. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather a lot of people know about what we talk about and, and, when, and when the topic comes back up, they're addressing things where we can move, like we, we can actually go point for point, not going backwards, 
Like we discuss figurative expressions to the point where, where the conversations that we're having now recently on, on, on these different platforms, it shouldn't be happening. There's no way that somebody's going to tell me that the Egyptian God happy is not a figurative or, or symbolic um, um, item. Nobody should be able to tell you that. Nobody, if, if anybody tells you that happy or any of the Egyptian gods and goddesses, but specifically a recent example was used with the, with the Nile River God, happy. Um, if somebody were to tell you that that's not a God and that that God is not a symbol or, or the Egyptians didn't use symbolism, then, I mean, you have to send them, send them packing and walking the other direction. Because the more we give an audience to, to this silliness, then the more it's going to just keep, keep perpetuating, keep, keep going. You know, so we have to learn, we have to be, be about it, you know. And I, I look at it even in society and social um, interaction, like men, young, young men and men, wearing pants sagging right we a lot of people don't like it that's what i would like to say a lot of people i know don't like it but obviously there's a lot of lot more people who do or don't mind it why because it's still going on and so so much so where people don't mind it they don't say anything but they actually enable it and encourage it because now it's become fashionable. It's become the thing. Like you got to do it for a certain feel good status in society at this point. Sagging pants. And and I I mean to this day I'm never going to get used to that. Like I when I first saw it it coming on it becoming it becoming a trend. I was like please don't let this be a trend. And lo and behold, it is everywhere everywhere you go. I remember I was in a in the line. I forgot where I where I was. I was in line, and there was a guy in front of me ordering something, and he had to like reach up to the counter to either pay for it or sign. You know, you 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 charge your your stuff with your credit card. You got to sign. So he went up and signed, and when he put his hands up on the counter, his pants went boom, all the way down, and everybody behind me and everything. <laughs> it was embarrassing. I, I felt embarrassed for the for the for the guy but it was like whatever <laughs> i mean but anyway i'm 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 going off off a bit but i'm just saying we allow these things we are responsible we are responsible for for these things if we don't change then nothing it's not going to change like what why what are we waiting for like we're waiting for um the sky daddy to come change socially change this change that change that no it's up to us the power is truly with the people we just don't do anything so anyway likewise for this stuff we allow it to keep going on you know we allow it to keep going on um so anyway figure the expression so so um i think you know we're gonna dive in now um if you want to get on the panel i encourage you to get on the panel the the link is in the chat um to, to come on the panel if you have you know anything to offer on the topic of figurative expressions but let me just set up the conversation then and then you know if you want to chime in chime in everybody's invited um so i'm just going to set up the conversation so figurative expressions now again we have quite a few videos dedicated to this topic so i'm just doing a review we're just doing a, another conversation you know about it um but figurative expressions all right. Um, so let's do this. I'll, I'll do it this way. Um, give me one second. Let's go this here. All right. Hopefully you, you, my screen can be seen. Let's make sure of it. All right. So you all know me. I, 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 I use like this whiteboard all the time. As I talk, I'll just type something. So um, literal versus figurative expressions. Most of us know the difference between them, you know, just off, off the rip. Literal versus figurative expressions. But let's read through this real quick. Literal language means exactly what it says, while figurative language uses similes, 
metaphors, hyperbole, and personification to describe something often through comparison with something different. See the examples below. So I have, you know, a contrast between literal descriptions and their figurative counterpart. Okay. So literal, number one, grass looks green. Figurative, the grass looks like spiky green hair. Now, this is an example of a simile. And, and the reason why it is a simile, what, what's a trigger to let us know it's a simile is the, the use of the word like, where, where the comparison is, is obvious. Okay. Next one, sand feels rough. Figuratively said, sand is solid water. That's a metaphor. All right. Next one, the flower smells sweet. A figurative expression using flower. The flower has the sweetest smelling petals in the world. That's a hyperbole. Now, hyperbole is, is, another fan, is a fancy way, basically, of saying exaggeration. Hyperbole. <laughs> hyperbole. Last one, grasshoppers make a high-pitched noise. And then a figurative expression using grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are fiddlers who play their legs. That's personification because we're saying they play their legs. All right, so that's just a, a very quick um, overview of literal versus figurative expressions. And there are many, many more types. Um, I only showed an example of simile, metaphor, hyperbole and personification, but there's many, many more. And so this is an actual phenomenon among all humans. And to dismiss this uh, means of, of, of language is absolutely retarded because it happens today, it's gonna happen tomorrow, it happened yesterday, and then yesterday's before that. Ever since humans have been humans, figurative expressions have existed. And here's a very practical and, and um, obvious way, reason why that it had, you know, absolute utility in use. So think about this, and I say this all the time. Human, the hum, our human species, Homo sapiens sapiens, we have emerged on the scene on the planet Earth roughly for the past 300,000 years. So we as a species, we are roughly 300,000 years old. Now, writing or a form of writing as a form of, of documenting data is only 5,000 years old. Writing roughly began 5,000 years ago. So humans, 300,000, writing, 5,000. So the question is, how did human beings record and document the knowledge of, of the day to be able to pass it on to the next generation and the next and the next and the next? How did they do that? There was no pens, there were no paper, there were no form of writing, anything. They were communicating, speaking, but no writing. No computers, no, no jump drives, no iPads, cell phones, any of that. Floppy disks, none of that stuff. So figurative expressions were invented as a, as a mean of, of human beings' very survival. Because you never want the next generation to start from scratch, right? We, we can all agree with that. Like, if any of you have children, you never want your children to, to enter adulthood starting from scratch. Nobody wants that for their, for their children. That's why parents work hard. Like when, you, when you get of the age and you, and you plan a family, well, I mean, <laughs> some people don't plan a family. It's like, oops, <laughs> I got a family. <laughs> but, you know, if you plan a family, you're in that plan. You're, you're trying to establish things to where when your children become adults, they, they will not have to start over. Hit control, delete. They can pick up where you left off. You want to leave a legacy. You want, you want to 
them to inherit things, you know, and those are material things, financial or otherwise. But the same thing with knowledge. That's why, you know, children go to school. They, they learn the knowledge of the day. And then they can add to that knowledge by, by going to graduate school and, and post high school, college and everything. And they can add. This is what the Ph.D. programs are about. Dissertations, you know, um, are done for the for a thesis um, and, and, and so on. People are trying to add to the body of knowledge in all different fields of, of, of life, you know. So anyway, so how did the ancient people do that? So I'll tell you, and the answer is on the screen, by way of figurative expressions, okay? They had to store information figuratively. Now, um, let me just go on to the next thing here. Real quick read. Figurative speech. A figure of speech or rhetorical figure is an intentional deviation from ordinary language chosen to produce a rhetorical effect. Figures of speech are traditionally classified into schemes which vary uh, the ordinary sequence or pattern of words and tropes where words are made to carry a meaning other than what they ordinarily signify. So that is what figurative speech is. It's an intentional deviation from ordinary language. So now, literally, we can talk. And so here, here, here's the thing. Today, science is, is conveyed using literal speech and literal expressions. But guess what? Science in ancient times was conveyed using figurative speech, figurative language. All right. And, and even there's some scientists today that are trying to push their colleagues to get back into the figurative methods of, of teaching science to, to the layman. And they call it, they don't call it that, they call it storytelling. And a, and a, and a big advocate of that is Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, Bill Nye, the science guy, um, and, and, and those people in, in that um, area and, and, and colleagues of, 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 in that caliber, they're actually pushing, you know, storytelling. They actually have a, a TED talk, I think, or some kind of symposium that they did where they're actually talk, talking about the storytelling of science and so on. So this is something that we have to understand. Now, it's interesting that there are people who claim to be pro-science, pro-STEM, pro-science and everything, but fail to actually see the, the, the um, value and the importance of understanding figurative expressions, especially when talking about ancient or historical things. You know, here we are in 2021. If you want to be rigidly stuck in science in the ways in which science is conveyed, then stay in 2021. Don't talk about anything um, in ancient times or, or, you know, historical ancient times. Don't do that. If you're not willing to, to take time out to understand the mode of the day, that is the, 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 the way of the day for that, for that particular day. So we're, you know, we're running into, into issues um, today because of that, you know? So um, I, I just want to go through a couple of examples of figurative language. So I'm going to pull up what everybody has access to. Everybody has access to Wikipedia. So I'm going to pull up Wikipedia, and I pulled up literal and figurative language on Wikipedia. Okay, let me see if I can blow it up some more. Make sure you guys can see it. All right, how was that? Is that better? Looks like it. So I think everybody can read that. All right, so I'm just going to walk through this, you know. And, um, you know, so while I'm looking at this, I can't see the chat. So if you have any questions, the link is there. Get on the, come on the panel 
and um i don't mind being interrupted because i can't see uh any anyone right now but i'll i'll get back to the chat so i just want to go through this uh now you now let me say something about wikipedia i i remember when wikipedia was first being used on online especially when it comes to scholastic you know scholarly type conversations and stuff like that and wikipedia and i remember that people were were being clowned you know or snapped on if you were to use wikipedia or or um, pull it up and everything I thought, what wikipedia oh man that's pseudo you know why are you using wikipedia or whatever and that's crazy because now years later wikipedia is is one of the top go-to um sources because and and you know it's um it's not bad at all wikipedia is like any other encyclopedia at this point because wikipedia's articles what people didn't realize when it first came out and you know obviously they they improved it but what people didn't realize um is that wikipedia has super super scripted numbers that point to the primary sources or at least references where where the article is being is pulling information from. So, if Wikipedia is pseudo, just because it's because it's Wikipedia, then that means all of the sources and references that that the 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 article is pulling from is pseudo as well, just as a blanket thing. And that's not scholarship. That's not scientific at all. You know. So anyway, I just want to make that comment about Wikipedia. You know, I, I, it's come a long way because people don't say that anymore. People actually respect Wikipedia now um, because of what I just said, because they can go to the sources. So like, like this one here, whatever it said right here, you pull this up. And I don't know if you can see that bubble on the screen, but this is from um, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Figure of Speech, 2015. You know, you, you just hot, hover over the superscript numbers. It tells you the references and they're all at the bottom. Go to the bottom. They're all there. Anyway, literal and figurative language. So literal and figurative language is a distinction within some fields of language analysis, in particular style, uh, stylistics, rhetoric, and semantics. Now, my thing is semantics. You know, I, I, I'm heavy on semantics, and it is definitely a, an issue in semantics because semantics means meaning. So to ascertain, ascertain the meaning of something, you have to know or have to have the ability to dis discern the rhetorical style. You know, if it's um, figurative, if it's literal, if it's a combination, you know, and everything like that. All right. So literal language uses words exactly according to, to their conventionally accepted meanings or denotation. And everyone should know denotation is different from connotation. Okay, so that's what literal language is. Figurative or non-literal language uses words in a way that deviates from their conventionally accepted definitions in order to convey a more complicated meaning or heightened effect. Now, I, I highlighted complicated because, again, in, in historical and ancient times, when the, the people who were specialists in certain areas wanted to convey complex things, and whatnot, they use figurative language. And it still happens to this very day. It still happens. Figurative language is often created by presenting words in such a way that they are equated, compared, or associated with normally unrelated meanings. Literal usage confers meanings to words in the sense of the meaning that they have by themselves outside any figure of speech. It maintains a consistent meaning regardless of the context with the intended meaning corresponding exactly to the meaning of the individual words. Now, figurative use of language is the use of words or phrases that implies a non-literal meaning, which does not make sense or that could also be true. And then it goes on to deal with um, Aristotle and Quintilian and so on. So I'm gonna skip that. I just want to give an overview again from Wikipedia of literal versus figurative language. But I want to really get down to the types. And we're down here. Okay. 
So here are, the, here are some of the types of figurative expressions. So I just want to kind of review these here. So the first one is simile. A simile is, is a comparison of two things indicated by some connective, usually like, as, than, or a verb such as resembles to show how they are similar. So simile can be looked at as a short way of saying similar. All right. So here's an example. His cheeks were like roses. See the word like? That's a connector. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like che a cherry. And the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. Emphasis added. Okay, that's an example. The next one, a metaphor. Now, you know, if all of you all are watching are already familiar with this, then, you know, I apologize for the boredom. But I feel it necessary to do this. Because because if you if you already know this and and this is, you know, pretty mundane to you and, and kind of boring, or whatever. Cool. But, you know, take on a responsibility to 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 step up and say something when you see people disregard this stuff. All right. Don't put it on just a few people to do it. Do it. You know, speak up about this stuff when people just don't understand this we got we got to do more so anyway i'm gonna keep going a metaphor a metaphor is a figure of speech in which two essentially unlike things are shown to have a type of resemblance or create a new image the similarities between the objects being compared may be implied rather than directly stated the liter the literary critic and rhetorician rhetor rhetorician <laughs> A.I. Richards divided, divides a metaphor into two parts, the vehicle and the tenor. All right. And those are um, key words there. So here's an example. Fog comes on little cat feet. In this example, little cat feet is the vehicle that carries, that, excuse me, that clarifies the tenor, fog. A comparison between the vehicle and tenor, also called a, a teritium or teritium, compared comparisonist is implicit it's not explicit fall creeps in silent cr fall creeps in silently like a cat so y'all get that fog because cats um are known to be very quiet and creep in that's how fog behaves so fog fog comes in on little cat feet now let's stop right here for a second if I were to say this, or or we just read it, would would we automatically be be labeled as spooky, or religious, or or any of those pejorative, pejor pejoratively used words? Would we? And you no. know, I don't, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said no, but the word that you just highlighted, like fog comes on little cat feet it could have just said like fog arrives you know to a certain to place be kind of because we had that issue with uh you know with happy arriving <laughs> and this is pretty much what you have here like you say the fog the, you know fog comes on like you know so it could you know i it, when you read it it was just funny to me because everybody would accept and understand this when you say the fog comes or even just say the fog arrived you know Everybody be like, okay, cool. The fog, you know, you know, the fog came down. But as soon as you turned it into happy or something to do with Kevin and Cindy, you know, Kevin like, uh, the, you know, the happy comes on like like little happy or whatever happy arrives. That switch would have gone off. Right. All right. So, oh, where my page go? Okay, here we go. So fall comes on little cat feet. You know, are you, you know, are you going to be shamed and, and, and deemed spooky if you said something like that? No. What this does, I'm going to tell you, for, for you to even express this, do you understand that the ability to produce metaphors is a, is a highly intellectual um, um, activity? That actually shows genius. 
because it expands the vocabulary and the imagination of the mind and everything. That's, that's genius. Fall, I mean, and we, and we know this because we listen to it in, in poetry. We listen to it in songs, even rap lyrics, love songs, everything. There's, it's filled with tons of figurative speech. You know, anyway, moving on. Um, an extended metaphor is a metaphor that is continued over multiple sentences. So an example, the sky steps out of her day wear, slips into her shot silk evening dress. An entourage of bats whir and swing at her, at her hem. She's tried on every item in her wardrobe. All right, so an extended metaf metaphor, obviously it is a metaphor, but instead of it being a tight phrase or a sentence, it expands multiple sentences. And let me pause here. An extended, extended metaphor will end up being, or a group of metaphors and extended metaphors piled into one and stuff becomes myth. It's the, it's the ingredients that will produce myth. Okay, M remember that. Maybe we'll come back to that. Onomatopoeia, all right? Onomatopoeia is another figurative expression. It's a word designed to be an imitation of sound. So example, bark, bark, went the dog as he chased the car that roomed past. See this? Roomed and bark bark, those are onomatopoeic words because you're trying to imitate the sound. All right? Vroom. And we do it with motorcycles. Boom, boom, boom. We, we do that to this very day. Is that spooky? No. It's not. Another example, personification. Personification is the attribution of a personal nature or character to inanimate objects or abstract notions, especially as a rhetorical figure. Example, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. Emily Dickinson. Dickinson portrays death as a carriage driver. See, so she personified death as a carriage driver. Now we do it today in many, many ways. Another way, popular way is countries. We personify countries all the time. We'll say um, Iran or Iraq is at war with so-and-so, so-and-so. Um, the White House said, so we'll put voice and a voice box <laughs> and vocal cords in an inanimate object called the White House. The White House said, or the United States is da da da, you know, so we personify these uh, things. Uncle Sam, representative of the United States. Uncle Sam wants you, you know. Uh, so anyway, keep it moving. An oxymoron is another figure of speech. So an oxymoron is a figure of speech in which a pair of opposite or contradictory terms is used together for emphasis. So here's an example. Organized chaos. Same difference. Bitter sweet. These are oxymorons. There's a rap group, I think, organized chaos or organized noise or something like that. But you got the same difference. Bittersweet. All right. Next, paradox. A paradox is a statement or proposition which is self-contradictory, self-contradictory, unreasonable, or illogical. Here's an example. This statement is a lie. See, that's a paradox. <laughs> because if the statement was was if the statement uh, was a lie then you're going to get you're going to twist yourself around into this forever to to do loop it says this 
statement is a lie. It can't be a lie while telling you it is a lie because of what lie means, you know? Um, next, hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech which uses an ex extravagant or exaggerated statement to express strong feelings. Now, I know people who live in hyperbole. People argue and they, and they exaggerate everything. That's, that's terrible. I'm telling you, don't, you know, watch out for that. Watch out for people all together who, do, who, who abuse these things. Anyway, an example. They had been walking so long that John thought he might drink the entire lake when they came upon it. See, to drink the entire lake. Nobody's drinking a lake. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. So here, here's my point, because I, I don't, I don't want to lose the point of, of, of why I'm walking through this. The question is, would, would somebody be called spooky if they said this? Boy, man, I could, I could eat, you know, I could eat the whole grocery store. Nobody would be considered spooky. That's just, that's just a hyperbole for hunger. Like, I'm hungry. What's the reality? What's the figure of speech? It's a hyperbole. I can eat a whole grocery store. Or I can eat some groceries. But the reality is, I'm hungry. That's it. I'm hungry. All right. A couple more. Illusion. Illusion is a reference to a famous character or, or event. An example. A single step can take you through the looking glass if you're not careful. All right. Idiom. An idiom is an expression that has a figurative meaning unrelated to the literal meaning of the phrase. Okay. Now, this is a popular, um, popular one. Metaphors and Id idioms and hyperboles. Here's an example. You should keep your eye out for him. Y'all get that? You should keep your eye out for him. Now, we say, you know, we hear this. We hear this. But the question is, would you consider a person who says this spooky or spooked out or dis dismiss them? No. The reason why is because we understand this figurative expression today. We, ex we understand it. We use it. We understand it. We could dance with it. You know, it's no problem. But unfamiliar figure to expressions oh man all hell breaks loose when that happens all hell breaks loose people who use figures expressions that you're unfamiliar with they're spooky they're religious and and so people take a pos actually take a position against that and today it's called atheism so you got so you got people out here who are pretending to be atheists that are really just taking a position against um, people's use of figure expressions that they don't understand. Yep. That's what's going on. Last one, a pun. A pun is an expression intended for a humorous or rhetorical effect by exploiting different meanings of words. So, the key word here is exploitation of the different meanings of words. All right. Now, this is slightly different from paronymy, where um, the same exploitation is done, but it's, it's um, you're exploiting words because they sound alike. All right, it's a slight difference, more, a little bit more to it, nuanced difference between pun or paronymy. Um, and they use paronymy to, to actually as a neo, neo, neologism to create new words. Um, but here's an example of a pun. I wondered why the ball was getting bigger. Then it hit me. You see that? See, a lot of comedians use puns. A lot of rappers use metaphors. So I'm going to say it again, in the, in the comedian um, 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 industry, comedy industry, they use a lot of puns in the entertainment, um, music industry, hip hop, 
and everything, they use a lot of metaphors. But they can all use all of these things I mentioned. But this is supposed to be that <laughs> that that little drum beat. I wondered why the ball was getting bigger. Then it hit me. You're like, wait a minute, did the ball hit you? Or did you have an epiphany? You see, and it, so they 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 played on that. You know. All right. But anyway, um, and there's there's more to it, but I just wanted to go over this i mean you know you all could just pull this up and read it i didn't have to read this to you to you all i know you all can read and everything like that um but i just wanted to go through this and just kind of emphasize um that this stuff exists all the time and it existed ever since ancient times matter of fact in ancient times the, the ancient human populations they're the ones who invented this out of necessity though life depended on it people's very lives depended on the ability to do this because you didn't want to have the next generation start over then humanity would have never made progress all right so people got to think about that but i don't know who's in let me just do it do a check oh it's still just me and um emmy cat i can't even believe it oh yeah no so then dropped in i guess he dropped that he probably was back who's that Saint David, so you know it's one of those rare times. <laughs> who who you say who? David. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to go over that, and I know you know that that was like elementary to some of you all and everything. And if it is, that's fine. But if it is, speak up more though. Don't allow this. Um, don't allow us to keep going backwards or keep you know jogging in the same spot when people don't understand figurative expressions when they're talking about culture um other world views of other people and stuff like that stop them don't entertain that like don't enable it don't enable it because i'm i mean i'm an advocate against it but i'm just me so, and so again, we have dedicated shows on this topic on this very channel. And here we are today doing another show, going over what I just said. But we had two hour, three hour shows on this channel dedicated to this topic. And, and we went in. I could show examples, but I just, I just don't want to repeat all that stuff. So check out the archive. But the reason why I'm bringing this up again tonight is because it comes up every now and then and recently it comes up so i you know participate in conversations on the pseudo killers channel with the brother unk Sheffrin, um cory i am sosa uh who else uh brother kent you know and all all those brothers oh, oh somebody just come in oh. um all those brothers you know cool you know we we, we okay coming in boy coming in flushing and let me mute all right um yeah so all you know all, all all the brothers are cool and everything right but see some things you know i take serious because i i've i've been like a um teacher now i didn't go to college to become a teacher so i don't have a degree in teaching but it's interesting because most of my adult life i've been a teacher you know, not in school, not in, um, you know, K through 12 school, but for adults and children in some capacity, training, teaching, or whatever the case is. So, you know, over the, over my experiences, I've had, I've been forced to study the actual science of teaching as if I was in the profession of being a formal teacher, you know, a formal teacher in school, um, so to speak. And so I have actually studied uh, pedagogical systems and andragogical systems, which is the, the science of teaching adults and the science of teaching children. Pedagogy is, is dealing with children. Andragogy is dealing with adults. And we, we know people who teach. We know that there's a difference. You got to teach adults different than how you teach children. 
and there's a science to it. And so I take those things because, because that's just been around me and, and things that I've done. I take those things seriously, a little more seriously than, than other people. And I understand that, you know, I understand if it's something that not in your face at the time, that's not important, you know, you know, wherever you're, whatever you, you spend your time at and your energy flows, it's going to, it's going to go in that direction. And so I get that. So, so I have, I have patience, I have tolerance um, and some cushion, but I do have a threshold. And when I see things being abused or like, let's say there's a hundred people watching this show right now then that's an opportunity to share and move 100 people forward in, in a progressive way. And I just don't like missing opportunities that, like that or missed opportunities when people um, go the opposite. Not only are they not pushing people forward, but they're actually taking people backwards under the pretense of, you know, being educating people and so on and so forth. That's, that's, that's not cool at all. And so going back to, to me participating on these platforms and everything, I take every opportunity. If I see a teaching moment happen, I try to take advantage of it. And so on these type of topics here, so we, so a recent topic of atheism has, has been in circulation, you know, atheism itself. And um, from there, atheism, it moves over into, you know, African worldviews, African cultures and things like that. But I noticed that in all those conversations, like clockwork, as sure as the sun comes up the next day, it's going to come up tomorrow. The conversation is not going to go anywhere because there's a, there's a stumbling block. There's a block where people would refuse to understand the full scope of whatever it is they're talking about. So I'm gonna give you all you all an example if you are not already aware of it. Recently, um, the example of the definition of atheism. We were talking about the definition of atheism and trying to come up with a working definition to govern a topic. And by the way, don't don't let every don't don't let people um, try to discourage you from being very stickler when it comes to the meanings of words, because communication is a, is a contract. You're actually acting out a contract whenever you communicate with someone. And, and I'm, I'm not going to give a lesson tonight right now, but communication is not what everybody, you know, thinks it is. Everybody's, you know, we take it for granted, but when you having a conversation with someone, there are certain key terms that are um that that can be ambiguous so you have to take away the ambiguity of those words by defining them and then allowing that definition that you do that you give to govern the conversation now that may seem like something like oh why why we gotta go through that just to talk to each other whatever we we do it unconsciously but but sometimes we have to actually intentionally do it consciously and I'm going to tell you when, when it happens and you, don't, and you don't mind at all. If you were going to buy a car or buy a house or sign a contract and everything, you do it. Because in the contract, there are terms that are defined. If you, if, if, I guarantee you, if you have a mortgage, if you're buying a house right now, you have a mortgage, crack open your um, mortgage. All that underwriting you got, look at the terms. They will define the terms at the beginning of the contract. And those definitions governs the rest of the contract. I don't care how you will use those words to your homeboys, your homegirls at the barbershop or the hair salon. That doesn't matter. All that matters is how this word is used in this contract. They don't care. And that's, that's standard. Now, in academia, in scholarship, it's called nomenclature. Every specialized field of study has its own nomenclature. That's why we, and we call it in the, in the legal world, we say legal jargon. So in the courtroom and in law, they'll use words a certain way and they'll be different on the street. So for example, a business, 
in the, in the day to day conversation, we will never call a business a person. But in the courtroom, a business is a bona fide person. It's a fic, uh, a fiction. It's a legal fiction, but it's a person. That's why a, in court, a business can sue someone, someone because it's a person. But on the street, it's like, ah, oh, man, so what? Business is not a person. We don't, we don't see a business as a person. But a business is a person in law. It has a, has a birth certificate called the Articles of Incorporation or Articles of, of Organization. If it's an LLC, it has a social security number called the EIN. You even give it a name, a birth name. And whatever the, whatever the um, name of your business is. You take baby pictures of it. You just call that a logo. You know, you set up a photo album and, a, and, a, and, a, and information about it. We call that a website about us. I'm saying so. Right. So a business is a person in law. But to the everyday, every day, we don't see it as a person. So that's a clear cut example of moving into a specialized field and 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 having to submit to the nomenclature of that field. This is what needs to be advocated on these YouTube streets. You're, I'm, I'm going to charge you all to, to step it up. Demand from people to, when they talk that talk, they have, to, they, have to, they have to bow down to the nomenclature of whatever it is that the field that they're talking about. Don't let somebody talk about medical stuff but try to use street jargon. Don't let them do it. Because the point of it is to remove ambiguity. Every single field of discipline has it. Every one of them. Every single one of them. And Kemet, anthropology as a whole, um, linguistics, culture, study of material culture, and all those kind of things, they have, we have nomenclature to use. And this is how you can tell a pseudo person whether, whether they will admit they're pseudo or not. This is how you could tell a, a pseudo person right off the top is when they use these specialized words in a wrong way. Because what that tells us is that they picked up a book to try to memorize some of the big words in, in, in a field but they never took time to really engage the field itself to know how it's used. They just know the words, but they don't know how they use. So then they come on YouTube and lights, camera, action. All of a sudden they're using these big words and they have no idea what they mean or they're using them out of place. You know, this is why they don't like you, right? <laughs> Cause you, you try to be, and I guess that's just coming from you being a teacher and you want uh, the, you know, everything to be a learning benefit for everybody listening i would just say this is why people don't like you because you try to bring clarity to a conversation to any conversation and try to make sure that the conversation actually moves towards some kind of um you know um resolution because obviously you know with this like you say you know when you're talking about these things things have to be slowed down, you know, thing, people have to use the right words. So nothing is taken out of context and all that, but that's not the intent of those people. Those people are not trying to teach or trying to learn to, you know, to let the viewers learn something. People are actually going on YouTube to, you know, to, um, you know, you know how you go, uh, like, uh, you know, like, you know, when you're MC and you have freestyles and you want to show people your skills, that's what people do. Like, I'm going to show you what I just learned. I, I'll show you what I can actually regurgitate. That's what people do. And then you come in over there, like you're trying to teach. Like, okay, that is something good going on over here. So how can people learn and benefit out of it? And that will require slowing things down. And then that doesn't happen. But I was just going to say, you know, put that in there while you were talking about using the right jargon or nomenclature for every subject. And that, you know, that happens only when you actually take the time to study and, and engage in, in the field that you're actually trying to study to go and teach other people, but that doesn't happen in these instances. Yeah, you know who comes to mind, uh, what I was describing, when people use um, big words out of context, that's a clear indication of, 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 a, of a pseudo. You know, we even have a term for it now, a pseudo. But do y'all remember In Living Color? 
like I, I know, I know everybody remembers in living color, right? One of the Wayans brothers, I forget which one, Damon or, or whatever, but um, there's a character on In Living Color, Oswald Bates. I may, I may have the, I may <laughs> have the character um, confused, but I know it's Oswald something, and and he he's in jail in a couple of scenes, and he's using a bunch of um, a bunch of big, you know, a bunch of big words and stuff like that. I swear, when I turn on some of these YouTube videos and I'm listening, that's what it's like to me, like seriously. And I, you know, I can't put it other way. I I hear people using words way out of their context. You know, I'm all for people expanding their vocabulary. So don't get me wrong at all. I want to be clear about that. I mean, I'm all for people growing and and expanding the vocabulary and and the whole nine. That's why I cringe when I hear people curse. You know, I, I you know I got to think about that. Um, but. If you're going to do it, at least learn what, the, you know, how to use the word. Don't just learn the word. Learn how to use it. Learn, learn how it is used, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's crazy. But these are, these are quick telltale signs of, of, you know, the foolery. It's like, come on, man, get serious. Like, be real. Like, stop fronting, you know, stop fronting. And and they go and, and and this fits anybody. Like I'm not I'm not speaking about any any one person or particular person at all. I, I I see it here and there spread out, you know. So I'm not um speaking about any one person because I don't do the innuendos. I I I'll just mention the names for examples and things, you know. So um I don't want people to try to instigate. That's another thing I can't stand. People instigating it whether it's sound effects or or with words trying to put batteries in people's backs man get out of here you know i don't i don't really that's that's like some some uh high school stuff some high school stuff you you instigate and and this and that so anyway but let me catch you right i'm i'm known see i don't think people don't like me uh because i don't, I don't get that uh at all it's a certain it's a certain mentality that um will push back because because we just do two different things you know because um the thing here's the thing that um like i'm i'm accused of taking the fun out of out of things and i'm all i'm all for fun as a matter of fact on the pseudo killer show yesterday was yesterday um or day before man i'm getting my days mixed up but i think it was yesterday i hopped on the pseudo killer show because the brothers were talk was talking about atheism again and they mentioned my name when it came to you know a couple of egyptian stuff or whatever and so by the time i tuned in i heard my name pop up and everything and there's no no problem with that at all um but when people misrepresent my points or my arguments or you know because I, I don't expect people to quote me um verbatim or anything like that but if they mischaracterize what I'm saying or the points I'm making or, or what was meant or anything like that, I got to clarify. So I came on the show originally to offer clarity to what they were trying to speak for me. I'm like, well, OK, well, I'm here. I can speak for myself. You know, I don't need you to interpret. So let me just say something. And. Um, and so. What happened is the whole conversation got derailed to something totally different. But that's the point of me going on the show was to clarify um, some things. And so the brother Unc had started and I wish he had stayed on point, but he, he deviated. I, I really don't know. I don't really get that. That, that was some real goofy stuff. But the point I'm making is me having fun. Right. I'm all for having fun. They say I, 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 I'm a person that spoils the fun. I'm all for having fun. And so that day I said, OK, this is your, you all's kind of fun. I love it. I like having fun. And if anybody knows me, if anybody's around me, man, they listen, I will have you in stitches. Like straight up, like people tell me that, like people online and they hang like you hang, hang with me or whatever. It's like, man. <laughs> but anyway, so but here's here's a difference. I do not like having fun at the expense of anyone or any progress. So I'm all for handling business, then having fun, taking care of business. Like 
business before pleasure. I, I, am a, I am an advocate of that. Business before pleasure. Handle business. Get the, get the message out. Get the lessons across. Make sure people understand. Then have fun. You know, and you can have fun while doing it, but don't do the goofy stuff and, the, and, and, and all that kind of stuff um, at the expense of people learning and progress. Because how many years after years? Because this is what's happening. These YouTube live streams is, is event, they're, they're eventually just becoming a, a, a way for people to just support themselves. So it's a, it's a kind, it's, it becomes like a selfish thing. Like, okay, I'm going to do this because YouTube partnership, I can get AdSense, I can get some money out of it. I can get the super chat, people could donate. I give people what they want. Everybody wants the drama, everybody wants that. So let me see what I could put with this person, that person. Let me do the ha-ha, he-he, goofy stuff, scam stuff, this, that, and a third. And then voila, boom, we got what we got. I'm like, man, we're not making any progress that way. So yeah, so I, when I come on the scene, it seemed like I spoiled the fun. But no, nah, yesterday... I show that I don't mind the fun. I don't mind having fun. And I'm like, all right, well, if you guys and eat, because man, this this is gonna be some hard headed stuff anyway. I'm I might as well have fun. Um, but you know, I'm accused of 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 spoiling the fun because um you have to get through you have to get through that first before you get to the fun, in in my opinion. And and that's and that's when you really want progress. For everybody to progress together. That's just the bottom line. But you said something, uh, MK. I, I forgot now. But Oswald Bates, man, y'all, if y'all don't, if y'all don't remember, if y'all don't know him, look Oswald Bates up. Look at some um in living color scenes. And just think in your mind, who does that remind you of? Like, think of all the people in the conscious community. Watch, watch Oswald Bates and then try to match up some people. You know, I bet I bet you're gonna bust out laughing. And when you laugh, shoot me a message and tell me and tell me who came up in your mind when you saw it. <laughs> I'm just curious to know who who would would come up in your mind when you see stuff like that. I look like we got some people in here, I think, now. Oh, not people, we got a couple. So you know, welcome to the panel. We got a new Heru and um Dr. Duarte Odara. Greetings. Oh, got it in the cat and brother with y'all. All right, what's that? What's that, brother with y'all? What's that, see, semi catch? What's that, no hero, brother, no hero? What's that, what's everybody on the on the chat, on the on the live? Hey, brother, uh, Aaron. So let me give a shout out to the chat because you know, when we started, you know, we 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 um only had a few people watching so i just want to give a shout out to the to the chat everybody in the chat and um the brother aaron said polite <laughs> um i'm trying to think oh let me just address uh Dasha Reb, i think yeah when i when i was saying a, a business is a person i was i was definitely speaking about american uh, legal system because i'm not familiar with um foreign legal systems and things like that so i was definitely limiting limiting that comment to the american legal system here in the united states a business is a legal fiction it is a person and a and a business can can sue you and you could sue it and it could sue other businesses okay so so you know so i just want to make sure we're clear on that all right um but i don't see anything so I, I don't I don't want anybody to start an argument about that, about my comment. My comment was only for the United States. Could be true elsewhere. I, I don't know. I know you have um, a, a Shiara law in um, some Islamic. What's considered Islamic countries that, that probably operate differently and stuff. So I don't know. And then you have social socialist countries. You have communist uh, things where it's totally different. Sharia, I said. Sharia law. What I say, Shahada law. Shahada law. I'm, boy, I'm, I'm mixing up all, all, all the back Arabic stuff. Somebody take the Shahada. But anyway, 
Yeah. So so anyway, so this discussion, again, is about figurative expressions. And for the life of me, I don't know why people act like it's not a thing. You know, like it's not a thing. Oh, so let me let me share something. All right. So I'm going to open it up and I, w- I want people to click the link to jo- join the panel and, and speak. Okay, while you're sharing, um, there was something maybe that you could touch on. I noticed in the uh, in one of the the live sessions on the on the pseudo killers channel, it was brought up. Something was brought up about um, the average um, remetch not you know being able to to read obviously because not everybody was literate, and the question was um, that if if most of the people could not read, how would they be able to know what is um, you know, all this stuff we're talking about, symbolic and, and, and all that stuff. So, um, you know, obviously that wouldn't make sense, but I don't know if that's something that you've had before uh, or is something that you would want to ex- expound on. Oh, yeah, real quick. Yeah, and that's, I kind of cut myself off, off when I was trying to bring that up too. So, again, going back to the pseudo killers, um, um, when I chimed in yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I am getting my days mixed up. That's crazy. That means, that means, um, I'm not getting enough sleep, y'all. So anyway, um, when I popped in, I popped in because I wanted to clarify some 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 things they were mischaracterizing when they were um, dealing with me. Some things I've said. So yeah, so I you know I wanted to clarify it, but Unc was going into the figurative stuff, sim- symbolisms and everything, and Unc never finished rolling out his point, but. What he did manage to say was that um, he, he, he brought up the fact that all of the ancient Egyptians didn't know how to read. And so his, his, his point that he was implying was if, if the majority of the Egyptians didn't know how to read, how is it that they could understand the figurative expressions? And which would lead, which would lead to a conclusion that the Egyptians were spooky because they really believed that stuff and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's where he was going with it. But I was trying to let him get there first before I address it. But he we, he never got to it, making the whole point. But just to speak on that, that is completely um, illogical. And and you know you know to 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 run down that path that that's a, you know a faulty that's a faulty premise that way um, that he's doing, which will lead to a faulty conclusion. And one thing that I know and I advocate and I say all the time: never acquiesce to a faulty premise. Because by doing so, you will always be led to a faulty conclusion. That's what I was taught um, when I was on the debating team and so on and so forth. So I pass it on to you. And so that's what, exactly what Uncle was doing. Because here's the thing. Figurative expressions is not dependent upon writing at all. Figurative expressions was invented as a survival mechanism in humanity long before writing came about. Writing is only approximately 5,000 years old. Figurative expressions were, were invented way, way, way before that. And it still exists today without the, the need of writing. In oral traditions, in many different cultures around the planet that have oral traditions that, that, that the way they convey information is orally and not in a written format, they use heavy figurative expressions. So figurative expressions is not dependent on writing. So that whole thing that he was about to say and what he did manage to say was was simply a faulty premise. It had nothing to do with anything at all. Yes. And also when you, um, you know, that would also uh, it w- is almost like making an assumption that writing that, you know, the, the written language and the spoken language are two separate um, they are separate, but they, they, that they have nothing in common. And when we know that writing is actually just a representation of the spoken, you know, the spoken language. So pretty much you could actually even tell Ang that writing are symbols, you know, used to represent the spoken language. So he would have to actually understand symbols still at the end of the day. Right. And here's the thing. Um, um, the written form of a sound pattern is an is a symbol of a symbol because remember any given word is not the referent itself so and i always use the word elephant if i say the word elephant and you hear it or if i write it down and you see it whether either those formats 
the sound or the written pattern is not the object itself. The word elephant is not an elephant. The word elephant is simply a placeholder or a, a signifier for the signified and the signified is the actual elephant. And so our yeah. very, our very way of communicating is, is us living in a world of an illusion. And it, it, and it, and it's crazy to me how people who are so dismissive about figurative expressions are actually using them to even communicate symbolisms and symbols and things to communicate each and every day. So when you have a, a, a culture of people that take advantage of this phenomenon, that's genius. And I don't think anybody should ever be dismissive for the genius of, of, of other people. It's very elitist. It's very snobbish and stuck up ish for people to do that. And that's, and that's, and that is, behavior and mentality that that that's prominent in in the various european cultures so those people that think that way they're more european psychologically than they are african psychologically so I, i'll let that marinate for a minute you know um and that's just it and we have to understand that because if you identify check this out Everybody in the chat right now, if you identify yourself as African, whether you've ever been there or not or whatever, if, if that's just what you're used to doing, you identify yourself as African, then you have to ask yourself, what makes you African? Like if, if I identify myself as African and I, and I truly just ask myself the honest question because I can't lie to myself, what actually makes me African? Is it because I have recent um, ancestry, like, you know, in relatively recent times? So, so uh, the majority of my um, autosomal DNA is shared by someone or, or a group of people on the continent now. Is that it? Because if we really, really probe and examine that question, that's a loaded topic that's a loaded topic to discuss i'm not going to deal with it now but that's a loaded thing to talk about but one thing for sure is is if it's a genetic issue then everybody on the planet is african because every living human being on the planet is capable of tracing their ancestry back to the continent of africa because all of our species alive today emerge from the continent so when when we say we're African, we have it's it's a it's a whole lot more than that, and one of the major components of that has to be the psych, the psyche of the various peoples on the continent, and the majority of Africans and the various cultures have a very rich, figurative ways of expressions, and so for anybody here claiming to be African but are dismissive of figurative expressions, guess what? They're, they're pretending to be African when they're really psychologically anti-African. That's it, period. And, 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 you know, we call that impersonation. When you impersonate an African, calling yourself African, but you're not even psychologically identifiable as a majority of, of, of African psychology, how Africans view things. And figure and then, Go ahead, I'm sorry. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I was saying, sorry to interrupt, but uh, just to not to forget the, the stop, this, this question, that uh, it looks like it, it's a question not of the culture itself, in itself, but some something in a, a psycho psychological level because the the things you you're describing. I I just came out. I I heard a a, a, a few things you 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 talked about a uh, 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 hour an hour ago. But uh, uh, 
I I know the 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 topic about the figurative and and, and not figurative expression, but uh, that topic itself, all that you are describing, uh, are present in the uh, uh, Eurocentric culture. You you are talking about linguistics. You are talking about the uh, the the language itself. Uh, how something uh, widely known in the Western civilization. It's not something that they don't know. It's it's an is a question of just uh, don't uh, don't wanting to deal with the 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 cultural reference between the, the words and the things of, uh, to which the words to, uh, re is referring itself. It's a question of a uh, uh, psychological trait. Okay, the, the psychological trait is specific of the Western civilization, but, but it, it doesn't look like a question of uh, specifically culture, cultural issue. Uh, I don't know if my, if I'm correct, but uh, but it, it looks like it, it, that's it, it's a it's a, a point to deal with. Mm -hmm. No, it, it it is, and um, but see, not nah, but it, it is, and I just want to add that um, culture is culture is heavily psychological because culture deals with with tacit agreements between a number of people you know culture is not something that is written it's not something that is created from a from a business meeting you know a round table like people don't come together and say hey let's decide to create a culture culture is usually organically grown through a network of tacit agreements among people and and this and that phenomenon occurs on the site on a psychological level you know, the, the mental level, the mind, and all instruments of the mind and tools, you know, communication, language, um, other expressions and things. And once you get people to synchronize with that, then culture is born and it grows and it breathes and it has to be maintained and this and that, you know. And then from that, people may um, write down maintenance prescriptions for that culture, which therefore becomes the moral code, the constitutions, the bylaws and things like that will come out of it, you know? Um, and so anybody trying to study a culture, they have to engage that. You can't, you can't just bypass the whole psychological stuff, but yet talk about a culture. Mm -hmm. that, that's crazy. And that's what I see people do. They get dismissive. So I just want to share something. Um, I, I'm going to share my screen again. Give me one second. So I'm going to share this. And I, I, listen, I, 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 like I said, we have archive videos on our channel where, where we actually go in for three hours on the topic of figurative versus literal stuff. So I don't, like I said, I don't want to repeat that, but I'm just going to touch on a few examples that we used in the past. So here's a an image of um let me make sure I lock it so everybody can see this. Here's an image of a king, an Egyptian king, Nisudbiti. And um I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but I have a question for everybody in the chat. And I know there's a delay, but I want I want everybody in the chat to try to answer this question. When you see this figure here. Do you see an image of a bull? And by bull, I mean B U L L, a bull. The was the male form of a cow. A bull. Do you see a bull? Just say yes or no if you see a bull. If you see this figure as, as a bull, do you, are, you, are you looking at a bull? No. Okay, so no from the, uh, from the panel. And I know there's a delay, so I'm trying to get, get people in the, in the chat involved because everybody's scared to click the link. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why people don't want to come up in here. Maybe everybody's working. Maybe everybody's sneaking, sneaking off a third shift, second shift, tuning in. You know, um, 
But anyway, so Robert ran. He says no. Who else? I want to see a couple of answers before I move forward. A couple of answers. All right, Damo says no. Aaron, no. Strife, no. Strife trying to be slick. Uh, Stacy Betts, no. Nope. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm, I'm going to keep it moving because, you know, I know that there's a delay. Okay. So we don't see a bull. But the name of this king, or, or one of his names, because we, you know, uh, we should know by now, everybody should know by now that um, from the fifth dynasty forward, the kings had five names. And one of this king, one of this king's name is Kawaf Tau. That's his name. Now his name has the word bull in it. So he's being called a bull. Ka, the word ka is bull. The word waf means to um to suppress or to subdue. And tau is lands, plural. It's the plural, plural form of ta, which means land. So tau. So ka wa waf tau means the bull who subdues the land. The lands, plural. That's what he's called. Now, we all agree that we, we're not looking at a bull, but he is being called a bull. Not only a bull, but a bull who subdues the lands. So I'm bringing this up because this is blatant figurative expression. This is not literal. He is not a literal bull. He is being compared to a bull. And when you want to compare things, you, you invoke figurative expressions, one of the many forms, either metaphor, simile, and I, you know, I, I read through a, a few of them earlier. Okay, so I hope you all get that. This is a clear indication of a figurative expression. And I, I just pulled this out. I mean, when we, when we first showed this, I just randomly pulled this one out. But I could pr probably take every king and show you some figurative attribute or 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 um epithet that they're called in one of their names you know um okay let's let's do another one here, okay here, here's here's this this is funny it should be funny for anybody who who's remotely familiar with ancient egypt okay here's one now this picture is obviously probably small on the screen and you can't read the text here because it's actually damaged. So, but that's not what I want you all to focus on. I'm just going to tell you, this is a, an enthroned nature. This is, this is a God sitting on a throne. We say enthroned. This is an enthroned nature. This nature happens to be, and you, you can see his name up here. Now it's small, but I'm just going to go out on a limb. Can anybody tell me who this is? I know it's small, so I'm, um, you know, I don't expect anybody to get it, but hey, somebody in the chat may know. Or on the panel, on the panel. Anybody on the panel? It's Amen. Not me, unless I guess. I see Amen. Ra, I see Ra at the bottom of it. Okay. okay. Excellent. And that's correct. But they I had to say, yeah, uh, um, Duarte said, I'm in. But this, this is, I'm in, but I'm in Ra, okay? Neb Nesut, so he's the, the Lord of the Thrones. So that's that's what you're seeing right here in the glyphs here. But that's, so this this is Amen. But now here, check this out. What does Amen mean? What does the name Amen mean? A lot. I'm it. I'm perceiving, I'm perceiving. Right, imperceivable or hidden, right? So, yeah. okay, so how is it that we're looking at something that's hidden? How can you see something that's hidden? Isn't that an oxymoron? Didn't we read that earlier? Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with you, because um, they, 
They do the same thing with the revelation too. They call it the apocrypha, which means hidden, but the book is also called the revelation, which means to reveal. So that's the oxymoron. That yes. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but using logic, it would be, you know, like it would be easy to tell that obviously to discuss about the impossible one, obviously, you know, we, you know, got to show it. So, so there is a placeholder that has to be put for that impossible thing in the, you know, in the context of discussion and things like that. So then they would actually have to, you know, represent that which is impossible in this manner. Yeah. And that's the same thing with computers and the number zero. You can't put nothing into a computer. They have to be represented figuratively. So you have the number zero as a placement. All right. So I hope I hope everybody gets that. I mean, this is basic. Like everybody <laughs> and their mother knows that um that I mean like Amen is a famous Egyptian uh, god or deity. And so a lot of people should know um, Amen. And a lot of people knows what the, know what the word Amen means because that's very popular. It's talked about. You don't have to be a um, you know, PhD to understand or, or get that. It means hidden or imperceivable one, the hidden one or imperceivable one. Well, how is it that if he is so hidden, yet why is he so visible? You know? <laughs> And so, and so this is a blatant, blatant, um, you know, obvious, uh, figurative expression, the visible hidden one, you know, that don't even make sense. So, so I'm in a scene because it's a representation, you know, of, of something, but now here's the thing to go even further. And I'm just going to, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. The the name itself is is a clear uh, indication of uh, 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 figurative expression because I know that uh, I didn't see in any place the uh, the translation of a man as unperceivable. I only heard you saying that, but the name uh, hidden is is an indication of uh, figurative expression because. It is hidden from our from, uh, from our senses. Not, there, there's nothing less that the he can be hidden to if, if he was not to the senses. Exactly, and that's why you know I I prefer the the wording um, or translation of imperceivable because something that's hidden could be covered, you know, hidden from sight, and and that and that that gets into you know the particulars. But I'm in really means imperceivable. It doesn't matter what sense you invoke. You're not going to perceive I'm in. But yet he's visible in the form of a figure of a man with a double plume crown and blah, blah, blah. He's sitting on the throne. Uh, this king right here. And this is um, Ramesu or Ramesses, by the way. Uh, we say Ma'atra uh, Meriamun. This king is looking at I'm in, how can you be looking at I'm in, he's supposed to be hidden, you know? Um, <laughs> and, and, it, and it even goes further and see, I'm only bringing this up because these are things right in front of our face. That's telling us that there's a whole bunch of things at play that people are ignoring. And that's fine. If people ignore it, that's cool. But if you don't study and, and you are one who ignores it, don't get on, lights camera action and try to argue don't take a stance don't draw conclusions like why do that that is so unscientific and so un scholarly to do that don't don't you know don't claim to be that and that's the that's the thing um but i'm gonna go further right it's interesting so sorry to say but uh, i i had a, on a, an episode on on a, on a class of egyptian language uh, 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 a few years ago, and uh, a teacher was talking about the math qu uh, question of the image, and she she mentioned that they they count at, at decimal uh, uh, scales, and she was she 
didn't she say that she didn't know about the math and at the same time she said that the egyptians didn't know anything about math mathematics mm. no that ain't true right see and and that's a perfect example of what i'm talking about how can you say that you don't know about egyptian math but then you're going to say egyptian didn't know about math and that's that's the same thing that i i said about sarah sudan seti um when we were when we were about to debate the whole thing about um whether the the um egyptian hieroglyphs been deciphered or not and anybody was thinking like him um how can you if if the if the hieroglyphs were never deciphered then and you've been teaching about egypt for 10 years then then the next question is what the heck were you have you been teaching if if the glyphs haven't been deciphered because everything we know is by way of what they left in writing you got the material culture and stuff but the bulk of what we know is from reading the text reading the papyri, reading the steli, reading the temple walls and everything. So if they haven't been deciphered and you've been teaching for 10 years, then just say you've been scamming people for 10 years then. You know, that's what it boils down to. Uh, that was funny because um, in him saying that, he would say that obviously the Europeans couldn't have deciphered it because they don't have it in them. Uh, black people have this special gift. So then he would say he doesn't, you know, all he has to do, and he was demonstrating how he goes about, you know, um, understanding the, you know, the, the meanings behind the, the, those glyphs. And he had, um, you know, the Shenu with the name of Hatshepsut. So he would say, like, I just look at this for, you know, I take my time. I look at this glyphs, those glyphs over here. I take my time. After a while, I see the name Hatshepsut. And in that, he actually for him reading the same as what has been deciphered and then say that it hasn't been deciphered, but he arrives at the same name. That was actually like, yeah, that was pretty much also an oxymoron at the same, at the same time. Yep. So, okay, I, I just want to move to something else I want to show. So here, here's the hymn to Amun-Ra, right? And so if you want the primary for it, it is in the Leiden, what's now called the Leiden Papyrus. And this is chapter 200 of it. All right. And it's the hymn to Amun-Ra. And there's a line in here that speaks to the imperceptibility of Amen. And it emphasizes it. And this is the English. But the um the actual text says, Burek Necheru, Nebku, excuse me, Nebu Kiev Ma'a, which is none of the gods knows. So Bu is none and negation. Rek is to know. So it's saying none. The gods don't know, and it's a Nebu, none of the gods, all of the gods know what Kiev Ma'a, his true form. Ki, Kiev is his form, and Ma'a is true. So none of the gods know his true form. Then it goes on to say, Nim Seshim F Perku Her Seshu. And his image is not revealed in the writings. But check this out. His image is revealed in the writings. I mean, we see writings and then we got his image. We see writings and we got his image. <laughs> so this is not what people think it means on the surface. And this is what I mean. You got people who, who won't even try to understand what's really being said here. But yet they will come <laughs> to conclusions and have so much to say about things like this. And I'm, gonna, I'm just showing this these random examples but this goes all across the board come on man he wrote for, for 10 years say it again he ruled and came it for 10 years <laughs> oh but check out the first line so we have um wa i'm in i'm in which is the word wa means one right it's the number one and Outside of new, new numerals, it means unique, something that is so or unique. So the word wa, so we have unique is amen, wa amen. So unique is amen. And then we have amenu su, which is himself is hidden. But the way they translate it is who keeps himself concealed. And then irsen from them. And then who, who hides himself 
uh, from the gods. And that would be um, Sahapusu Er Necheru. So this is who hides himself from the gods. So we have a Necher, a god, who hides himself from the, uh, all the other gods. And then it says, no one knows his nature. Burektu Yunef, which, is, which means no one knows his nature. All right. And so all if, if we were to read, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if we were to read this whole thing, this is why, so um, Duarte, this is why I translate Amen as imperceivable because the actual hymn to Amen tells us to because it because no one knows Amen's Ren or true identity, even the other deities don't know. And 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 that's that's all this is figurative way of, of saying that there's an imperceivable aspect of existence that no one knows and no one will ever know because it's, it's consistently imperceivable. And that's what Amen represents. Yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a great con conclusion, even fr uh, uh, from the, 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 the myth itself. And, uh, uh, he is one of the natural which uh, reigns alongside uh, uh, Nun. Mm -hmm. So check out. I mean, I mean, I mean, we could. It's we might as well read the whole thing. It's not that long. Um, no one knows his nature, and nature being um, Yeunef, and that's another word for. And and what's interesting is the word um, Yun is another word. There's another word that um, deals with the characteristics of something, the attributes of something. And that's another word for color. So that's very interesting. So y'all, y'all remember, remember that. We can probably come back to that. Um, and then he is more distant than the sky. Why you distant uh, than the sky? He is deeper than the duat. Mejusu er duat. So he's deeper than the duat. So so he's put so this this him is putting Amen as imperceivable to even the other gods. No one knows his character or attributes, nature. He's farther than the sky. He's deeper than the, um, than the duat. And I, and, and see that, that I mean, I don't, I don't want to turn this into a full blown lesson, but these are some interesting things going on here that on that you, you will only know if you know the language and you are intimate with the culture, because let me show you all something. But I'm about to tell y'all the secrets of the universe right now. Nah. <laughs> um, but I but okay. Who here knows the um the name of the book of the dead? Like what they call the book of the dead. What what's the what's the Egyptian name given to that book? Per Imheru. Okay, per per peret imheru. Runu. Yeah, the fuller title is Rauniu Peret Imheru. Right, but most people just say put it, put it in Heru. All right, the coming forth by day. So, the word day in that phrase is Heru, not not to be confused with Heru Horus, the deity, the god. That's literally the day, uh, the daylight. Heru means daylight, literally, but figuratively, it's consciousness. Okay, so now here's the feminine form. We have. Um, we have a, a word that that is in reference to head, meaning upon something. Now, to be on top or upon something, they're translating it as sky. So remember, human beings live on top of Ta, the, the land of the living, Ta'unk. So those people who are conscious and Heru, the deity, the God, governs or is the king of the living his father Usir is the king of the underworld the Duat and so Amen as this uh, hymn is telling us transcends all of that the living or the, the, the above and below because it's deeper he's deeper than the Duat so it's, it's putting him beyond the under and above the above. And so for this reason, let me go back to his image. 
And for this reason is why he's often painted blue. Because blue is a yun color that represents transcendency, expansiveness. And they colored it, they, they use blue for this for this because the sky appears to go on forever and ever and ever. And that's why they use blue for him in many instances, not all the time, because as you can see, he's he's um look at him here, he's the um reddish brown uh color. But usually his plume will be multicolored. But in here is white. And that may be because some some other colors are not there. But this is why he's often depicted as blue. All right. So I'm just queuing y'all in on a couple of things. That was like a little sidetrack. But anyway, if you keep going, it's it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And it looks like there, there's more to, to know about it because if, if he, he is impossible. And at the same time, they are talking about the... Uh, his his extension he his he, uh, I don't know how I will say this his dimensions so mm -hmm. how can something be be imperceivable and at the same time have dimensions and not just have dimensions but illim, Ill, 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 unlimited dimensions so mm -hmm. there's something there to be said to, to. exactly. And see, we're I'm I'm just sharing this as a as an on the spot thing. But if we were actually to, to dig into this, there's a like you said, there's a lot more to this. But this is an I'm just demonstrating an example of why we shouldn't like allow people to be so dismissive of this phenomenon that happens in other cultures. Now I you know cool. I focus on 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 Kemet, so this is gonna be my focus. So I'm gonna bring up Kemet all the time. But this is true for all the cultures, whether we like them or not, whether we feel like we belong to it or not, or have some kind of affinity to it, that doesn't matter. We have to respect the culture and let it speak to us and not just deem, you know, something as what it is without putting in the, the work. So let me just get through this. So um, then comes a line that I did read. None of the gods knows his true form. Um, Kiev Ma'a, which is true form. Uh, his image is not revealed in the writings. No one has complete testimony concerning him. Um, he is too mysterious. And this word mysterious is the word shata, which is interesting. Come back to that. For his prestigious majesty to be discovered. And shata, the word shata is often translated as mystery, but it's something that is obscure to the untrained. And so, when people say mystery system, mystery school, the word shatau is used. And it only means in a sense of like modern day today with Freemasonry, for example, to a, a Freemason, everything is clear because you're because you're a member of the lodge and you and you learn what you learn. But to the to the outside person or to the non-initiate, this goes for any initiatory system to the non-initiate. Everything is obscure. And people are are know, know enough not to come to any conclusion, but you got knuckleheads around that will look at an obscure thing and then claim it's like it's like UFO. And Neil deGrasse Tyson puts it best about UFOs. Like, if a UFO stands for unidentified flying object, then why are you trying to claim what it is if it's unidentifiable? And that's what people are doing. Like right now, people are are modern day UFO and everything. Um, keep going. He is too great to be questioned, too powerful to be known. Um, one would drop dead instantly from fright on calling out his secret name. So he has a secret name, which is Renef Shatau. You see it here. Renef Shatau. That's a secret name or obscure name, knowingly or unknowingly. All right. The word unknowingly, uh, unknowingly is um, is the same word for ignorance, which is the word chemu. And the word knowingly or name or to know is rek. So reku, chemu, reku. You see it here. Then you go on. It says there is no God able to invoke him. By his name, by it, his name. 
So he can't even be invoked. Hidden by, which means by E, I'm in Ren, his name. So mysterious is he. So this right here is a very important hymn into getting to know the concept of Amen. And that's just it. So this is why, you know, I, I say he's imperceivable and we tap into it. And here, here a statue of Amen. <laughs> that sounds funny, right? I got a statue of the hidden one. <laughs> well, you know, like um, something I, I have been touching on um, is this thing about the unsaved. And I think I mentioned it on another show of yours, brother, John. but to make a long story short, you know, what people try to do when they try to define, I mean, beyond the verse that's already been spoken, they trying to say the unsayable. And then they trying to relate the unsayable to that which is unknowable. So those are two different aspects, the unsayable and the unknowable. So what's been stated are the things that's known about our men. But the, what people try to do is go beyond what's known and say the unsayable. That's what they get in trouble. Well, I hear that, but what we just read, nothing is known of our men. And see, no, that, I mean, like the, the known part is, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. So here's a, here's a difference. Um, Amen is, uh, is, is imperceivable and knowledge comes from per perceiving. And so you can't know what that, which you can't perceive. So a, a, a um, practical demonstration of that is just imagine if you were an eyeball, if all of what you are is an eyeball and there was no such thing as mirrors or reflection, right? You will be able to perceive everything around you except for yourself. You will never, ever be able to perceive yourself. And so in order for you to talk about yourself, you will have to do it in such a way as a reflection on the things that you can see. And Amen is, is exactly that. Amen, <laughs> amen itself. Go ahead. I, 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 but that's exactly, I think that was somebody else about to speak. Yeah, and, and he has even a, an additional characteristic because uh, even if it was, it, it, it was possible for you to perceive and to know it, to know his name, you, uh, you will die. You will die. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. But yet there is, like the brother with John said, there is a representation of that of, of this name called Amira. Now that's not the name because the name would kill the person, like it say. However, there is a representation. So what you know, I would like to say, go, go ahead. Uh, see, as uh, I, I I came from a logic uh, point, I, I I I deal with philosophy and specifically I'm trying to study the logic aspect. Looks like they they were uh, expressing a um, uh, uh, thing we call in logic modality, and specifically the impossibility. It's impossible to know him because even if uh, someone ha had the the for some kind of reason uh, reach the name of Amin, meaning knowing him can, can being able to define with words with names that person would die. So it is totally impossible to know him. Let me, let me say what, what I was going to say. Because I do agree with what you're saying anyway. But um, the, I, in logic and philosophy, the modality and the impossibility part, now I don't really agree with, you know, having modality, modalities or having impossibilities. But I know the, um, the, the, you know, the logic of that. But, you know, one of the things that's happening here is that in philosophy, you know, we speak about phenomena and enumina. The phenomena is basically, you see the P, is basically what they call the perceivable world, phenomena. But the noumena 
is the world that exists, but is so-called imperceivable, yet you can interact with it through abstract reasoning and through consciousness, you can interact with the noumen. Meaning like mathematics would be considered within the noumena. It would be something you could interact with, you could write a symbol for it, you could write a symbol for the number four, but yet you can't hold the number four. The number four is not something you can have or hold. It can be for a cow, for a lemon. So the number four is an abstract. It relates to something. Like I hear the brother would y'all talk about a lot. Relations. I agree. Qu quantity. Relations. But there's also something called qualia or function or relation function. So the way a thing functions and the way a thing relates. So that gets us into meaning and being. And I don't want to be too long. But the basis of my, my premises is that, you know, like if uh, I try to put it in this tone in a simple way, is that if I teach you good, then you automatically learn the opposite. You automatically by default learn the opposite. So if I tell you that our month is deeper than the deepest and higher than the highest, then how do I know that? Uh, our money is unknowable, imperceivable. So how do I perceive that? I can't you see it with my eyes. No. So no. the way I perceive that, the way I perceive that is through the things that I do know. So, no, but if here's, I, I, here's what oh, you're it's, figur it's figurative. Yeah, here, here's what you're missing out. I mean, this is the whole point of this show is that you cannot try to interpret figurative. You have to understand what figurative is. And so amen is imperceivable. Yes. There's no but there's no but there's no there's no break no but. The, the period or anything like that. So when you say amen is imperceivable, but yet the way I perceive him, the you you're 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 violating. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm saying, okay, so but see you're describing everything that I'm I'm saying, I'm I've said already is that in order to represent it, there has to be a signifier. Whereas I'm in, and the concept of it would be the signified. So we use- I totally agree with y'all. I, I don't okay. even know when I said that, it made you think that I was going off in another direction. Oh, I'm, I'm, listen, saying. listen, I'm not saying you're going off. I'm saying you're, oh. you're, you're, you're repeating everything. I don't know when you, when you tuned in, but you're, but you're repeating the things I don't want to long. I don't want to make this video so long. You're you're actually repeating yeah. things I already covered. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you. Oh you're, no, I mean I, I well I do agree with that. That in a, in a certain way I'm repeating what you said. But I was I was trying to add in words like phenomena and noumena, and then explain different things about what what you were saying about you know about perceiving and uh, being imperceptible. But now another thing is that last thing, I do feel like we put in the eyes are important. Seeing is important. They got so many work sayings about seeing and knowing and different things like that. But we also know about hallucinations, illusions, dreams, delusions, things like that. So, but I'm saying this that when we take a look at something like I heard the argument, I'll give it in this, this is my last example. I heard the argument on the other show that you've been on about um, God's being represented, I think. And I hear a lot about noon. So I just want to say that noon, and I don't want to see, I would like to give a quick test question, but noon is represented in ancient Egypt. And not just by the watery picture of noon. I'm saying that noon is represented at the temples as the water in front of the temple. That's the representation of noon. The being new, that's the representation of the being new. But he don't have a temple. Or he don't have a name written up there like that. But he represented. So I know what figurative means. A determinative, a determinative in what they call hieroglyphics and reading that would be a figure of speech or figurative. It would be figurative in its relation to the 
word because it's not spoken. It's not a part of the word, but yet it tells you something about the word, figuratively. So I, I completely understand no. what figuratively means. Well, no, now what you just said kind of show says the opposite. Because okay. Yeah, see, figurative is a is a is a is a literal versus figurative is either an attachment or a detachment from its ordinary meaning. It's a semantic ende uh, endeavor. So figurative means that you are intentionally derailing the the literal sense of a word and going for something else. And so a determinative is the opposite. A determinative is trying to keep the reader on point of what the word is. So I don't think not, you understand. Go ahead. I'm saying I'm saying, well, I, I wouldn't use that example because, I mean, you know, we, we deal with the language all, all day, every day. So, you, you know, a determinative is only called that way because it helps determine the meaning of the word. <laughs> That's I why mean, but every word falls under more than one form of speech. Uh, mm -hmm. All all speech relate like it ain't like like a determinative, a determinative. It's just a determinative and does not relate to any other form of speech or linguistics. So the way in which the no, also wait, wait. relates but, to the language is through. But here, let me let me just tell you. See, this okay. is this is what I mean. See, if if you don't study, like I don't I don't know what you study, so I don't I don't want you to think I'm I'm trying to um judge what you study because so I'm admittedly saying I don't know what you study. So I'm saying okay. if so I'm just saying if if you do not study the language, then it's not a good idea to try to um, speak to it and 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 try to you know form a a a, a thing about it. So so I like I said, I admittedly don't know how well how well you are in the language or whatever, but I will speak for myself. I know I I I this is what I do all the time, and I'm going to tell you that a determinative is only a determinative by function. Because all of the glyphs in and of themselves are pictographs, and but they can function in one of three different ways. The determinative is a function. So a glyph can function as a determinative in one word, but that same glyph can function as a phonograph in another word or even a logograph in a, in a different word. So determinative is only a term, determinative by functionality. And it's only called determinative by scholars as a nickname because it helps determine the meaning of the word only in, in reading. It's not, it's not something that's in the spoken language. And so, um, so but, they, but what they really are, they're classifiers. They're classifiers and, and they're semantics. And if you know what a semantic is, the word semantics deals with meaning. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going I mentioned to, that, meaning and being. You say what? I mentioned that earlier, meaning and being. And I also mentioned function and relation. And I do know what you mean by we just repeating. No, but you just said, you just said figurative, right. though. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the same definition of figurative that you're using, though. Because That's when I look at the, the same thing you was talking about earlier when you was starting out, if I'm not interrupting, then you, you, you read something to these mean to this meaning like this, like figurative language uses figures of speech to be more effective, persuasive, and impact. Figures of speech, such as metaphors, similes, and allusions. You, can you still hear me, would y'all? Yeah, can you. Okay, so fig, is that it reads, uh, now figures of speech, such as metaphors, similes, and allusions, go beyond the literal meaning. See that? Go beyond a little meaning words to give readers new insight. On the other hand, alliterations, imageries, are uh, onomatopoeias, onomatopoeias, are figurative devices that appeal to the senses of the readers. Now that's why I said it was giving too much weight to the observation or perception or perceiving, but because that's just this, one this thing. The, uh, on onomatopoeic. It deals with imitations of sounds. Yeah, and, yeah. I ain't, we ain't I focusing on that. I just said, I, on the other hand, alliterations, imageries, onomatopoeias are figurative devices that appeal to the senses of the readers. And but hold was, up. This I want you to understand. I want you to understand this. 
But I want I you to do. go that, ahead. I want you to understand this. That all I'm saying, because you just said a whole bunch of stuff that don't that that does. I was reading you know, that don't make no. I know, but but I was reading from the same. You know, like from a. a I could I know, could pull out I could, I could pull out a book and read too, and just and just read for nothing. I'm saying we we got to connect it to the conversation. I'm saying what you're saying. I don't I don't want you to do the Oswald Oswald Bates. So what I'm saying is that um, when you said determinatives, you got to understand that the entire word is a figurative act, because if I if I write the word book, whether I write it in English or Latin um, orthography using the English characters or if I write it in the hieroglyphs, that word is not the book itself. So 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 the form of a word is a figurative phenomenon in and of itself. So so for you to say the determinative is just that other, no, that's not that's not it. That's what that's why I try to cut you because no, I, I said deter, I'm saying that a determinative is a figure of speech. No, it's not. Show me, show me, show so, me. So, so wait, wait, wait. Do we wait, do, no, do you speak no, how no, no, do you no, speak no, no, no. no, no, no. Yes, I, I deal with it. I, I teach. I've okay, so then, so then, so then, what's the figures in Medinetta? Ten, I've been speaking for over ten years. Over what's the figures in Medinetta? What's the what? What's the what? What's the? You speak Medinetta. That's the speech part. Now, what are the figures used in Medinetta? I don't know what you mean. You, are you talking about the writing system? Yeah, the figures. What are the figures? You know the figures. They they the pictures. You know that the determinatives. You know that. The hieroglyphs, that's what's used. So then the determinative wait, wait, will wait, become wait. a part of a figure of speech. But you but I know yeah. that you I know that you know what no, you're saying. No, no, but. listen, listen, a figure of speech. How can you tell me that something that you see is a figure of speech? Remember, right I could say, do you see what I'm saying? That's a that's a figure of speech. I don't see what you're saying. I know you don't, but you do know what I'm saying. You see, oh, because seeing is used in the word aspect of knowing. But I, I understand. I, I ain't here to argue, so I'll just say you're right. No, no. I'll move on and I'll no, let it I go and then I'll just no, listen. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. I, but see, here's the difference. I don't want to be right just to <clears throat> just to end. You know, put an end to this part of the conversation. If if I'm gonna be right. I want to no, be right. Man, you're right because I know I, that everything I, I, you're saying I, right, I think I'm just misunderstood. Can you okay. all hear me at this moment? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, somebody else is in here. Uh, to you, brother. To you, bro. This is my son. Yeah, Hotep. Introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, you can chime in. How's it going, brother? Uh, this is my son. Uh, I, uh, I was kind of listening to the conversation, and, and um, I kind of, there's two things I want, want to kind of address. Is, uh, the first part is about uh, how uh, uh, that brother is addressing um, Iman or, or Amen, and then the second one is the whole figure of speech determinative thing that he just said. So for the first thing is just that, you know, um, uh, the, the distraction that I think uh, you may be getting into is that Iman or uh, Amen uh, represents something that it's, it's, it's like speaking of uh, nebuture. It's like speaking of the the law of limits, so to speak. The, the, the you know the, the limits that no one else can reach. We're only in his following. You know the interu are only in his, in his following. Uh, to say that is to say that we're talking about an omnidirectional thing. So basically, what you're talking about is is something that we are within. We are within this kind of hiddenness. OK, we cannot get outside of it if we get in, if if this is the highest, you know, uh, uh, point of all things, so to speak, at least from the from the you know, immanist, um, uh perspective, then what you have is you have a situation where you cannot speak about uh, being outside of Iman. You are an expression thereof. All the injury we are expressions thereof, you know. So so to talk about something that is uh um, to say that this is yeah, that, that, that this is really for us to talk about iman, we have to be relying on on knowledge. But I think you're missing the point. There, the point is is that iman, the exact point. This is what uh, uh, um, Ujjal was trying to tell you a moment ago. The very important point 
that that you have to kind of clarify and, be, and kind of stay on when you're talking about your mind is that this is some this is the this is the 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 the, the wall we can't get over <laughs> you know this is you know this is the the river too wide this is something we we can't you know if we get if, the minute we get you know over the wall we realize there's a higher wall <laughs> you know um these are just you know it's just there's always something more to learn and this this is the problem that uh that, that a lot of atheists get into you know, they, they they forget that this they're supposed to be about in, at least from their perspective, they're supposed to be about skepticism, you know, about self, about checking and 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 criticizing, but they forget to criticize their own thoughts, you know, and 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 and, and the way to keep that in check is to understand that there's always something. I don't care. There's always something you don't know, you know. So you have to be on this constant search and check to make sure that, you, and I think that's actually one of the reasons, uh, in my view, that's one of the reasons that Iman became so popular, you know, um, because uh, philosophically, it was just, you know, uh, that 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 one thing you just really can't get around, you know. So the very point here is that you can't get around it, uh, and 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 you can talk about all of these other things and expressions of imam you know um but to 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 say that you're outside at any point you think you're talking like you're outside of that then 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 you're basically saying that you're outside of that which gave outside of that uh, uh without which you cannot exist which doesn't make sense it's a philosophical flaw you know so anyway the second point was about the, i kind of get your point uh new or heru um about determinative of being a figure of speech, but I also get uh, Jao's point. What he's trying to say, uh, what, what uh, I think Haru's trying to say is that, you know, uh, in our minds, we have to interpret these, uh, when we look at these pictures, uh, uh, we, we, our brains turn this into, into in, information, to, into, not, uh, you know, words and things like that, which, you know, and, and the fact is that you can, um, you can overlap in, in, in kind of putting it with your point, uh, Ujjal, about, um, uh, uh, figurative speech at large, you know, um, uh, the thing about figurative speech is, 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 is in these these work, you know anybody who reads um uh comedic text you know uh a lot will 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 begin to realize that these people use uh, there's always no time that they're speaking and there's not something that they're saying that can't be overlapped with something else that that is said somewhere else it's 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 a it's a big holo it's almost like a big holographic thing a bunch of overlays you know, that you can't really understand unless you read a lot of the stuff, you know, that, that, that they're doing. So you can understand, you know, what this is pointing you to, what that is pointing you to. So, so to, in that respect, I do understand that, you know, even when we see determinatives, you know, uh, even determinatives can, can, can kind of point us to something that we need to be looking at. In other words, it could be kind of, you know, uh, saying, hey, hey, nudge, nudge, go over there and check this out. This is what, you know, you go, if you go there, you follow that breadcrumb, you'll, you'll, you'll get some more knowledge about what we're really trying to say here, you know. So anyway, that's all I want to say. I think you've got to be careful about, you know, uh, saying that knowledge, you know, is what, what, you know, we can't really understand Iman without knowledge. The fact is, is that the very, un uh, the point about Iman is that we cannot understand everything. Mm hmm Okay, I, I want to I want to show something to kind of illustrate what I was saying, just for clarity, because I don't want I don't want anybody to be um, confused about um, what I was saying. So um, let me just quickly. Uh, by the way, I, I don't want, I don't want to give you the wrong impression that I don't want to, I don't I don't understand why you were kind of being you know a stickler about that. Ujjow. I understood exactly what you were trying to say, but I was just yeah. trying to kind of okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm. This is for the for everybody in the chat. Okay. So I just, I just want to uh, add some clarity to what I was uh, saying because I try to make teaching moments out of out of everything. You know, that that's just my one of my habits. So I want to show this. Um, so what I have on the screen and make sure everybody can see it. So I gotta pin my screen for a moment. All right. So what I have on the screen is the word for father. It's the word eat. All right, in the language. This word has four glyphs. Okay, we have a reed leaf, um, a raised bread loaf, 
a horn viper, and a kneeling man. All right. Out of this word, the kneeling man, everyone should 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 know. I'm just making it simple, is a determinative. So the point I was making though is that to to isolate and say the determinative is a, is a figure of speech is completely irrelevant and not um, something to even say. Why? Because the entire word, the entire word is not the referent. The entire word is the referrer. Or as we say in linguistics, we say it's the signifier and not the signified. The signified would be a man, a, a human sentient man, the actual father we're talking about. So all of these glyphs in that sense are have some sort of representation of the object, but not the object itself. So there's no need to say the determinative is fi a figure of speech when the whole thing acts as a figure of speech because it's not a it's not the literal. This word is not the father. You're you're th th this word right here on my screen is not going to give birth to anybody. So so I want to make that 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 distinction because in linguistics. There's, there's a whole thing, you know, it would take me too long to explain, but I wanted to just point that out because the, the point of a determinative is for readers. It's a, we call it a semantic because it actually um, lends itself to the meaning, the semantic meaning of this word, which is the concept side of signs. And so, you know, and like I said, I don't want to turn this to a whole, whole lecture about it, but there, there's more to a word than than what, you know, we normally deal with and, and, and think about that. Every word that we know as a word has three components. It's the form, the meaning and then the link between the two. So every word is really a tri a, a tripart thing It has three parts. And so we're looking at a form, but there's a concept on the other on. That, that's linked to this and that's a man that's a man you know that that has a concept that we call father in english so all of these glyphs are representations um, on the form side so the form side itself is figurative by nature because it's not the thing the word elephant is not the elephant itself no letter in that word elephant is the elephant itself either the entire word the part of the word the space in between the character letters, none of that is the elephant itself. So I just I just wanted to point that out, that bringing that up is it's there's no there's no, you know, that doesn't have that doesn't mean anything. OK, I just want to say that. So determinatives have a function and it helps readers. It's not it's not for speakers. It's for readers. That's it. You know, so but but on on the I'm in on the I'm in thing since it's being brought up. And I and I and I and that's good. Um, I want to demonstrate the amen, right? Um, earlier I said I said, imagine if you were an eyeball. And so this is this is my way of um drawing an eyeball. Okay, so here's the pupil, and that's the whole eyeball, right? So imagine if this was you, like everything that you consider you is this eyeball. Well, because you are the actual object of perception itself you could perceive everything around you like you, you 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 could see anything out here and if i were to switch this over right here so if this was you you're the organ of perception itself so you can see all the objects around you so you have the perceiver which is you and that which is perceived are the objects but guess what so, you so, so the subject object relationship nope it's not subject object. Yeah, the subject is the perceiver, Wujao, and the perceived is the object. That's clear. That's in all mathematics, all linguistics, everything. That's on everything, bro. I was just giving you the word. It's subject object relationship, right there. You are the subject. Okay, so uh, subjectivity and objectivity, subjectification okay. and objectification. Now okay. I know I sound like the dude from Living Color. But that's just what it is. <laughs> no, I, see, I'm just wondering, like, why do you why do you why did you say the subject and object when when. So, OK, in linguistics, the subject and object, though, 
Like you, you just said that, right? So I want you to tell me. The this. only reason I said it is because I thought mm. I felt like you was kind of searching for the other word other than object, like the no. the, the 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 obverse or inverse of object. So I felt like you was looking for the reverse of the word. I know. So no. I just did subject. So, but since you wasn't, I'm listening. I want to keep learning. Okay. So, so in linguistics, the subject and object is not is not as a as a pair. In linguistics, subject is paired up with predicate. You have the subject and the predicate, or the subject and the complement, not the subject and the object. In linguistics, objects are the objects of either prepositions, verbs. You have indirect and direct objects. No, so, I just don't want you to confuse others when you when you because like when you when you mention these term terms, they sound random a little bit. When when I mean I know what I'm doing. So when I say the perceiver, that's and the perceived. I mean, I have the words on the screen. I don't if you're going to interject something and you say subject and object, that's going to take it away from what it is, because th this is not a case of the subject and object. It, it's just not. You know what I'm saying? So what I was what I was getting to, though, is that if if you're the eyeball. And in this instance, you are the actual organ of perception, meaning you're like the, the mind's eye, like I am the mind's eye. No, not that you're the mind eye, that you are the eye itself. Like, like if you were this eyeball, that means that you're the organ of, of sight, the organ of perceived perception itself. Okay, I completely understand. So okay. So, just, okay. So that's so, just one eyeball in one sense. Cause I got other senses, but oh, I'm pretending that I am that eyeball. Okay? Yes, this is hypothetical. I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, I'm, yeah. I know you're not an eyeball. I'm just saying. No, if, I got it, bro. Okay. You don't, right. don't belittle me. I got it. I don't know no, no, I'm not. Saying. Listen, listen. I am not belittling you. Like I don't. I, like I don't want you to get defensive. I'm not belittling you. I'm. No, I'm not defensive. I'm okay, just but, my but as a, but as I'm talking, you're, 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 you know, you're interrupting me. So, so. I'm trying to get it out. And when you interrupt me, I am trying to deal with what your, what your interruptions are. So here's the thing. I'm saying, imagine that you are this eyeball, which would, which would mean that you are the, the actual object or the instrument of perception itself. What this means is that you could perceive everything, everything around you. You could turn to the left, to right, up, down, 360. You could see all of these different things here. OK, and so this is an object, but it's not the subject. But I'm saying so here's the thing. One thing that you will never be able to perceive is yourself. If you were this eyeball. So if you were the actual object of perception itself, the one thing you would never be able to do as such is to perceive yourself. So, so this is where the concept of amen comes into play because there's an aspect of existence that can never be perceived. It will never be perceived. And that's a, that's a limitation that is, is um, embedded in existence itself. And, and, and what that explains to us and what the Egyptians tell us is that nu or nun, that people know as the deity Nun or Nun, Nun who, who has been um, correlated with water, that there's a state of Nun. One of Nun's attributes or states is Amen. Because Nun, when Nun, Nun has no form, so it's infinite and eternal and it is formless. And when something has no form, it is therefore imperceivable. So the imperceivable aspect of nu, nu or nun is amen. I'm going to my last little question because I just think this is funny. So how will we know that, that amun is imperceivable or how do we even know the imperceivable? How do we, listen to my question now, how do we know something imperceivable is imperceivable if it is imperceivable? It's fact. not that you. It's not that you. It's not that you know that it's imperceivable. It's it's it's, it's just uh, uh, a priori. You know, it's just you know yeah, that. So, I think, let me tell you right now, brother. Let me ask you this: Do you know everything at this moment? 
Is there anything that you sense that's out there that you don't know? Is it is it remotely possible that you don't know everything right now? If you don't know the answer to that, then you the one with the problem. Come not on, me. brother. Come on. Not, not dancing around. No, brother. Dancing. If you understand my answer, you say a priori. You speaking <laughs> philosophically. You should know what I'm talking about. Philo ph philosophically, the, the the whole idea. Is yeah, that so this is, it's in, it's in, it, it's embedded, brother. It's embedded in the whole idea. You know, you can't, you can't know something that is unknown. I mean, if that's what you've been taught, then you rock with that. Okay, okay, but brother. No, 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 I brother. To, I happen to know something beyond the unknowable. I spoke on the unsayable and the unknowable earlier. Okay, so if that's know, what you happen you, to think you, and know. Yeah, that's cool, but don't try to make oh, me that's that. Really your question. I something wrong with what I'm doing just because I don't accept your philosophy of if you don't know, you don't know. But then when I ask a question and you don't know. But that's the answer, man. But that, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. Me that's and the try answer to judge me question, by asking me a judgmental question about do I know everything when you know that ain't fair. Well, you know, I Brother, don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Nobody knows. I mean, I, that's the I just said that, though. I just said but that for myself. The, so that's and the I'm answer glad you know that, question. I'm glad, I'm glad you know that I don't know everything. Thing but because anybody knew that. Well, see, see, the brother. thing about it, brothers, I asked you if you knew everything, and then you. And I became, answered you. I said you, if you knew, if I said if you know brother, the answer, question, out. then you know the answer. All right, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. No, what, what, what that is is that, that's that, that's you avoiding the question but in, in, a, in a flamboyant manner. But <laughs> okay. Let, oh, let's 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 just keep it keep it. So I what I don't want. So new hero, I just I just don't want you to feel defensive. And and if you don't think you're being defensive, defensive, you, I'm just gonna say you're coming off that way a bit. So I'm just I just want to bring it to your attention because the brother just simply asked you to 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 further his point. Like obviously he's gonna, he's making a point, but he's asking you do you do you know everything? That's a rhetorical question to 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 keep the, to to go to the next point he's making. Right, and to focus in on 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 what we're supposed to be talking about here, which so is I felt like my the nature of the, that, we're Rajal. talking about we're talking about the nature of the unknown. Well, John, my question was to you, and then not to cut the brother off or anything or lead him out, but my question was really to you. And then the second part is, I felt like my response to him was fair. I, I explained it. What, I said, what, what, what was your the, question? I said, he, I said I said he mentioned the word a priori. So he was speaking from a philosophical view, and Wait, he know what I. So a priori he, is not is not a priori is not always is not is not like know, like. Oh God. Wait, philosophy. Don't, don't like, have man, a, don't you have correct a, me on everything I say, though, bro. Everything oh. I said on the phone, you no. find a way to correct me. I, no. I mean, it's it's the no, way no. to say everything, but you can't point out everything. I mean, no, what I, can I, I say? I, How can I say it, bro? Hold on, hold on, hold on. listen, listen. Can I make a question? Hold on one, one second, one second. I'm saying all I was just saying is that you're connecting. Damn. No, listen, you're connecting the phrase a priori with philosophy as 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 if philosophy has ownership of that phrase. No, I'm going by the previous words that's been used in this conversation, bro. They know what I'm talking about. I don't think you know a lot about philosophy because when I said subject, ob subject, object, you said it wasn't. So I just know where we stand no. on that. And I left no, it no. alone. Listen, but those I know a lot about also philosophy. mentioned earlier a lot Wait. of philosophical words. I know. And so I was I just do. going out for that, bro. I know a lot about philosophy. And I know the philosophical application of the phrase I, a priori. I do know that. I'm just saying when people use it, it doesn't mean they, they talk in philosophical terms all the time and based on this conversation i was talking about something um linguistic and you brought up subject object and you mentioned linguistics so i don't think you know about linguistics well it's a branch of linguistics called philology you ever heard of it phonology philology philology yes i do know yes okay then do, do you think that's got anything to do with ph philosophy and logic Philology. Just philology. Do you think it's got anything, anything in the world? Philology, which is a branch of philosophy and linguistics. Do you think it's got anything to do with philosophy and logic? <laughs> Wait philology. A okay. Philology. Why, don't you, why don't you do this? You, I, I want. I want you to go back to your original question you asked me first, and then let's come back to this point here. 
because I don't want to lose. See, I, I'm a person, I love order and I love structure. So I don't like to run, go down rabbit holes or deviate. So I want to, I want to go to your other question because that's think- really why I like your show. Cause you love structure and you love order. And I do too. That's why I listen to your show. All the things you said you love earlier, like you love to be clear on definitions and things like that. I don't know why you can't see that in me, but I'm listening. Who says I don't? Like, that's what I mean. Like, you, you come off real, like, I don't know, defensive. But go ahead with your, what you, if you remember your question. What was my question? Are you, yeah. I think you addressed the question to me when I, no. I, wait, yeah. wait, just tell me, I, if, I, if I remember, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Would y'all would you just tell me what my question is? Did I ask it or is it a question that I'm supposed to answer? No, no, no. You, you, you know, you said you don't want to say that you had a question to me, but I don't, I don't remember. Oh, okay. it. oh my, when I first started out, I you're guess. right now. Uh, the, the initial thing when the brother interrupted that question that I asked, I'll uh, think of it in a second. But the, when the brother interrupted, right when you got through talking, I asked the question. And then he interrupted, but I, you're right. I have, I'll, I'll get the question back in one second. Okay. So let, let's okay, ask okay. somebody else. Okay. Can I ask a question? Can, can yeah. I ask? Oh, go. Oh, no. Yeah. Let's just, uh, if you're, if you're um, speaking for the first time, you know, introduce yourself and all that good stuff. Peace. It's due diligence from uh, OKC. All right. Peace to you. Hotel. So you was uh explaining like, the perceiver and the perceived, and you were saying that the perceiver cannot perceive perceive itself. I, right. I can I can follow that logic, but then I can also see it in a way that a perceiver could perceive itself because it depends on if we talking literally or or philosophically, right? Like we know, like we know, like in real life that an eyeball can't see itself. Mm-hmm. But we do know that a person can't understand itself and perceive itself. So, you know what I mean? So I I, I get it philosophically, but literally I feel like it's kind of, it kind of toasts the line. Does okay. that make sense? So, can I make a question? Hey, wait, all right, go ahead. You, you all go come back around to me because I want to I address what the brother just said. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Was a, it really was addressed to you, Jawu, because you're the one that was making the point. But the brother can speak if he wants to. I don't. I don't mind. But I would like to hear what you have to say first, if that's okay. But if the it's your show, so run it how you want. But it was addressed to you. Yeah, but uh, um, I'm 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 interested in what they got to say when it was addressed to me. So <laughs> I I come I I got you. So I'm gonna let uh um them speak first. I'm yeah, not- my mine is a question too because uh, I. I understand that what you are showing is just to make a point about the figure, figurative as, aspect of the definition, the, the definition of the the phenomena or the things which the the image were, would like uh, uh, would like to say when they were talking about amen, and by the the aspect that you were showing about the the eyeball which cannot be cannot perceive itself and uh, from the first line of the of the text of the hymn of to uh, a man uh, him as a wa as a, a singularity uh, i mean it looks like they were talking about that singularity that that aspect of the conscience which can perceive but cannot perceive itself like how can we perceive our conscience conscience Besides the fact that we are it. Mm-hmm. So, and that's good. I'm glad you said that. So let me let me go back to um, due diligence. Um, but wait a minute. Let me put this back up on the screen. I moved it. All right. So I have this back on the screen. So um, it sounds like you understand what I'm saying. But so I'm I'm only showing this as a as an illustration of the point. And the point is is that there is a an aspect of existence itself that will be was and is imperceivable and there's no getting around that and so what i'm illustrating that is in the in the human being i i'm using this as an example of us as human individuals that if you imagine yourself as the actual 
um, item of action, you can do what you do, but you can't do it upon yourself. So I'm using the 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 sense of sight. So if if you if you were this eyeball, then you can perform the duties of of sight, seeing, but all that you can see is everything around you, 360s and all gyration in, in all directions and gyrate whatever way you want. But the one thing that you will not be able to do is see yourself or perceive yourself. And so and so we could take it deeper. I just use this as an example, but we could take it deeper to what you just said. The actual self, there, there is an aspect of us that we will never perceive because it is the part of us that answers to to I what 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 Freud and all all the um, psychoanalysts call ego or this I ness this super ego this this I and there's a there's a self part of us that is imperceptible so our men exist in every human being as ourselves but it's the it's the true self that we can never perceive that's why we refer right. to it as our men. And so, and so check this out. So the only way that we can even know, getting back to the knowledge point or perceive is to project outward. And we start to identify with that, which we do perceive. And so, and so we start to identify. So, so like this eyeball will have to only, will only be able to identify itself and its attributes by the things it sees because it can, it don't, it has no other reference point. And so th this is why the human being is a is a split, is a duality. We have the self and then we have the person. And so we identify with the person most of our lives. But there's traditions and cultures around the planet that actually takes people through a journey to study the self and not the person, to go back inward to study the self and not the person. Because the self is imperceivable. So you have to you have to study it by by that which is perceived. And that's a whole pedagogical system, initiatory system where they, they train you to do that. And so it's it's a lot to it. I, so all I was saying was I'm in is, is I mean, this conversation started off with the whole conversation about figurative stuff. And I was just saying it's blatantly figurative when a a deity who's who's name itself the word i'm in means imperceivable but yet we can actually see him the egyptians drew him carved him colored him everything that's kind of strange so it's a, it's a blatant figurative expression it's like okay listen i'm in is the imp imperceivable aspect of existence but here he is <laughs> i remember my question now okay go ahead how do we perceive the imperceivable if the imperceivable is imperceivable. You don't. You don't. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point, That's the point that you don't. You, you can't get no, your head around. You, okay. Okay. Wait. 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 I heard your answer. You don't. You don't. Now let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Now I see the same thing happen in Christianity and in religion. No. Nah, no. Nah. Like, Actually, you're the, you're you're the one me, doing it. Bro, come on now. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead with your um no I'm saying the answer I answered you 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 don't you cannot perceive that which is imperceivable Eddie take off so let let, let me ask the question this way how, I apologize for that if my phone interrupted that how can how can you lift a rock you can't lift uh oh <laughs> <laughs> I thought nah, you weren't dealing with philosophy. And, and go and go like this. If, if God is what well, omnipowerful, <laughs> can he create something that he can't live? <laughs> okay. Uh, would y'all, I'm sorry, I missed a lot of that because I had something going on. But can I finish my point or did I miss something where my point will be mute? Move. No, no, you 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 cut out. So just repeat what you're saying. Okay. I, no, no, but, but did, did you get the answer? Your your the answer to your question was no. Okay, okay, I understand. Now, my, I'm just going to repeat my question just for clarity. So my question was, how do we perceive the unperceivable if the imperceivable is imperceivable? You can't. So now, so, so so now, you can't. So, so, so you're so not now, 
Okay, so now you're not perceiving. It's funny, it's you're funny not perceiving. How is this dude going to keep interrupting me? Hold How on. am I going to get the point across? That, 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 any kind of that, that, point out. So I'm, we're listening. Let, let, let get your whole point out so we can we can understand it. Because see, the question is already meta me, meta grammar or meta linguistic. Because I'm saying the word imperceptible or imperceivable three times. And then I'm saying the word perceive the first time. So I'm saying, how do we perceive? So that's one thing. Now we're going to get to the paradox. How do we perceive the imperceivable if the imperceivable is not perceivable or imperceivable? So here, there we go now. Now, y'all say you can't. It's funny y'all say you can't because the man who say you can't and coined all that is named Emmanuel Kant, K-A-N-T. So now... Let me let me let me help y'all on this. Pick y'all up on this. If you say that you perceive the imperceivable, that's already a contradiction, according to your very own statement that the imperceivable is imperceivable. Don't say I'm playing no word games or nothing. This, this is, is this logic, is. and this is philosophy. Adam this is clear logic Adam and Finnish philosophy. Right and if you no, talk Finnish to Finnish anybody. Himself. Okay, now you can go ahead. I'm done. I made my point. You okay. killed yourself, bro. All right, but hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You just cannot perceive, brother. <laughs> so listen, here's the here's the thing. Um, I'm listening, brother. Okay, so if something is imperceivable, let's let's just start start there. Imperceivable. The, 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 How are you spelling that? I am. Or I N. How you saying the word imperceivable? M. M. Okay. Want to? Yeah. All right. Let's. All right. Let's. Let's walk through this. Let's walk through this. Let's. Let's. Let's look up the word imperceivable. Does any? Can anybody do that real quick? Anybody have a have a quick? Yeah, quick... I can. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Which, uh, which, uh, if you don't mind, brother, can I? Can I try? Try something right quick. Okay. It won't take. I don't think it'll take long. Okay. One of the things that you find in 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 uh, in uh, Christianity, you know, uh, and, and other dogmatic type traditions, is that uh, they will take the uh, okay. You, 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 say you have a principle, okay, something that's writ in in in, in the nature of reality itself, okay. Then we come up with numbers or words or whatever symbols to identify those things, okay? Those things that we use to identify that are not those things. That's one of the problems with, with Christianity because what happens is that the principle, uh, the, the symbol becomes more important than the principle itself, okay? So they become idol worshipers in that respect in that they're, they're, they're focusing all of the energy on the symbol itself rather than what the symbol is trying to get across okay this, and so this, when it comes to uh the, uh the unperceptible that word i just used that cannot which uh, that uh, the un unknown or the unseen another word i've used a couple of words i've used these are words that we use to identify something that we can't really that we can't really get our hands, we can't really get to that itch. Our arms don't really reach back there, okay? All right? The word itself that we use to, to, to call it, you know, the itch, is not the itch, okay? So in my view, and I could be wrong here, brother, you are getting caught up on the word itch as opposed to the, trying to get at you know, the itch, and it's the it's the effort of trying to get to that itch, when it particularly when it's dealing with the uncer with uncertainty or imperceptible, the unperceptible. You know, um, when you're trying to get to those that itch, that is the very process, the revelation. You know, uh, or at least that's the process by which by which revelation comes. That's how we know what we know. You know, it's the it's the act of trying to get to the itch that's what motivates us that's what drives us okay so so okay okay so i want to get back to, 
Okay. I, I, the, I found the, the, the words okay. is unperceivable or imperceptible. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the, the, the East, some Eastern cultures like the, the Zen culture talking about their relation, uh, relationship which the word has with us and the object which it, they represent. The word functions as our hand pointing at something. Some people, because the word is an is a abstract device, it's difficult to, to see the word as, as we can see a, a finger being pointing at something. But, but the, the whole confusion of the literal and, and uh, uh, figurative expression is like somebody, someone is pointing at something and you being uh, uh, you focus your attention on the finger itself, not that that thing which the finger is pointing at. So we are uh, fighting with the words, but not with what the words is representing. So it's like that we we is happening right now. Okay, so let me let me just back up because. I, that's what I don't want to do because I don't want to overcomplicate it. So remember, the, the the example that I gave is just to illustrate. I think somebody's mute. Uh, I, I just hear some background noise. So if you're not speaking, if you can kindly mute your um mute your mic. Um, so I just use that that example as a visual il illustration of the concept of what it means to be imperceptible. And so I gave an example of such a scenario. I just painted a, a, um, that scenario to illustrate that, that if you were the eyeball itself, if you were the actual instrument of sight, you can obviously perform that duty of seeing, and you can see everything around you, but, but the way, the nature of the way the eyeball is, is mechanically made, you cannot see yourself. And so that, that right there, that, that moment, of awareness that you're unable to see yourself, you know that self becomes imperceivable. And so the, the self itself becomes the imperceivable one. And that is the word amen. Amen is the imperceivable one. Some people say hidden one, but it is, it is, it permeates. It's an aspect of existence that we will not um, ever be able to perceive. Otherwise it's, it's, it, it, it just doesn't mean anything. But on the word imperceive itself, just to, because it, I don't want to get caught up on the word, um, imperceptible, we know that it, it has the prefix M, and M is, a, is an assimilated form of N, which is a negation. It's not the opposite of, it means not the opposite of, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so the, the, the main word is perceptible, which comes from perceive. So if we understand what perceive is, to perceive something is to thoroughly grasp it. And it comes from the actual action of, of touching something and grasping it in your hand. So it comes from the word per, per and then capere, which means to grasp or to take. And literally in your hand. But, but it, it doesn't have a literal hand meaning anymore. It was used to grasp by the mind. And we know the mind doesn't have a literal hand. But it's it's and we say we say other figurative ways of, hey, let me wrap my mind, my mind around it. And what we're saying is, let me perceive it. Let me thoroughly perceive something. Let me thoroughly grasp it. That's what the word um, perceive means. Per means thoroughly. And capere is to grasp. So there's an aspect of existence that we will never thoroughly grasp. It is not graspable. <laughs> it, you know, but I'm saying imperceptible. Okay, and that's it. It's just it's there's no real rocket science with that. But see, now here's the thing: people who are uncomfortable. Well, I'm, here, I'm hearing some echoes going on. Okay, um, people who may be uncomfortable with that that thought or that notion, they may try to wrestle with it with it. And so the Egyptians are 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 conveying that this is normal. There, there's just an aspect of like we can't fly, like human beings cannot fly on on our own. You know, we, obviously we could fly through technology, but we're we're not made to fly. We don't have wings, and none of that. 
So I don't I don't suggest anybody try it. But we we don't fly and we're okay with that. And so another limitation of of our existence and our participation in existence is that there is there is a an aspect of it that we don't perceive and we will never perceive it. And we should be okay with that. The same way we're okay with with not flying. That's it. I mean, I mean, I just threw it, pull that out, but a lot of things human we can't do. We we just don't do. You know, I'm just saying. So it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, this this should this should go over well with everybody. I don't I don't see why there's why there would be any pushback on this at all. And in fact, the Egyptians are explicitly at this point telling us by the hymn to Amen Ra, telling us all this stuff. How is that that his identity, his ren, uh, ren F, as it says, his ren is not known, not even by the other gods and goddesses. None of the other Neturu knows Amen. That means that even what they felt are most important in the culture, figuratively, don't even can't even perceive an aspect of existence. The, the, interesting, the, interesting, the interesting thing about what you just said is, is, is or is, you just pointed out, you know, when you talk about the Ren, you know, uh, you know, literally saying that, you know, the, the Ren of a, of, a, of a man, which, you know, really they're, they're, they're referring to a name, okay, you know, uh, and yet saying no one will know his name, you know, and, and, and they, they may not say it in that particular sentence but in the overall work i've read it you know uh, they do say that you're clear that he's referring that they're referring to amen so uh they're they're saying the name but then they're, they're negating that name later on by saying that no one really knows his name this this is showing you that this is just some this is a place uh you know um uh, this is you know uh, what's the word we're looking for here uh, uh, uh this is uh, something we use as as, as, a, as a as a tool. It's a meta you know, metaphoric to, way. Metaphor. It, it goes back to a figure. The whole subject of of the of the show. Yeah, it's a metaphor. You know, it's a stand in. Yeah, yeah, it's a stand in. That's what. That's a better way. That's a better, better way of what I'm trying to say. It's something that we're using in order to try to get to something that we really know we're not going to get to. But this will give you an idea. This is point right. It's pointing you to you know how you know. You know, uh, uh, keep going. <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean we don't keep stretching for it. You know, so, but, but you know, I mean. Anyway. So I, I, I understand. I understand that you that you're trying to make a, a, a what well, you have made your point dealing with the words and the figurative meanings and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. it's kind of turned into like a, a philosophical type type deal. You know, what I mean, if you want to move forward, that's cool. But I, I would like to like kind of answer the question, though. You know what I mean, like. The question how the unperceivable can be perceived. And I know it was just an example, but if you don't mind, I would just like to kind of expound on it, maybe a way that it could be. If, if that's not too much, because I know that's not the point that you're getting it, getting it, and it's kind of off topic, it'll probably lead us somewhere else. But you know what I mean? If you don't mind. Okay. It's so, well on topic, and I would like to hear the answer, brother, which I don't mind. So no, no, I, 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 just, I don't mind, but I just want to be clear. So you're you're about to tell us how to perceive that which is imperceivable. Correct. My, my opinion. I, I could be wrong, but yeah, I would okay. like to try. I'm, I'm, I'm interested because, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Whenever you deal with perception, it's talking about a senses, not like you're dealing with senses and things that can be perceived in that way. But that's the whole point of like uh, philosophy, contemplation, introspecting uh introspection and contemplation is how you perceive the unperceivable also math help, helps you the x so we do have tools to perceive the unperceivable and you know, like you said perceive have to do with the senses and other touches so we may not have the physicality part of it but we do have tools to help us perceive the unperceivable through contemplation through introspection and math is also one Okay, yeah, but so, I, I pretty much said you're that. contemplating, not wait, perceiving. Wait, wait, one, one second, one second, one second, because <laughs> I don't want everybody to jump on it. What I, what we have to establish first is the proper understanding of, of what's being said. So you have to understand the difference between perception of because you're mm -hmm. you're talking about right. 
Right. The difference between abstract right. and, and then something tangible. So so we we can perceive abstractions, yes, but we cannot perceive that which is imperceptible. And so impercept imperceivability goes beyond the abstract. Like for example, we we can't see um, the number one because you you, you, you you mentioned math. We we're we're not going to go anywhere out there in nature and see one the number one, but yet. Matt, the number one is an abstraction. All the numeral numerals are numbers are an abstraction. We can perceive it. We could do it in our mind. We can actually do perform calculations in our mind and so on and so forth through introspection and everything like you said. But that is completely different than imperceivability. That's that's it. So so I, I don't want you to confuse tangible things versus abstract things. That that go that that our senses are not going to pick up. Um, right, I, I see. I see what you're saying. So you saying if mm -hmm. something is like in imperceivable, that's like saying that it don't exist because the only thing that ah. we know that's, that's, that's no, that's, no, no, that's yeah. uh, no, no, so no. no. Let me get out. Let me get out. Go ahead. Because now, now you're going somewhere. So y'all, y'all, y'all about to make this a two-hour show. I mean, two hour more a long show, uh, talking like this. But go ahead, get it out. What you said? You said talking about something. So, don't exist, right? I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to understand. You know, like I said, I didn't. I didn't claim to be correct from the gate, so it ain't got to be. You know what I mean? It ain't got to be combative. You know what I mean? So no, 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 no. I'm what? Okay, I'm sorry. What I meant, I'm. I want. What I'm saying is that what you're bringing up is is, is a good point. So, yeah. yeah. I'm saying that I, I mean everybody I was actually adding on to what you said like everybody trying to jump on me at the same time <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, I, I mean all, all I was gonna well, say well, I, well I'm with you you got one person with you I got something to say since it was my question and you answered it but so well, you but, you were saying don't confuse imperceivable as being as abstract because it's really not one the same exactly. um but I I kind of I, I think it's kind of parallel because like, let's take for example, because when you talk about unperceivable, because you're trying to relate it to the concept of, I guess, I'm in, or I'm in Ra, or whoever that, that character is, I'm not familiar. And I also jumped in in the, in the middle, but it's the same thing as, as, as talking about God, the thing that's like outside of nature <laughs> or nature in and of itself. You know what I mean? So it's the same concept of trying to perceive and conceive of God, which is really unconceivable but we do and we think that we have a concept of nobody knows if it's correct but i'm saying the tools in order to do that because like we have stuff like there's stuff in science that we can't that that I, that's not perceivable you know what i mean that we have an x for it and that we don't even know if it exists but we come up with these formulas and test it and then it may be true and it may not be true so i'm saying that's a way to go about it not saying that that's you know what i mean i'm saying we do have tools to perceive the unperceivable whenever we start with equations and don't know the answers and don't know if the things exist like the higgs boson and stuff like that yeah we had no yeah, yeah, but, we had no go ahead yeah but brother i mean i i you know i i on that hold on let me tell you this for a moment bro. I, I laid it out already that 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 we can we can always uh, unravel un you know things that we don't know you know that's the, that's not what we're saying here what we're saying is is that in uh, that once we do that then there is th we will realize we look around and we realize that there's an you know there's uh, so much we st in fact often the more that we learn the more that we realize how much we don't know. You keep you keep you know, um, and, and even and even even that even that you know it's like uh, an uncertainty. It's like we you know it's like you know it, it, it's like it, it's not like we're kind of trying to we're saying we know the exact amount. What we're saying is that, oh my god, uh, this is so big, <laughs> you know. Uh, this, this, the, I think the most simple way to look at it is like because uh, you guys keep talking about you know um you know your your perception, but it's very simple even in the wordings that you use. You know, when you say perceive the imperceivable, like even in a math equation, you would look at it like, um, you know how you can say true is equals to not true. Like that doesn't make sense. When you have the not on the other side, the opposite, you can't equate it to something that is not on this end. Like you can say like X equal to not X. So you can say uh, perceivable equal to 
not perceivable. Once you use the word not imperceivable, you can't in invoke perceivable and equate it to that. Like you can actually invoke the rules of, of perceivability in a, in, 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 in a place where there is no perceivability. Like that doesn't really make sense. I hope like how I'm trying to explain it, you know. No, that, that it may absolutely, sense to me. That, that it may makes perfect absolutely. sense to me. Can I, can I expound on? No, that, that did, that made perfect sense. But we do have to do it also have to understand that it's, it's language and it is symbolic and the rules of math and philosophy may not mesh well with each other. So yeah, that's in math, that's a math principle, yes. But when it's not we just a principle, out, it's the language is telling you something yeah, because-, uh, because Okay, within, but do you mind yeah. if I finish? Cause I'll let you finish. Okay, go ahead, sorry. So, so I, I do understand what you're saying as far as just like, it's like saying, uh, whenever you say something doesn't exist, you really can't really expound on something that doesn't exist. But what I'm saying in a philosophical sense, when there there's there's something that don't exist and we wanna wanna know about it, we do have tools to try to see if if we can can perceive these things is what I'm getting at. And like the brother was stating, I understand what you were st stating too, but you still prove my point because. Once we do, let's say we find out something that we didn't know exists, but we thought exists, there's always something on the other side, but that don't negate the point either. Okay, so yeah. I, I don't see how it does it because the point, the, the point, because ultimately what we're trying to say is, is that there is always something that we don't know. The yeah. thing is, for, for instance, let me ask, let me ask, let me ask both you, uh, uh, brother New and the other brother, what am I holding in my hand right now? Okay, let me answer that. Let me let me answer that. 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 Go ahead, bro. But first, first, let's establish this though, that we were talking about the imperceivable, not the unknowable, because the word knowing exactly that hold on, hold on. The word knowing that's epistemology, so that has nothing to do with the the word imperceivable. It has nothing to do with the word imperceivable. That's true. So now, well, and then, and then, 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 first of all, let, hold up, let me finish. Because perceiving we, has we to do with sense. Can I finish? Can I finish, though? Can I'm I finish? with you, brother. I'm building with you. Come I, on, I know, bro. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with I know, you, bro. I know. I'm, I'm saying I want to get my thought out, though, because oh, that's yeah, why bro. I was letting you talk. I know what you're saying. So that has nothing to do with imperce imperceptible, which is the right word. I keep saying imperceivable because that's what we started out saying. And I like new words, so I didn't try to correct nobody. But imperceptible. <laughs> so... So, yeah, so, so, but to make a long story short, the, so now you say, what are you holding in your hand? You're holding yes, your hand in your hand. That's <laughs> my answer. Man, see, y'all going to take us somewhere let else me, that we do me, not need to go, like, right, right, right now, wait, because, wait, 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 um, he, asked, he asked the question, though. Wait, wait, holding wait, my hand in my hand. He, he was wait, trying wait, to make a point. Wait, make your point, bro. Make your hold point. Up. Wait, wait, wait. What? Hold up. Listen, listen. Let's let's take turns because I because I want to say something and I'm trying to be patient, but y'all y'all are getting double and triple turns on me. So so go ahead. So go ahead. Who whoever was last, just just um who was making the point? I know you. you okay, I, I, I was making a point. I, I was making a point. I was making a point. The, the, the fact is is that the fact is, brother, that yeah. you're, you're incorrect. I did not have my hand in my hand at the moment. There was something I had. I had my watch in my hand. You know, uh, and the question is, if you know everything, why didn't you know that? Well, why no. don't you know you holding your no. hand in your hand? Wait, wait. So, so oh. one second. Let, let, um, who, I think the watch is going to speak. You missed it, bro. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, he I think he's holding his watch and he's right. holding his hand in his hand. First. No, but you did answer what he said because you, you said he was talking about the unknowable, not unperceivable. That don't have nothing to do with how you perceive things, right? Yeah. After that we know it's that, something. Oh, it, it certainly. Okay. Can we let um, Dr. Duwaja talk first and then maybe I could go after because I didn't answer our due diligence either way. Why don't you go ahead, guys? Thank you, sister. We, we apologize. It may, it, thank you, sister and Kat. Thank you, brother Jai. Thank you, everybody. But uh, we are dealing with, uh, sister and Kat we make a, made a, a good point. We are dealing with a, a specific aspect of philo philosophy, which is modality. We are talking about the, the remedy. We're talking about the impossibility aspect of reality. Uh, it looks, uh, we can uh, talk about, for example, the infinite. 
né? One of the uh, one of the dimensions, the the dimension aspect aspect of Amen, the inf infinite dimension. We are talking about a, a modality of reality, the impossibility, if impossible, to know everything, to know Amen, the the reality reality which. Uh, Uh, Just know we ain't talking unquote, about knowing. Sorry for the interjection, I, but we're not talking I, about knowing. May I finish? May I, may I, may I finish? Can I? Uh, we are talking about the quote-unquote aspect of known, the unperceivable, the, the unknowing, the, and which is both unperceivable and unknowing because as the no. text says itself, Nobody can know its name. Nobody can tell this name. Nobody can know, not just perceive, can know, not even pronounce. Which, if was, if it, if was possible, if it, not the, that it is, but if it was possible, that person would die. So it is just impossible to know. Amen. Impossible. It's a, it's a philosoph In the philosophical sense, we are talking about the, the concept of. The impossibility, right? Like, like we are, we are not, we are mortal. Our, our body is uh, is mortal. It's impossible to our body to live forever. It's it just uh, impossible. So uh, it's okay, not uh, something okay. different to hold on. Okay, so I want I want to go real quick. So, th listen, this is not that deep, really. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, really, I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go backwards and then forwards as fast as I can. So this is where we we were in the in the past in the in in the past of this conversation. So the ancient Egyptians, they are equating knowledge in this in this conversation. We have the word wreck here. Um, it said none of the gods knows his true form. So the word we have wreck, bu wreck necheru nebu kiev. Ma, which is saying not Bu is not not known by the Neturu, his true form. So it's talking about not having knowledge, and we have to understand what knowledge is. Somebody mentioned epistemology. It's 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 a it's a question of how do you know when you know, and so there is aspects of it called perception, and perception is a word that is used figuratively now, it literally meant to grab something, to reach out and grab something. And so let me go back to where I, where I was with this, with this word. Um, now we're saying, we're, we're putting a negation in front of that. But that literalness of that, of that the original denotation of, of perception was literally to grab something, but it became more metaphorically or figurative, talking about the mind grasping or grabbing something. We have other words for it called comprehension. We have uh, perception and all these other kinds of words for it. So if we understand that in the word perception is the actual words th to thoroughly grasp something, we know that's not literal because the mind is not going to grab anything um, literally, but figuratively it does. And, and this word capere, which means to grasp, is the same word for capture. Our English word capture, to capture something is to take it or to seize it or to grab, excuse me, to grab it. And so what we're saying is not that. So, so how can, so here's the thing. How can you take something that you cannot take? If you, if, if you put a negative in front of capere to grasp some, something, ask yourself, can I grab something that I cannot grab? And the answer is simply no. There's no rocket science to that. You, you cannot grab something that you cannot grab. And you, But cannot... you just said it was figurative. Like we're talking about grasp is in the mind being able to grasp it. And right. then the so, question. So, so wait, wait. The, so, this so, is the question. No, you no, said, no. how can you perceive something that can't be perceived? That's not forgive. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying it doesn't matter what is trying to grab it, whether it's the mind, whether it's the dog down the street or whatever, you cannot grab something um, literally or figuratively that you cannot grab literally. I, I don't agree with that with y'all because it's saying grab, you using it like that. But right now, the literal word for that would be apprehend. 
That mm. word right there, a better word for grab would be apprehend. How do you be a better word? It can't be listen, by listen. Mind, or by by logically or naturally to logically or naturally apprehend a thing is perceivability. No, to listen. logically or naturally apprehend a thing is perceivability. Listen, but, okay, this is what you, wait, 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 hold on one second. See, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I am showing the etymology of this word perceive, and you're you're showing the etymology of the word apprehend. So I'm 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 saying the word capere. The word capere means to grasp or to take something. And you're saying a better word is apprehend. When we're talking about the word perceive, I'm actually st <laughs> still still with the word. How can you how can a better word be another word other than the word I'm talking about? I, I, I'm talking I about said, I said a better word than grab than grab. No, I'm saying the word. For no, I said a better word than grab, not better word than the, any other word that you said. You said it's you can't grab it. I said what they saying is to apprehend it, though, both logically or not saying that. Listen, listen, listen. Wait, 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 listen, read. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen because I know the other night you said you, you um looking at the phone. Don't say it. you right. You right already. Yep. I can't okay. see good. Okay. Yep. Okay. So maybe that may be lending um, to the, to why you're you wanted to reach outside of what I have on the screen. I have on the screen, capere. What it means? It means to grasp or to take or to seize. It's, I the, see. Same, it's the same. It's the same Latin word that we that we use to to come up with the word capture, to capture something. And what I'm saying is if the mind, the, the word perceive is dealing with the mind, the mind's ability to grasp something. So if the mind cannot grasp something, it cannot grasp it. So we put the prefix M. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you cannot grasp something that you cannot grasp. Like, like why, why is that hard? But that's that's my point. You were saying it like a person can't grab it physically, can't grab ah. it. I was never saying that. I was never I was never saying why would I say the mind I, I, I actually said the opposite. I said the mind can, doesn't not have hands to literally reach out and grab anything. I literally said that. Right. What I'm saying is that the mind, uh the word imperceive, imperceivable or perceivable is one is negation, one is not. It has to deal with the mind <laughs> grasping something. And per to perceive something is your mind grasping. Imperceive, imperceptibility is your mind's inability to grasp something. And so we're saying that there's something that is imperceptible, meaning that your mind will not, cannot, and does not grasp it. That's it. I ask a question. Yeah, it's not even like rocket science, like, you know, because I think the, the only problem where you guys have is you're trying to figure out if it's something you can grow to perceive, but to, it's already telling you that no matter what it is, you, no matter what faculties of, perce of perception you use that you have and at what levels, you cannot perceive it. So you cannot perceive that which you cannot perceive. Uh, uh. I understand complete completely the concept, right? You you saying that if if it is true, and in this context, y'all saying that it is true, that there are things that's literally imperceivable. Yes. Right. So it's telling you already, it is true by the sentence that it is something is imperceivable. So you can't switch it to not imperceivable when he's telling you it's imperceivable that's that's all you have to understand from that okay so i'm just Thanks. trying to her part. Um, only only right. moments ago my watch was imperceivable so just to elaborate on it so because we walking through it right so mm -hmm. i'm just trying to make sure i'm understanding right because it's not it's not like this is science right we talking about text from egypt and this is how they feel about something that may or may not exist. This is really a philo philosophical problem, right? That we're really dealing with whenever we deal dealing with it in the terms that we are dealing with it as. You know what I mean? Because we don't know about nothing literally that can be uh, that can't be perceived or, or, or uh, imperceived. 
You know what I mean? So it's really philosophical conversation because we don't even know if there's a thing, if, if there's such a thing. So what I was trying to imply, the question was, how can we, I'm saying we do have tools and we do do that all the time, things that we don't know it exists. But you're saying that literally that it already is, but literally you don't know that. But we just okay. dealing with the text. So, so, so I understand let's deal with the text. Okay, so wait a minute. But no, we don't have to uh, go that route and defer to the text. So so now, now the reason why I brought this illustration up has more value now. So let me ask you a question. If you understand my diagram and what I said about it, hold up. Can y'all still see it? Is it still on screen? Yes, sir. I can see it. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody on YouTube can see it. Okay. So now if you understand this diagram, um, if not, you know, I'll just quickly explain it again. But if you understand this diagram, then I want, I'm going to ask you a question. How, how in the world, if, okay, let me just explain it again quickly. If you and everything that you consider you is this eyeball right here, and I'm, and obviously I'm doing hypothetical. If you were this eyeball, you tell me how would you be able to perceive yourself? And I, I did answer this question, and I, I agree with you that the eyeball in the, fit, in the hypothetical sense can, but in reality, the self can. It's introspection and contemplation. Okay, but see, yeah, right, but, but there's wait, there's wait, something wait, wait, you still wait, wait, will not gonna know. Wait, wait, That's wait, the I, point. I want to I want to walk through this because I want to walk through it. So you said in 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 my diagram in my hy hypothetical, you agree that you can't. But when the moment you jump out of my hypothetical, you say you can. Now, that's the problem right there because the same the same thing, but in, but in a different way. You all did with the word imperceptible, because you you went you had it you had to step outside of the word in order to re try to refute or, or offer some pushback on it. And so here's the thing: the um the self you're not going to be able to contemplate on it. And this is something that the Egyptians were, were conveying. They were saying that the actual self is what? imperceivable. The actual self, what, what you're calling self, like there's, a, like there's a part of you that is the self that is imperceivable. Because, and the reason why is very simple, because you're the actual object of perception. And they deify this as a deity called Sia, which is perception. And which, this which, is what you also yeah. said too, which I will, uh, that I, I don't want to, I don't want to cut you big bro, mm -hmm. but I want to say something that you kind of leave in that too, because you also said there are systems to help you understand this. And I would think people took people do like, that's the whole point of, of, of the Buddha Nirvana and how it goes in the Egyptian spiritual system. Yeah, but was, okay. Was, 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 All right. I, can, I, 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 can, I, can I speak now? Wait, 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 hold on. One, 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 one second, um, Rasan. Let me let me try another example, and then and then and then y'all can have it. So, uh, this is to due diligence. Now, I'm going to use a, a, a an example, and I'm going to ask you a question. So, a uh, wind, right? W i n d wind, the air blowing. We call wind, right? It's we cannot we don't see wind. So I'm just I'm just going to lay that out there. We do not see wind. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How would you draw wind? How would you represent wind visually when it's not an object that is that is uh, susceptible to our, our vision? OK, I, I don't mind answering your question, but I answered this would be the second one I answered back to back. But I really want you to answer my question first before oh, I answer. Wait, I, 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 didn't, I didn't. Okay, go ahead. I didn't hear your question. You said there's a system in place to help people understand the self, and mm -hmm. that's the whole point of one of those systems. I forget. I can't. I forget yeah, the name fast. that you called it. Excuse me, man. So I said that facts, bro. Oh my bad. But anyhow, you you did say there was a system to understand this. So if there's a system that people are in it and you're saying that they putting people through this system to understand the 
imperceivable. Am I saying it right? Mm-hmm. Then there, then it can be perceived. There's why is there a system in order to okay, allow me to, allow me to you answer. feel me? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just I, I, no, I got you. I got you. So the answer is very simple. What they're teaching people and what we're capable of learning is not the the that which is imperceivable itself. We are, we, we're actually taught, and the people in the system that I was speaking of, they're actually taught things that allows them to know that there is something that is imperceivable. They're not, they're not learning the imperceivable. They're actually learning that, the, that, that such a, a, a state exists. Itself. Exactly. So, so it's, it's something completely different. So this Hold is what, on. This Hold is, on. This is what I'm saying. So, for example, and this- What is a Buddha? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? What is a Buddha? Like there, there is, there, there is an awakening to whenever you. That's the whole point of the system to where you can <laughs> grasp it and, and and know. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the system. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Oh. To where if if you get to that point. Now I'm not saying that's that everybody right. can get there, and I'm not oh. saying that everybody you know what I mean can, can grasp it. But I'm saying there are systems that say that if you get to the level of enlightenment, you can understand it. No, now, but. I don't, that, Everything, I, okay, and, and we it? don't even know. We don't even know if it exists. You know what Wait, I mean? So, so this, this is the thing. I'm saying, it's very like you all are going beyond. Like you all are actually <laughs> going too, too, too. Uh, I'm uh, following you, man. You said no, that. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> listen, listen. I, I am. You asked me the question, and I'm, and I answered it. Is that the systems that I was referring to? These initiatory systems. What, what you end up gaining knowledge of is the fact it's, it's almost like the famous saying that the more i learn the more i the more i know the more i know that i do not know and so and, and that's it, and that's that's, a, and that's why in the system right, the first thing that's, 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 that's why you have to the, 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 in the system itself and the reason that they call it a mystery system is because the, the, the first establishment at least from a, a modest position is that you must know that there's something of you that you will never know, but you must keep searching. And that builds revelation. It oh. is the search that is, that is, you know, that is, the, that, that is your path. That is what you should be trying to do. But where do you ever get there? Enlightenment, you know, okay, you, enlightenment, you know, is, is it, one can say that enlightenment is the very knowledge of your limits. Yeah, I wanted to say some real quick. I know, sorry, um, Joe. So, but just do diligence. Just remember that uh, even in in you answering the question with the eyeball, you had to step stop being the eyeball, step out of it in order to perceive. But you have no way of staying in staying as being the eyeball and perceive itself, and that's what is being talked out of. So, you know, as the eyeball, can you perceive? And you said no. You would have to step out of it, but. The question is, as an eyeball, can you perceive? And that is what is being talked about as the main topic. I don't know if you actually, if, if that makes sense, that you kind of understand that you actually Absolutely. have to step out of the, the discussion that is being discussed in order to kind of, you know, figure out how to be part of what is being discussed and then it goes wrong, you know. Uh, no, nah, I, I wouldn't say that. I would just say it's a bad analogy. We got a hypothetical. We're trying to relate it to reality. There's a better way to understand it is using reality than a hypothetical that might not be accurate. Well, no, no, it, no. It was actually good because you yourself you demonstrated that you cannot be the eyeball and perceive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when, we, when talking, but we actually talking about the self. The eyeball actually represents the self. And no, 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 no. But you just say it might not be. Might not. Let me be, let me erase the, not... Let me let me erase the word self off there because because the self will trigger some <laughs> yeah. other discussions. I was in this diagram. The eyeball, that's you. That's all you are is an eyeball. And, and because the eyeball can function as, as, an, as an instrument of, of perception and seeing things, we call it sight, it is the ultimate perceiver. Now, the one thing that is, has a limitation, it can see everything but itself. And so it, it, it in of itself is imperceptible, but it's the instrument of perception. And so it could see everything, but one thing it will never do is be able to see itself. And that I, is, I, that is, that is I, a I, analogy. I'm, I'm going after with y'all now. I, I would I like to say don't. something after with y'all, please. I would I, like I, to say I, something. I'm just going to say, I, 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 do, I, 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 I do absolutely understand the analogy. I, I, I get it. 
You know what I'm saying? But that don't mean I have to necessarily agree with it whenever I deal with it in myself. Like if, if I if I stay in those confines, but I just don't feel like it's realistic because really we are literally talking about the self. That's that's what the analogy that you're making. That's the metaphor you you saying this is you is pertaining to, to the self. That's really so, what we're talking so, about. So you are. Right, so can, can I can I say wait, something? Mediate wait, the conversation. Wait, wait, wait. Just to give some clarity. Yeah, just no, you, a little bit. Oh, no, okay, you, go ahead, Will Jeff. No, I just want to say something very quickly. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to this in the future, due diligence, because <laughs> there, it's obvious that you and I have a different definition of self. And so that's that's probably the root of of this um this you know right here because on one hand you you answered correctly by saying you you understand that the eye that that you as an eyeball will never be able to see yourself so you agree with that and as Emiket said within the confines of of what I presented but now when you change that to the self which is what I did as well that's where we differ so now I I, I see I see the divergence of of what how you um conceptualize the self and me and, and so, my, my, my we'll, explain we'll, the difference we'll, we'll come back to that well i, I wanted to give um new heru a chance because like All i right. said I'm trying to, thank you i'm trying to give everybody to, um uh, a chance before they forget their thoughts real quick okay i'm, I'm gonna do my best to be quick brother um the, the okay when you showed the eye and you had the word self up there you, you, you had the word self up there. You had the word out there. When you ask the question, can the eyeball proceed? Now, just a literal eyeball. That's just one of. That's just one sense receptor, or one sense perceptor. Either one you want to use, perceptor or receptor. The eyeball is a perceptor and a receptor. It receives and perceives <laughs> information. So now. That that eyeball, but when you put self up there, then that would include my hearing, my smelling, my taste, my feel, my oh. touch. So oh. now, now you ask, can I perceive something other than what the eyeball perceive? I don't have to step out the eyeball to do that. I'm still in the eyeball, but just the eyeball is myself, and it includes all of myself and all of my senses. So from that standpoint of view, yes, I can perceive something that was once imperceptible. Now, the next thing is the word self being in the eye. I see what's happening to the conversation because it's something called self-reference or self-referential. I mentioned the word meta earlier. I tried to say phenomena and noumena, but now I'll say metaphysical, but not in the sense of unknown physical or not known about the physical. No, meta means self or self-referential. So self-referential to that which is physical. I'm gonna say it again. Metaphysical is that which is self-referential to that which is physical. And that's why the brother who said earlier, like we trying to get at it and you use grab it and I use apprehension. So that's all I'm saying, that the conversation is meta-linguistic. And so you have to understand that it is a philosophical com conversation. Like I was saying, and like the brother followed up saying that when you ask the question, can I perceive? And then you say, yeah, but the text I'll say, say knowing, I, I, I understand that. But we also understand that knowing is pertaining to epistemology, which is to know things. And then now we're talking about how we sense things or how we be, which is ontology or how things exist in the world, which is the ontology of the thing. So I completely understand the conversation. Now, the last point, um, <laughs> the sister, the last point, the sister was the sister was right. And I agree with her. But she said the same thing I said earlier. I'm going to say my question again, and then I'm going to clear it up. How can you perceive the imperceivable? See, once you try to answer that, that's where you make the mistake, because that's the unsayable. Hold up, I'm going to say it again. How can you perceive the imperceivable? Because once you try to answer that, that is the unsayable. Because if you say it's imperceivable, if you say it's imperceivable, then you don't perceive it. It's so not right, even somebody saying it's not even us saying you are saying it when you're saying it. How can That's you perceive that no. which is not That's that which is impossible? So you no. cannot no. say no. that. Let, how let me can listen to the goddess right quick. I want to hear what no. she no. said. So the answer is you cannot perceive that which is impossible. She, she agrees with you. Impossible. 
Okay, it's the yeah, point. Yeah. It's the point that they've been making from the beginning. But let me just no, say this no, one no, thing. No, 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 no. That's not the same point. That's not the same point. That's a totally you different You said you point. agree with her. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you why. Because she said something beyond what you and what y'all was saying. She said something beyond what y'all saying. Not she said, she said what I'm saying. No, she said what I'm saying before you even cut to the chase. Because even what y'all is trying to explain the unsellable. What y'all is trying to explain that the imperceivable that we have an army that we have a, he represents the 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 um the the the, the below top the deepest and the highest we have a picture of him we have all these things about Amen just like they say in Christianity or religion they have all these things about God but nobody can perceive God you can see you can you can see God's backside you can talk to God you can do all, but you can't perceive God but all of that talking to and doing that and envisioning that is perception those Big are bro. forms of perception Allow me to make this point, please. So hold on one, one, one second. But before you before you go, I just want to make it clear that I recognize that due diligence and myself, we have a different conceptualization of the self. And I want to stretch that over to New Heru because you fall in the same boat. Because when you took my eyeball and made it be able to hear and taste, you have, <laughs> oh, you have totally changed change, change it up. So, so, so due diligence, I'm saying that's, that's that, that, this is the core of, of the issue here and why it's being stretched out long. It has to be because it, it is, it is absolutely very, very simple. Like you watch this small point, make, Woo. Make watch this small point. Woo. So, so whenever you can find me to the, to the eyeball analogy, right. And then you say, if I'm a, if I'm a literal eyeball, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You finna make my point. Go so, ahead. The, the only thing I can do is go 360, but I can't perceive myself, right? Right. So that is a physics thing, right? That is a biology thing. We know in the real Fact. world, yes, that doesn't work, but that's not that's not what the metaphor is implying to. We're talking about uh, philosophy, the mind, how to grasp things. That So that's why it's not a good analogy. Because yes, in a literal sense, the eyeball can only spend 360, but we're really talking about grasping things that's that's beyond us. You know what I mean? So I, I understand. Can, so I, can, I, can the, I say something now? Can I say this, something this, now? At least just let me finish the point. You know what I'm saying? So I understand in a literal sense, but in a figurative sense, how you can grab some something that may seem unattainable, but you saying that literally is, I, I do, I, I, I agree just dealing with language and how it works that whenever we deal with the structure of words, but it may not necessarily be how reality works because a lot of times we feel like things are impossible, but it may not be impossible. And then we also dealing with philosophy of the Egyptians is really what, we, what we're dealing with uh, of Kemet. So we don't even know if these things are really literal. We're just dealing with the text and trying to, and trying to hash it out. That's what I'm saying. So the analogy with the eye in a physical sense, yes, but we're not dealing with the physical. We're talking about grasping concepts or grasping some something that's out there that may or may not be out there. That's, that, that according to the text is out there, but we just can't conceive it. You know what I'm saying? But I think that that's different from the eyeball uh, analogy, if okay. that makes sense. Uh, uh, so okay. Rasan, Rasan, go and then I, I wanna I wanna comment because before I forget. All right. All right, you know, all right. You know, where I keep you know, every time you say you talk about this stuff, the way that you talk about, it, you know, I, you know, I, I look out, you know, around the corner. You know, it's like it's like saying that if I say I can't see what's around the corner, you're telling me you can see what's around, what's around the corner simply because and you're, you're you're trying to make you're, you're trying to turn me perceiving that I can't see uh, what's around the corner that's the same thing as knowing what's around the corner that's what it feels like right now if I'm getting that wrong I'd like to see how but it seems like what you're saying is is that because you know if I say I can't see what's around the corner okay you're telling me that that my ability to perceive this inability is the ability me seeing what's around the corner. It's the ability itself. To now, that's what I said earlier that if I teach you how not to do something, I'll teach you how to do it. If I so, can I, it, can, I, can I address that? 
can I address that? It, it'll be a small, it'll be small. What what I my answer was to the question is that I feel like we do have the tools and we don't know no impossibilities. Is, is really what I said. That's a, so the question, but you're addressing okay, a point. You, we, we, you. The second time you said you, that, I brother. got you because because you're whenever you start, that. because you you start from a point of no for, to begin with. But let me ask you this: you know, You're addressing you know a point if, I didn't make, though, brother. You're addressing a point I didn't make. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not you. saying. I'm not saying. Let me finish. I'm not, let, I, let me finish I'm before not, you say I'm wrong. Okay, it, it's gonna be. It's gonna be quick. You said this several. You said this several times. Go ahead. You you starting from a point of saying that something is imperceptible, right? And we really dealing with the text of the comedians, of, of Kimmy. But in reality, this you don't know- This is a real time thing. Bro. I'm all saying right. real time. This, right, is not a, this is something that's dealing, going on dealing, right now. We dealing with the text? We dealing with the text. We not talking about what you know because you don't know it and you acting like you do. I'm saying we have the tools. What? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm that. I'm acting we, like I no. do. Okay, go ahead, brother. Yes, you, you are. Go ahead, you, brother. Because you, really, you just reciting the text. But in actuality, do you know? That's what I'm asking you, literally. It, it's a simple question. Do you know it's true what you're saying to me right now? Are, are you expressing to me what the text says? And then you taking it. That's the absolute truth. That's okay. the question. But Hey, let him answer the question, bro. Let him answer the question. I'm going next. Obviously, he ain't going to be able to answer that. Can I interject with something, though? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Listen, I don't want to start muting people, man. I just want, you know, at least to comment. I'm trying to divide the time. It's a good conversation. I'm saying it's true, but we have to have an orderly. We got other. You're not talking to yourself, so we got to have some kind of order going on it's so not, can I make, not, we, and I with the letter right. m for his name he been we've been respecting him no so no no I'm saying, ross son, no ross, ross son was great say something to, to what due diligence was saying and then i was actually next so Which I, would, I would appreciate it if you would just 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 call can't nobody speak until you say go let's just ride, ride with that rujaru got the uh he the moderator well, I, don't, so I don't well i don't want I don't. I hope we don't get to that point. So, so Rod, <laughs> I, I think Rod, Rod's son was saying something, and then, and then. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Right now, at this moment, moment, real time, as we speak. I want I you have, to answer a question, brother. Why? Why would you think I'm not answering your question? Go ahead. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Right now, real time, as we speak, not in any scripture. Not anything, any, nothing like that. And, and that's why I used my corner a moment ago. But right now, real time, as we speak, I have no idea what you look like, uh, New Heru. I, I have oh, no idea. Goodness. Okay? I don't oh, know. Right. Okay? And that's the thing. I'm agnostic on, 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 on that, that, that matter right now. I don't know something. And if I don't know something, my point is made. That does no, not mean not that does no. no. Wait, wait, wait. But I'm, I'm, still and I'm, no. I'm still talking. I'm still talking, brother. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. Come on now. Now, now, can I search and find out what you look like? Yes. Okay. But once I get there and learn that, do I know what the other brother looks like? No, you're not talking about what I'm talking about, bro. Okay, all right, you're not, all talk right, you're not talking about the same thing. All right, bro. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. I there's some things at this moment that I don't know, and I'm willing know to know and proceed. We're not talking about knowledge. We're not talking about epistemology. We're talking about the fact. The, that's the fact. Perception. It, it's different, brother. You keep equating the two as the same. Wujaru, is that true or not? That he's taking the, the conversation somewhere else. He moving the goalposts. No, you're right. I agree. That's fact. But but see, I I think really I think the conversation um was moved. The goalpost was moved. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so we talking well, about this point. I asked a specific well, question. Well, you actually were going through. Through. You don't, you're the one who. Okay. Moved so let me do this. So let me do this. Let me let me. I'm, I'm going to use another example that I use because I use the eyeball example because um that's what uh, a lot of philosophers use and that seems to be causing us some trouble. And, <laughs> and we're talking about philosophy, which is strange to me. So let me use this example. <laughs> use this example here. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask the question: Can your finger, 
Can your fingertip <laughs> can your fingertip touch itself? I want to answer last. That's why I ain't no pause on me. I can answer right now, but I just want to answer last. No, if answer first. Um, if you, if you, if you, if no, you, I'm, I, I'm I good. Go I, I don't, go. Then I don't, wanna, try to I don't want to answer. I'd rather move on. I'm kind of, you know what I mean? I'm good. I, yeah, I'm good. All right, because I think I think that this this may break 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 you know break have the epiphany. So, all right, well, let me just say I'm, I'm not gonna ask the question. No, your fingertip cannot touch itself. Just like no, if you were an eyeball, you cannot see yourself. That's just it. And I think there's a struggle with just accepting it things as they are. And so no, it's, no, it's not. Uh, you can't say one thing. If you're a car and you got on your headlights, the headlights shine outward. They'll never show the engine. Everybody understand that concept. I think that we t talking about something a little bit higher than just that. Mm -hmm. We are we are actually discussing something of a higher logic than no. that one, with you I promise you. Yes, we I, are. If you play this back, I know, you but, you're, 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 but you're not doing it. You're you're not doing it well, then. But, but no, 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 no. I, I, I'm gonna say that. No, it's not. It's not even well. It's it's the moment that you try to do if. If I if if I am talking about headlights, you're shining, changing the subject. Wait, wait, wait. If to, to you, wait, wait. To use your and now your your example just now. If I am going to talk about headlights and the fact that headlights will never be able to shine on itself because it shines mm -hmm. out, it shines outward, and for you to take that point and change it something else, you have totally changed it. That's and that's and that's the problem here. You you all are are taking it outside of what it is. And and so what I, I have already found out the problem. The problem is you all's conceptualization of the self is different than than what I conceive it as, why which is why I'm using these examples. And so I'm using these examples as as things that are easily understood because think about it. Everybody on the panel clearly answered quickly and understood that if you were truly the eyeball. That you can't see yourself. Everybody, everybody answered that correctly. But then it's, it's, it's the add-on dialogue that's creating the problem because no, you're, you're using you 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 using trick right. words. You said you cannot see yourself, but the question was, can you perceive yourself? And that's what me and the brother was going on on the I, word perceive. You no, said, no, can you? Are you imperceptible? That's, that's, are you imperceptible? To, would y'all? I mean, I, I oh, go ahead, go, go ahead. Go. I know. Let me finish, please, boy. Okay, go. Hey. It doesn't matter if I say see or imperceive. The moment I put a negation on, if the moment I put a negation on there, like for example, if I say you're not a woman, are are you all of a sudden gonna argue with me and say, well, someday I might be, or or I I will? No, it's 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 a matter of fact. If I say you are you are m woman, which is a negation, I say unwoman or whatever. I'm saying you are not a woman. So what I'm saying is that, um, as the eyeball. The eyeball itself is the perceiver, but it itself cannot perceive itself. So it itself is the imperceptible one to itself. Other objects can see it, but it can't see itself. It can't perceive itself. Now, the same thing with, with what I have on the I screen. Totally right understand now. That, I totally understand that logic. I know. Now, see what you just did? You, 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 you perfectly, you use the word overstand, but you perfectly comprehend what I'm saying right now. I so, perfectly it, apprehend what you're saying. And comprehend as well. And I, comprehend, I, absolutely. I pro okay, so 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 if you want to toss There's out many words, words for it, so uh, right. that's what I understand. I mean, but, but what I'm saying, when you say, no, but when you say you can use the word talking, see, know, but interchangeable, talking, that, that ain't all, I'm all I'm saying is that when we're talking, it is absolutely un unnecessary for you to just toss random words out there. These synonyms, just because you are aware of synonyms, <laughs> don't don't mean that you got to toss them out. Cause that's very do you think I'm that unintelligent that I would just toss words around and just be playing games? No, I mean, for real, I'm, like, why would you I'm say that? that and then I'm, you say you're not trying to belittle me, but no. I don't think my intelligence should be thrown in the box of like you just tossing words around. I'm just like listen, the man on living color. Listen, I'm listen, using fancy no, words. No, no it no, requires saying, that, bro. Listen, it just requires that from the conversation, bro. No, I'm saying. The fact that you have synonyms in your mind is a sign of intelligence. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. What I'm trying to tell you that you're not getting is that when you do it, it's rude. You'd rather me just kick you off? Okay, then I didn't think so. So I'm saying when you toss out words like that while somebody's talking, that's rude. That's all I'm saying. So I'll be, I'll be more direct with you now then 
because you, you you're taking everything as as an attack on you. I'm just telling you straight up, you're being rude by just uttering words out there while somebody's talking. And, and it's unnecessary. It's just a synonym. If it means the same thing, leave it alone. So back to what I'm, I'm saying is that that for this example I have on the screen right now, can your fingertip touch itself? No, it can't. So all all this is is a lesson that there is there is there is at there is a point of limitation with something. And that point of limitation in the in the sense that we were talking about earlier is whatever is imperceivable. And there is an aspect of existence, whether you are aware of it or not, that is imperceivable. And so knowledge, knowledge of it, to go back to the systems and everything, there are teachings and doctrines and systems of education in place to mature you up to the point to where you become conscious or aware of the fact that there are things that you cannot be aware of. And, 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 and the fact that you are now aware that you are unaware of something does not automatically make you aware of that thing. And that goes, that speaks to Ross Sun's um, point when he said around the corner, if, if he can't see around the corner and then he acknowledges the fact that he can't see around the corner, the fact that he acknowledged it does not all of a sudden miraculously make him see around the corner. So that's the whole thing. And some people are not comfortable with that. And they wrestle with that. And, and the people who wrestle with that, in my ex personal experience. This, this is a character matter. <laughs> you know, this no, is no, no, no. Well, in my personal experience, people who wrestle with that is just needs more time to, yeah. to really just deal with it. But in doing so, a lot of people go towards what what was happening a little bit in this conversation. Not not all, but what's happening a little bit is you start getting into the meta of things. The, the whole outside and beyond and, and making it something that's really, really not. It's, it's, it's actually really, really simple. May I, may I express something? Yep. And may I go um, to him? Yeah, yeah. Look. I, I don't know what, what the term, what the term is or the expression is, but there, there is a limit, you know what I mean? To, to what words can express. And also, if we're talking about something that's physical and trying to relate it to something that's not physical and not not abstract, I'm talking about something that exists that's not physical was really what we're talking about, conceiving something that's there, but we but we don't know it's there. I feel like that's what we're talking about. You know what I mean? And then when we try to apply the rules of something that's physical and then move it to something that's not physical that's just where it's not I, I i i completely understand the analogy i'm just saying this up i feel like it's a bad analogy but i do understand that something that don't exist don't exist something that's in uh imperceivable you can't because the word is that that is what it mean what it mean i do i understand that completely no but okay let me let me just say something quickly to that Here's the problem. I, I actually I, I, I know what the problem is. And it's just that we could I, I would love to have a, a dedicated show that everybody on this note, like if, if you got paper around you, just jot down a bullet point of, of what you're saying. Right. So you don't lose your your um, your thoughts on this, because I want to I want to I want to unpack it even more. But the problem is that. The what this is doing now, the way the way that this conversation came up is different than how it I, I normally would would like deal with the whole subject matter, because we came from figurative, um, figurative expressions versus literal expressions. But the issue is, is that and this is not for just everybody, for for some of us on the panel, it goes for is widespread, is that um you have to draw within it's it's the concept of the self okay now i mentioned the word self and then i know there's a difference between um what you all are thinking the self is and what i'm saying it is the self is always limited to perceiving itself so so the examples i gave were just were just examples di two different i gave two two different examples illustrating the point so in this in this instance of what I have on the screen, 
the fingerprint, the, the tip of your finger, that the fingerprint part of your finger would represent the self. And the limitations of, of this finger, this finger can touch everything, anything it wants to. It, it could touch whatever, but the only thing it can't touch is itself. And so the concept of self, and if you look, look this up, if y'all want to talk about philosophy, you need to, you need to, to go next door into psychology because the self is a psychological thing, all right, uh, to, 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 to really put you on to it. So does it literally exist though? Yes, the self does exist. Okay. Okay. So the real you is the self. And this is the thing, it's imperceivable. So so it's like it's like saying the, the does a fingerprint exist or the finger exists. Yes, it exists, but to itself, it will never be able to perceive it. It will never be able to touch itself. And so, and this is why I had the eyeball. See, the eyeball is a better example because. Um, well, at least the diagram I had, because on this on this diagram, um, I have another object right here. So this object right here can see the eyeball or can perceive the eyeball and the eyeball can see see the box, the square. But the eyeball cannot see itself, even though the square can or perceive itself, but the square can. And so this 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 state is what the self is. Because the self is the is the actual instrument. That's why they call it the self, S-E-L-F. The self by definition and 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 what it is by its very nature is limited to perceiving itself. Because it's it's the ultimate perceiver. And Egyptians even deified this concept, like I said. Um, so wow. that, can that, I ask a question right there, would y'all? Just you a question right there, right where wait, you wait, are. But, but okay, well, can, can, can I please? Do you, do you, uh, don't nobody please interject. I'm just asking if you can say no or yes. I know, I'll I ask you, but, saying, but I, I just want to hear if since you can ask me yes, but I'm saying this second, do you understand? Like, like everybody understood the eye diagram. Do you understand that the finger will never be able to touch okay. it? But what if my reputation is against that? Just let me say what I want to say. Why are you going to paint and make the witnesses and everybody be already in your favor? You said what you had to say. I'm not, I'm not looking for favor. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, for what was okay, no, just because if, Okay, if I disagree with you, then, if I disagree with you, then what? If then, I disagree with that statement and I have some logic behind it, then what? Okay, listen, disagreeing with me is perfectly fine. If you disagree with me, I, I will ask you to explain or demonstrate uh you know, support for your disagreement. So that's if, all I want to do. If you can show me, if you can show me that your fingertip can touch itself, then hey, I'm, I'm, a, you, you got it, you win. That's okay, the problem, so, before, problem before, before, so before I get, to, let, me, let me say this right good, right? Very, hey, quickly, bro, right? listen, one hey, of, uh, very quickly, I'm, I'm saying this to you. One of the biggest problems I'm having uh, with what you're saying is that that you're you're questioning what we've been saying. But you, uh, so far, it doesn't seem that you're addressing the points we're making directly. But really, what you're doing is you're addressing points where we don't make, and then you're you're doing it by using, you know, uh, referring to things that really don't don't really address the question of whether or not we can or cannot know all things. And then what you're doing, you're not giving, you're not being substantive about how, and and you're not giving examples. Uh, for instance, if you tell me no, uh, it, this is you just accepting that you can't know everything, then okay, show me. Show me something that you know. That, give me an example that you know everything. You know, so it becomes because that's the question. And then if I say, show me that you know everything, then you say, well, you're talking about something else. Well, what? Okay, all right. Then don't clarify what's going on because something's not clicking here. Okay, but I, I okay. Um, now I was trying not to say this because people gonna think it. Is arrogant, but if they ever say real knowledge, they'll be with me. But you say, do I know everything? Then suppose I said that I know all. You gonna tell me that I don't know all? Okay, then we can move on. So now, um, <laughs> Wujiao, my question, is, Wujiao, my question is, my question is, if I turn the eyeball around from not looking at the square block, if I turn the eyeball around, can I still 
perceive the block. If I turn the eyeball around and the eyeball, the pupil, is no longer looking at the blue block, can I still perceive the blue block? That's all I want to know. Okay, so you no, know, he's talking about the eyeball perceiving itself, bro. You you move the goalpost again. Yeah, no, but, I ain't but, about moving no goalpost. Man, y'all stop with it. that, man. I'm asking a question. I ain't moving no. nothing. It's all right, my question. bad, bro. My bad. Yeah, my bad. that my ain't bad. even fair. <laughs> my bad. My bad. No, hold up, hold up, wait, 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 one second. Let me, let me just. I'm gonna do what you just said. You, if I understand you correctly, you said if you move, if you move the pupil away like that, that's what that's now you're 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 changing the diagram. So what's your question? So this this is this is what it sounds like you just. I know, I know it's changing the diagram. I know it's changing the diagram, but it doesn't change the subject matter. No, no, no I'm so, not complaining. Wait, wait, wait. When I say that, I'm I'm just trying to walk with you. So I'm illustrating what you said. I'm I'm drawing illustrating what you just verbalized i'm just making okay sure, yeah making sure. am i correct is this what yes, you're sir. yes you're correct would you you're okay, you correct bro all right so now what is your question can i about still perceive that black that blue lock uh it's able to but it's not at this moment no okay now you said it's got a 360 degree view yep so it should be able to I, and that's what I just said. I said I said it's able to, but at this at this snapshot moment, uh, with the pupil facing this way, it is not perceiving the box. It it can, but it's not right now. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, are, okay. But, oh, but okay. So that's my, okay. Wait, wait, so let me expound on it. So, so I want to hear what Jobs. That's what Jobs listening. Go ahead. Right. So 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 if the eyeball is looking this way, or if it's looking straight at us, or if it's looking over here. Or was looking up, up there, or whatever you know. If I could move this around, <laughs> three D. No matter where it looks, the and and this is why um, due diligence said that the post is being moved because no matter where you put this eyeball looking, the one thing it would never be able to do is mm -hmm. look at itself, is see itself. Well, see, okay, that's why okay. I said like a headlight in a camera, but I mean a headlight in a car. And not like a camera like I do. Like if we had a 360 degree like Google got, 360 degree camera bubble, well, we could see above, below. I say above. So I'm not talking just 360 degrees. I'm saying 360 degree sphere. So now when you said it could see 360 degrees, I thought of all the ways it could see 360 degrees. Whether it could see right. round and round, whether right. it could see that. But I didn't know that you were saying as long as the eyeball as long as the eyeball was facing the block, you could see it. That's why I asked you that question, because now I see. The eyeball you're talking about works exactly like headlights. It doesn't work like a camera or like a real eye, because my real self, right? And that's what I was saying about the self. My real self, if somebody was looking at me and my back was turned, I could perceive them. If something was really big What's coming it? at me, yeah. I could I could. Yeah. Wait, wait, so wait, wait. Let me, I think he's doing exactly yeah. what you said he do, bro. <laughs> Hey, right, so so wait a minute. So here, here's a, here's a, I want now. This, this is good. So New, New Hero, this is excellent that you that you saying that those examples because, yeah. because now I can separate. So so yeah, you thank you for saying that. Okay, you you can perceive, and so what what here's the difference. You you like okay. Let's 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 use this again. What you did. So so right now with the pupil facing this way. So the eyeball is facing this way. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, bear with me because it's not a 3D uh, thing, but the, the, eye, the eyeball is perceiving <laughs> the, square, the square block. But if the eyeball, this eyeball turns 180 around, at that moment of turning around, it is not perceiving um, the square block. If the square block was up here and eyeball looked this way, it is not perceiving the square block either. It has to look up here. And now it, now it could perceive the square block. But, yeah, like I said, like a headlight. I agree. Right, right. You, okay. Right. okay. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm, I'm making a point here. So, so now we're talking about capabilities. So the so the eyeball has a capability of going 360 in all directions, which is why I use the word gy uh, gyration. So it's 360 plus it can move whatever, not not just 360 linear. It can move. You know, it can see every in every direction. Mm -hmm. I understand that. That's okay. what. Yeah. But all right. But wait a minute. That. Right. But what, but what it will never be able to do, it is not capable of doing, is seeing itself. And, and that is, by definition, the definition of self. That, that's the realization of self. Self is something that exists but can never be perceived. And I'm telling y'all, 
I can, I can, I can lay it out, you know, blow by blow with, with, with whatever, whatever, wherever you want to go. If you want to go in the psychology um, domain or stay in the philosophical domain, we could walk. Would you, would you, 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 can I add my last piece to the conversation? May I add my last piece to the conversation? And now it's just going to make my last piece. Okay, so I, I'm, a, I'm, go, I'm, dig, I'm digressing from that with y'all. I'm satisfied with your answers and everything. I'm cool on it. So now, Descartes. It's a man named Descartes. On Rene Descartes. I don't know if people ever heard him, but he raised the question. You know, uh, made the statement, "I think, therefore I am." Now this gets to something that God has pointed out earlier when she was saying, like, you know, P cannot be P cannot equal not P. Basically, what she's saying, P cannot equal not P. That 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 don't make sense. So now, although P can equal not not P, not not P is equal P. So now, but Descartes asked the question uh, or raised the inquiry. I think, therefore, I am. I'm with this. I'm with the goddess on this. It does not follow that just because I think that means I exist. Well, you see that, what you just did there. Go ahead. You actually changed. You said P, you can make P equal not, not P, but that's not what is being said. It's not being, the question is not, can you perceive that which is perceivable, perceivably or whatever. So you're trying to actually, you are actually making your own argument outside of what is being discussed. That's why I say you, you, you know, because yep. when we say it, you, you, you acknowledge the fact that P cannot equal not P, but now you have to bend the rules and change the rules to make it work for you. And that's not, that's actually just going counterproductive. And I think that's why we have this conversation up until now. It's like, you're trying to that's say true. that you can perceive what you can perceive. And that's not the argument. You cannot perceive what you can, you cannot perceive that which is imperceivable. You have to accept that. And to make it perceivable, I, I agree you have to that. completely change the rules, just <laughs> like you did with that one. No, listen, I said from the start, wait, wait, no, 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 I was talking, I said from the start that, I said from the start that, I said from the start that, I agree with the goddess that you cannot perceive what you, a person cannot perceive the imperceivable. I'm clear on that. That's my end point on that. You said that from the beginning? I said that from the beginning. One cannot perceive the imperceivable. My question was, how can you perceive the imperceivable? That's my question. How can you, you cannot. Perceive? We just answered that so many times. Okay. No, I, I'm okay. Okay, guys, I'm with, man. I'm you keep so then, so let somebody else so then, go, bro. So then my question Can I go was, down? So, so, then my there, so then my question was, so then my question was, how can one perceive the imperceivable if the imperceivable is imperceivable? So I was answering. You're my making the same I, error that I, I described. Because every I time you that, ask, every time knew, you ask that question, every time you ask that, that the imperceivable was imperceivable. And so what I was going to say about Descartes was that they that Descartes was saying, you know, basically, I think therefore I am. And so I was just saying that it does not Bro. follow that if you think you are. So it's I am that I am. And that would be the tautology of the statement. And also I, in the last in the last regards, I got, to the thing okay, about goodness, you man. Know, and, that's you the ball. Can I, and you can't complete the thing. Is I, I, I point to David Hilbert and Kurt Godel, Gertel, who talks about incompleteness and uncertainty and that those those are theories and theorems and they have not been proven so nobody exactly. can the height of that knowledge has never been reached and there ain't nobody here that can say what could be perceived <laughs> or not perceived that was my point yes, I can't oh, even yeah, but I can't see even the thing is it's it's all, you're mixing two can, you're I, can, to I, can I get by then okay yeah, go ahead go ahead y'all got it y'all got it okay brother you keep you you keep at raising that question no, don't talk to me. Talk to somebody else, cause I'm. Uh, I but don't get emotional thing. about it, brother. It's just a talk. debate. It's just a discussion. No, here. no, cause when I answer you, everybody gonna know what I'm gonna say before I say it. So you just talk to everybody else, and I'll come in. I won't even let you get. Uh, yeah. See, I think um, if you guys are just mixing up the point of you know um, seeking stuff and gaining knowledge, and that's a difference from what is being discussed. Because you're saying like, well, nobody can tell you. You know, at one point you cannot know something. That's not what is being discussed. And that's you know, if you understand you know what was being explained with the eyeball, at what point does the eyeball is the eyeball able to see itself? You cannot yes. say that the, uh, that, uh, that, the, that the eyeball will gain some tools, it will know better, it will gain knowledge, and then it will get to see itself. You can't. 
I Let agree. Me, I about can't see itself, but can I about perceive? The brother, brother keep the brother keeps asking, how can you perceive something that you can't perceive? And that's, and that's, the, initial that's question. And that's where the problem starts. No, no, but that's not. That's actually not a problem. It's 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 that's just the initial question. I know it's it's not a problem. But just well, no, it's not, it's not. Let me say, let me say it over there. I, I realize. I, I know. Is you I'm, with, I'm with you on this one. No, I know. I know. That's but let me, let me, let me. OK, but well, let me say something, because because I swear, you know, whether whether everybody collectively realize it or not, man, this, this is really has always been a um, pretty simple issue yeah. um, to, to discuss. But I but I, I do see the disconnect. I see where it is. And like I said, I got a small we point. Could, we could we could we could come back to it. But I, I just want to say that asking um, the question, how can you perceive that which is imperceivable? That's not a special or, or, or whatever question. That's, that's actually a, a question that the answer is within the question itself. And so yeah. it's like it's like how how can you lift? A rock? No, listen, it's like it's, it's the same as asking, how can you lift a rock that you can't lift? It's like saying. I asked you that question already. Wait, wait. Is that that's a problem with language? That's a language no, problem. No, that's no, not a. No, that's exactly. not a real life problem. No, it's so, no. It's so actually. That. It's actually not. I'm telling you. Wait. It's not a language problem. Oh it's it's actually. Ahead. It's actually not a language problem because I can say right now, due diligence. A, I'm, I'm wait, telling wait, you, wait. this is this is an inability to accept. No, let me. Incapacity. You let don't me, have I, the capacity. Me, okay, I'm, that's that's fine. That that's kind of insulting, bro. But okay. But let me just finish that with this. Okay, so due diligence, you are not new Heru. Now, that is a statement of fact, right? You are not new Heru. Due diligence is not new Heru. No, notice how I, if I set up an equation, I could say due diligence, not new Heru. Now, I'm sure right now you will accept that full stop with, with, with no extra build or nothing. You'll be like, yep, you're right. And, and leave it alone. But for some reason, when I say, when I, when I make, when I make a statement of a declaration and say, um, the, 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 the ultimate organ of perception cannot perceive itself. For some reason, there's a struggle there. And the struggle. No, I, I agree with you on that. Okay. But I'm, yeah. 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 yeah but, I, but, but you agreed with a, but <laughs> what so, did I disagree with? No, no, I'm saying you agreed, but then there was a there was a extra there was a but to that. That's the question. What did I disagree with? No, okay. When when I gave the example of the eyes I have on the screen and everything, you you actually said that in that hypothetical, in in this, if I'm limiting you to this and everything, you said you answered no. You said no, the eyeball cannot see itself. You agreed with that. But then after that, you started to you you swap the eye for what I was saying the self, and then then you projected your conceptualization of the self into yeah. it and said yeah. that okay through introspection and contemplation right. and this that, and the third that that you can, and then you mentioned Buddha and 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 you start so, other things. So I didn't I didn't expound on what I said what I thought the self to be is what I didn't do. I didn't interject because that's where you was. This is what the the analogy is about because we're talking about the self being able to perceive the unperceptible. So that's what I, but I never said what I thought the self might or might not be. Okay. So, so let me so ask that's, you, that's okay, okay. Right. So let me ask, and, 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 and I told you that I, I noticed that. And that's when I said, I said, let's put a pin in that. I said, that's where the, the divergence right. is. And I said, we're going to come back to it. So, so if you want to define for us, see, I I'm, I'm showing, I do not. This is this is what I want to do, right? This is the Oxford <laughs> definition of perceive, right? Become aware or conscious of something, right? So whenever you use the eyeball in a in a, and we gotta obey the laws of physics, right? But whenever we talk about conscious, because perceive is also synonymous with being conscious of something. And then when we're talking I about something, he's doing, he finna do it again. He finna do it again. Okay, but, wait, wait. But hold on, hold on. You agree with me when you say that, bro. They say that you agree with me when you say that. And that's why they saying you in disagreement with them. No, let me, just let him, just let him, let him get it out. Just let him get it out, though. We, we got we to gotta be able to, 
I mean, hold up. Let's that's, talk. Wait, wait. Let, that's him. He, let's, can't, wait, wait. he can't even challenge me. Whenever I challenge him, he can't wait. even answer me directly. So, bro, wait. you can't talk about nobody's comprehension when you when you equate uh, knowledge with perception, bro. Hold up. But well, one so, second. Though. Let's, so let's all out. agree. One second. Let's, let's all agree to at least when we, we do get yet. the mic, when we, when we get the mic, let's be as brief as possible. And in doing so, we don't have to we don't have to cut. So, I mean, let it get out, but don't be long at all. And and I'm I'm, I'm, and I'm going to, to to say this to myself, but don't get yeah. long. And um and then we we should have a smooth conversation. So you were about to explain, um what were you about to explain? We explaining. Oh no 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 go go back to the um you said perceive or something. Perceive right because because we moving from you giving an example of a physical realm, but then whenever you was perceive, and when we was talking about the self to perceive something that's unperceivable and you use perceived as synonymous with conscious it's it's being aware of something so we not even even we could not be even talking about a physical realm so so, so whenever you switch realms like that it may not even equate so we have a, a language issue right because perceived can be being cognizant of something not conscious of something which really in essence is what we're talking about but i do understand the analogy but i'm saying that's where the analogy fails and it, it actually it actually okay so so um because as you i just want you to repeat what's because here's what's happening and 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 i think you came on the call after i said this and it's amazing because i'm telling you let me just say this to y'all it's amazing <laughs> no no listen the first 30 minutes of, 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 of these recent lives, I will explain something, right? And then as people come on to the call and engage the conversation, it's like magic because, because the conversation will actually demonstrate what I spoke about in the, in the beginning. Because I actually, said, I actually said something about nomenclature and how um, words have to be, keywords have to be defined to govern conversations. And so what you just did, due diligence, I offered up a, a, an actual definition of, of perceive. I broke it down to its historical from pair and capere and everything. And then you just now went to Oxford and used a different one in order to, in order to fit in what you, what you were saying. And so this is, this is where it's a lot of disconnects happen in conversations because you swap. And I'm not saying you, it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying. And it wasn't consciously, it wasn't to try to try to fit to my, my point, but uh, can can aren't we talking about being like perceiving? Doesn't it have to be like whenever you say being conscious of it, trying to rationalize it, trying to no, to, 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 in order to grasp it? That's all along the same lines to me. I wasn't trying to it, trying it, to fit it into what I'm trying to say. No, it is. I feel like no, no. You listen. All I'm saying is that is that when you say, I just don't want you to think that that you're you you going to Oxford is saying anything that I, I offered because like you just said, it's the same. So, so here's the thing. So if it's the same, but notice if it's the same and, I, and you already agree that the, that the eyeball can never perceive itself, which means it to itself is imperceivable or imperceptible, and you agree to that, then, then, then whether, it's, whether it's tangible, because you, you were talking about the act of physics, because to see is, is a physics thing, because to see the, uh, you know, the reflection of light and all that. But, but here's the definition of self. Self is the innermost essence of something. And so to, th th these are just ways to illustrate and explain it. But the self is the, is the core mechanism that is, that, is the, that is the actor doing whatever. And the one thing, <coughs> and, and it always will have a limitation. No matter how you try to spin it, it will always have a limitation. And that, and that one limitation... <laughs> That one limitation, wait, wait, the one limitation that the self will always have is that it will not be um, able to perceive itself. And that includes consciousness, uh, perception, any other synonym you want to toss out there is going to include it. What is the point of philosophy? Wujawu, answer yeah, think, that directly. Yeah, Wujawu, I think, I think you got to answer that directly. Excuse me, bro. <laughs> and my brother, my brother, my brother, I mean, answer, answer you that you directly. All the thing, so yeah, I mean, I, I ain't. You've been disrespectful you know, to me, bro. You've been disrespectful brother, to me, man. Calm down, brother, man. You've you been dis. You, you, after you disrespect me, you gonna calm tell down, me to brother. calm down? 
I'm down. Uja Rule, what is the point of philosophy? What What's the whole point of it? Well, philosophy is is the come love. Come on, say you can't answer that. Man, where, where'd that come from? <laughs> God, that was the, come on, man. Okay, go ahead then, Uja. No, I think I think it's, uh, if somebody's talking, I just it would be better if everybody mutes their mic and then only uh, unmute it when you talk and then mute after. Just so we can, you know. Okay, let me ask something though. Can we have a sense of humor on there too, though? A little bit. I mean, some of the stuff be funny though, man. But I'll mute. God. <laughs> all right. So, all right, everybody's muted. All right. So you're asking me, what is the what is the point of philosophy? What is the goal of philosophy? What is philosophy for? Absolutely. Okay. So let's let's look at what. The philosophers, um, professional expert philosophers, say the goal. Will you? Will you give me before looking it up? Will you give me your personal opinion before looking it up? I'm asking that way. I want to know that way. I, I can know at least how you feel, just how you feel, and it may not be correct, which is, which is fine with me. Okay, so my understanding of philosophy is itself is a is it came out of the love of wisdom, which is where the word was coined and why it got labeled such. But the goal of that pursuit is to ascertain the knowledge of truth. I agree. Now, now let's let's look up the definition of uh, what philosophers say what philosophy is and what's the tool to use for it. What, why do you, what's the whole goal of it? Okay, so you're going to do it or, or want me to do it? I thought you was going to do it because you can put it on the screen and stuff. That way everybody can, you know what I mean? I thought you was gonna okay, all right, all right. Go ahead, but uh, give, me, give me a second. I, 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 I'll find something where it's consensus because it's different things are here so some i mean somebody else can take a turn while i do it i don't want it to be uh silence because man hold up. When, when 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 it's silent that nobody want to talk I was, I, was, I, was, I was i thought i could talk Muja. i was on mute i'm sorry i was talking the one thing that we didn't talk about was deductive and inductive uh, abductive reasoning, if you will. That's that's another way of perceiving things. But uh, you know, I just think we should address that if if anybody know about that. And then we also had to do deal with what what we think we know epistemology when dealing with you brought in, you brought in the concept of infinity, the concept of something being imperceivable and the concept of the self. Those are all in question. Also. Yeah, but, okay. yeah, and you may, you may, you, you said something though, Wu well, Jiao just read the definition and I don't think you, uh, well, I ain't gonna say you don't think you heard it, but did you hear him mention the word knowledge of, that philosophy is the knowledge of? That's, that's the point that I'm making. Okay, so you know, now that's epistemological definition of philosophy. So now what's your definition of philosophy going to be if it's outside of the one with y'all gave? I got this. I'm waiting on them to bring, the, bring, up, bring it up, and then I'm going to go. But okay, the, I just want to know. Okay, I'm going to see. Okay. The, well, but, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm trying to find a general definition that's pretty uh, uh, spread across because it's different. Yeah, um, brother, it's, brother, it's different said, detail. It's different all, details. With all due respect, brother, I think I think one of the best ways to kind of kind of uh, kind of be a little bit more concise that that will cover all of it. it will cover the, the metaphysics. It'll cover the the uh, axiology, the epistemology, and and the uh, 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 logic part of it. All of it, all of it, will be pretty pretty much covered when you're dealing with uh, concepts, the formation of concepts. That's really bingo. You know, the, you know, right? That's, that's what it's about. That's what philosophy is about. Why okay, you, so, why you say so, right? I want to hear more. Wait, wait, wait. But I'm, but I'm saying so. So now that we've defined what philosophy is, or 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 f what philosophizing is about, and I'm going to bring it full circle, right? Okay. And that's why I also said the words themselves are in question because we starting from absolutes these concepts. So that's what philosophy is for, to even deal with the validity of the concepts that we have throughout here into the world. Yeah, they exist because we manifested them, but you also have to question the concepts and the construct. We're dealing with these things. It's not for certain. We're dealing as, as if it's the whole concept of infinity, self, and the way that we, we deal with it 
and, and, and the way we defined it, it may not be what we think it is. These three concepts, infinity, self, what was the other one that I said? I forget that it was infinity. And, so, so let me ask you a question. When I, when I said, when I said are, are we certain that a fingertip cannot touch itself? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. We are, are we, certain. Are, are we certain that you, due diligence, is not new Heru? Are we certain? Are you certain? And uh, it depends because in physics, right? When we deal with <laughs> quantum, <laughs> quantum physics, you know what I mean? It, it becomes. Yeah, becomes I ain't laughing at him. No, he's right. He's right. It becomes I'm wishy washy. He's right. Go ahead, bro. It, it, it becomes wishy washy. <laughs> but, but I understand the point that you're getting there, right? And I'm trying to follow you. But let me ask you this Is it for certain that the definition that you put by putting behind self is what self is? Okay. And yes so or no? Like you did me. Okay, and the answer is yes. Because here, here, here's... You can't never know that for certain, Wujawu. Uh, let him explain. Wait, 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 no, but, but let me let me explain. Let me explain. All right. So, oh, so here's the thing. Because I asked you, are, are you certain about one thing? You asked, you answered in the affirmative. But all of a sudden, when it came to you, and, di and I did that purposely to, to show that when when these questions, the, the um, actual um act the actual um what do you call it the agency or the or the or the focus the foci of the question starts to come towards us we start to get more a little bit more apprehensive and and, and want to and want to deal with details yeah because, because can, I, can i give you a, can i give you an example and i think you would agree wait 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 wait. you don't oh, okay. because, hold up one second um you can but you don't have to because i just demonstrated it with with those two questions to you i i asked you a question outside of yourself about the finger thing and you answered very easily and very matter of factly and you said yes and this and other but when i when i diverted the foci or the focus to you closer to you in terms of figurative proximity so so the question moved towards you figuratively now you 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 want to dot all the i's and cross all the T's and then go into quantum physics and say, well, we're really, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, so we're not. Yeah, Is it true right. or not? But, but, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating what's going on. Like, like there's no yeah, way to get around it. I this, this, this is what just happened. And so what I'm trying to get everybody to understand is that when it comes to discussions about the self, the self is very, very personal to everyone. And so what I'm saying is that that's why I, I said this conversation came about through the back door, because if I if I intended on having a show or talk about the self, I wouldn't have approached it the way the way how we came up upon it, because there's a whole bunch of things that are that are missing from this conversation that really would would kind of end the conversation. And, yeah. and, 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 and I'm trying to give a give a concise conclusion for it. And I'm telling you, the self no matter what you conceive the self of the def the, to define something is to place a limit around it. Right. It's absolutely. It's, it's to put a limit hey, around something. Okay. Can and, I say something after you, after you finish? Uh, like you defining something like philosophy. Hold up. Well, wait, wait a second. And, and philosophy is a, is a large branch, a large branch of, of whatever. Exactly. You gotta let me speak to what y'all will at least have to finish. And I don't care who God says. Yeah. But but I'm saying so so bringing up bringing up a high level label for for um, a discipline is definitely not the way to go because there's a whole bunch of sub things up under that just like anthropology that's like talking about anthropology when it's a t whole list of things that fall up under it. But here's oh, the no no I'm saying because what 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 we're missing out from this conversation and nobody brought it up except me is psych the psychological component of all this. Because there, there's a there there's a discipline called psychology, which is a study of the human mind and behavior and things like that. The self is actually a component of psychology. The, Absolutely. The self, I know, but 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 I just wanted I just want for the record to show that the self is an aspect of that fits under psychology. That's where it's studied. But yet we're we're over here on the branch of 
No, no. philosophy studies. No, 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 no. Philosophy, without a question, philosophy, philosophy studies. studies psychology. In, 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 in fact, the very conversation about substance that you had earlier, as it relates to the self, is 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 is, is, is appropriate, and you can also find it in when you look at the the, the Egyptian both uh, branches, uh, medic scriptures, uh, scriptures. That's where new comes in. You know, uh, the substance that 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 ultimately flows into. What it's exactly. called, yes, yes. So I understand, you know. So uh, this is the substance of the conversation when we talk about substance itself. That's what we're talking about. We, uh, so this, what is the substance of the self? And my argument here, from the uh, wow. man is, for the perspective, would be would be a uh, man is the ultimate substance, and let that means me, uncertainty is um, is the ultimate certain uh, substance. So wait, wait. wait I, your I, point, I, was, I know, but I really want to give. Oh, I was cut off. But wait, wait. I, I was cut off. I, I was. And saying, I mean, it's not the ultimate substance. Sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> I was saying that what is missing. I'm gonna repeat what I said. I said what is missing from this conversation Part. Is, is the psychological component. And I and I and I, I didn't hear any pushback when I said that. But the moment the moment I said that philosophy and this and other, then all of a sudden everybody unmuted and talked at the same time. So and I just want to know, look at the look at how we're 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 doing this. I'm saying so instead of acknowledging, okay, what is the psychological component then, Wu Jiao? So that's what I'm saying. So the self, all I'm saying is that in my example, nobody disagreed with it. And, and what I'm trying to figure out is, is because nobody disagreed with the example and everybody answered the same question the same way, why are we having this discussion that we're having? I agree with, your, with self being definitive, being pinned down like you know what it is. I disagree with that. And I wanted to expound and give an example. <laughs> in quantum physics, there is uh, an, an experiment called spooky action at a distance. Do you know what that is? Have you heard of it? Are you familiar what is, with what, it? What, 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 what is meant by spooky? Man, meant by bro, spooky? bro, I'm talking to a Jawu, bro. I'm talking to a I'm, I'm going to express it. I'm asking, are you familiar? It's the, that's just the I'm, name of I'm, the experiment. And there's right, nothing right, spooky right, about right. it. Yeah, but it bro, means something. What does spooky bro, mean? Be, let, what you, I'm not even talking to you. You you throwing a yeah, monkey wrench or something. Well, I'm going to expound. I'm going to expound. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, brother. let, let him expound. So go. So so. Why, why so you that. be so quick to jump on me, bro? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. You you you're taking this personally. You really shouldn't, brother. Come brother, on, but I'm serious. saying even Wu Jawu said think? every time I say something, you got to jump on me. I, I, brother, I, I, don't, I don't know you if it's you or somebody else. I don't know. I you know I'm just. But this is what I'm saying. You you see me trying to lead up to a point though. I know you're smart enough to realize that I'm building up to make my point, and then you gonna reject like oh boy. But go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Like, calm Go down, ahead. bro. Well, Jaru, are you familiar with spooky action at a distance? Not very much. I've heard of it. Okay. The I am, though, just in case that matter on the phone. I'm completely familiar with it. So the experiment, they took a photon, they split it, and they took uh, one part of the photon across, the, let's say, the other side of the world. It was a very far distance. And then one piece of the photon, whatever they did to it, in real time, the exact uh, 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 response of the other photon somewhere else happened at the exact same time. Whatever they did to one, you could see the uh, the reaction to it in another instantly. Instantly, Wu Jawu. So this gives another meaning to self. And whenever you ask, is are things separate? And there's an adage in in, uh, in African philosophy: everything is everything too. And you know, it's all talking about science. In, in some aspects, so that's why why I did that. You know what I mean? So there is different aspects of that we still learning about what is self and are we all connecting and in which ways? Because that that uh that experiment right there proves that on a on a micro level, things are connected and time and space don't don't affect it. That's what I was getting at. Okay, so let me. And, and I think and I and I think that that's that's something that we do have to deal with. Whenever okay, we so deal with wanna... self and philosophy and how we, the way we look at things. Okay, so first I want to I want you to understand that your that your what you just said and explained is not dealing with the self. So you're again again you wait, wait one second one second I'm saying, and that's the that's the root of the issue that I said earlier, and it and it's gonna keep creeping up. Because, but Udrawu, you don't know yeah, what the self is. You making it seem like because because mm -hmm. listen, let, let 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 me 
that, that's, how, that's how, okay. That's wait, wait. How do know you know what the self is definitely because really we talking about wow. energy. We talking yeah. about it. We, we not we not talking about something. I think the that's, question is how does it, how how does that connect to the self? I'm gonna start. How muting. how how does spooky action at a distance connect connect to the conversation of? No no no. I don't I don't want to go go down that route. I don't I'm gonna go down that route. Here's the thing. Um. Okay, for you to say that I don't know something, that in and of itself is 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 you know you don't know what I know. And so that's that's like a, 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 a like a leap out the window type of um a thing to say. So here's the thing. No, so, I'm saying no, not not okay. just no, you, no. Jawu. No, no. But I'm talking about wait, dealing wait, with wait, the wait, self, wait, 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 dealing wait. with the self in general. It's not pinned down. Okay, okay. So you're saying it's not pinned down, right? So um if I'm it, okay, if I'm saying that the self is imperceivable, <laughs> then obviously. I'm saying it's not pinned down, brother. So, but you did define it like you knew what it was, and that's no, what no, and you no, it. No, no, that's listen, the contradiction I was talking did. about at the beginning. Oh, oh my god! Wait, 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 wait. You oh my god. Oh listen, my listen, 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 listen. Hold on, hold on. I'm not mute. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me explain this. I want everybody to be quiet because because we gotta remember we're not just the ones talking. Like I know it's easy to assume that it's just us, but it's people watching this show, right? So let me just explain this. Because that just that statement, what you said and my statement after just went full circle. I I actually said and 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 it may not be realized, but this is why I am saying that the word imperceivable, I broke it down, the inability to perceive. And you're saying that I pinned something down that I myself said is imperceivable which means that you cannot pin it down so it's like telling me it's like me saying you cannot pin this down and then you're telling me i'm pinning it down and that's crazy to me so here's the thing and so so obviously it, what happened but okay wait, 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 wait. okay but wait but i but here here's the here's the here's the fix obviously this this whole thing has been misunderstood if if that if 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 we're here, here now and you're saying that I'm defining it, I just said before I was cut off. I said to define something is to put a limit around it. How can you put a limit around something that is imperceivable? Good gosh! Can so, I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Wait, wait a inter- minute! Wait a minute, man, man. Let me just say it. Let me just get it out because I, I I'm trying to show the contrast. I'm trying to show, show the continuity. Of what I've been saying all night, I've been saying I use the word uh, perceivable versus imperceivable. I put it up on the screen. I even broke down the historical timeline of the word, how it developed in the whole nine. And so, and so, here's the difference. Um, and it goes back to an example that was given: the fact that I acknowledge that something can't be, cannot be perceived does not in itself all of a sudden make that thing perceivable. And so likewise, if I'm saying something cannot be grasped, then then me acknowledging that it can't be grasped does not all of a sudden make it grasped. So if I'm saying something cannot be defined and me saying so that it can't be defined does not in itself make that a definition. But it or, means you know something or, or, about it. Or, or of it. No, no. See, that's the thing. Y'all, y'all are talking about philosophy. These, these are one of the basic tenets of the different branches of philosophy. Yep. When, How can you not know something about it if you know it's imperceivable? You at least know it's imperceivable. Okay. If you know it's imperceivable. It's, it's, that's the contradiction it's, 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 that I was talking not, about. No, because no, every time you say, every time you say, no, 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 time a person says, every time a person says, no, saying no, no ain't gonna change nothing. No, Every no. time a person says it's imperceivable, this is where it goes say, wrong because everybody everybody wants to wants to yeah. wants to come. Um, I'm saying I'm trying I'm trying to connect all the dots because I'm 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 saying this is the fix. This is how everything is going synchronized with. You with, realize they ain't get a chance to talk, but you go ahead though. Go ahead. Hey, Man, well, we was conversing, we was having a beautiful conversation, but everybody got to jump in at the same time. It was progressing. Listen, I'm trying, no I'm trying to one-on-one conversation going on here, bro. I'm trying, I'm trying to put it back in. 
I'm trying to put the fix in because that I'm happening trying- to everybody on here. I was talking to Woodjob plenty of times and the conversation got misdirected. Okay, so, so that ain't that big. let me finish because I'm trying to put the fix in. I'm okay, trying to I'm trying to coordinate what everybody's been saying. Mostly not everything that everybody said fits, but but this is the fix because a lot of what everybody was saying, it fits into this this thing. And it just had to be an understanding that that just because you define an inability does not make you defining an inability all of a sudden an ability. So so like, for example, I I like like I I exist. Wait one second. I existed prior to you all becoming aware of me or conscious of me. So but to you, from your perspective, from your world, I did not exist until you perceived me, until you were conscious of me, until we met. But yet I existed. So 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 the fact that you are wise enough and intelligent enough enough to know that there are other humans on the planet outside of yourself does not does not um, all of a sudden translate to me that, you know, everybody just, just just because you know that you don't know everybody doesn't make it that, you know, everybody facts. Okay, so so the same thing applies here. So that which is imperceivable is imperceivable, always was, is now, and will be. Period. And so and so the 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 message here, the takeaway here is that there is an aspect of existence that is imperceivable, but yet it exists. And just because we we become aware of that does not make that thing all of a sudden perceivable definable knowable and all that other kind of stuff okay, can, can i say something else? wait 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 hold, hold, wait 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 i let I, I just want to i just want to make sure everybody understood what least of what i just said yeah yep all right so that's I, it i mean we 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 have arrived then i think i think we we can kind of uh uh Move on to something else if y'all want to hang more. Oh, hold on, we'll drive. let me just say this one thing. Let oh, me don't say this mess one it up. Thing. Oh, don't mess it up. We we doing good. Don't I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just write it. 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 By talking about Iman being, uh, you know, the 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 ultimate thing out uh, inside, which everything is in, but ultimately, I also said that Iman is the substance of all all the things that we have. Uh, that's why that goes to Ujahu's uh, comment about the self. The self, ultimately, is Iman or unknown. Okay, there's always that. Because everything is made up of that substance, we may we may learn something. You know, in our experience uh, of uh, about this little thing over here, or that little thing over there, that little thing over there. But ultimately, you know, those are just moments, so to speak. This is, it's like a period. You know, it's just like moments. You know, uh, that we know in a, in a, in a greater thing that we don't know. So we may know this thing right here, but that doesn't change the fact that we we still have this other infinite unknowable thing that we don't know and i think the difference that's what you i think you're, you're confusing knowing something at a particular moment you know uh you know uh in in within iman it's the same thing as knowing that part of iman that 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 we can never know that's the problem you said so i'm you confusing it so, oh, don't ahead, ahead, yeah yeah that's, don't that's, don't get into the whole conversation about it it's just something i was saying okay everybody well, I, didn't find I, I, I didn't know who he was directing it to but i, I okay. understood sam okay let's be fair let's be fair so let's let i'm um, so let's not let's not no matter what anybody says and i, I already gave my piece and Rasan just gave his so whoever's remaining just give your last word on this topic and nope and not in a way where somebody has to respond so just just give your last in fairness give your last you know, um, summary of, of, of whatever on, on this topic. I mean, so, so I think, uh, new Heru, you were next. Go ahead. Dang, let him go. Cause I let him go. I forgot what I was going to say. Let him go first. Okay. Uh, do, 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 um, do, I do. was waiting on him, but I did have a point, but hold up. But I, but uh, what I, all I'm saying, all I'm asking is whatever you say, don't, don't require 
a response from somebody. I just, I just want your final. Your, your I final. did. I heard you loud and clear with you. I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm with that. I could follow okay. that. I just forgot what I was saying because I okay. was listening to you, and then I was waiting on the brother to talk, and I was gonna ask to go next. So okay. that kind of all right. So do this. Do dinner. All right. So give you a final. You know, I'm, and I'm not. I'm not trying to. I got to cut this right here. We can always bring it back up, but, but, you know what I'm saying? If we're going to stay on, let's just, let's try to move. Cause I think at least we got a little bit of an agreement. We got, we got a percentage of agreement where we can, where we are. Right. Oh, so I can peace. So I just, I just feel like, and I forget the phrase and all of it. And I, and I said it before, but I believe language does fall short of ex trying to ex express the concepts that we're trying to express because there are contradictions that exist in reality and they just exist. I feel like whenever you understand the concept of duality and how it's, it's one thing, but just opposite ends of the same spectrum, I think we kind of often that kind of realm I believe that whenever we put these terms and use these terms, they really fall short of, of, of conceptualizing reality of what may and may not be, because that's really what we're talking about in essence. And we're talking about what we know and may not know as if we know and saying that that's it. And I think that's, I think that's what we're feeling when we're speaking to absolutes, like these terms are for certain and how we define them and how we express them. I think things can be looked at in different ways. You know what I mean? We all possibly could be right in different vantages depending on which way you look at it. So I just feel like language, and I can't think of the term of where, where language only brings us to a certain point and expressing the reality. And then we gotta start talking in like different terms and using synonyms and going to different branches and philosophies and stuff like that. And that's why that's the whole reason why we're doing that because it's falling short to grasp these concepts. Contradictions are seemingly contradictions, but sometimes are necessary, necessary reality. Peace. Okay, so I'll go next then. So um, I, I want to say that I agree with the, everything that the brother Wujow said, first of all, I want to get that out the way. I want to agree that what you were saying was right from the start. Sorry about that noise. What you were saying was right from the start. I understand where you're coming from. But when we look at it from a deeper aspect, which you call getting outside of the eyeball, and that's the part where we have a little conflict because then that was the word itself. But I do want to agree with the other brother too because I saw where the language was the issue and that's always been something that's in philosophy that, that that's addressed that language is an issue but the word for that is brother since you said you didn't know the word is meta language that's the problem here that we're talking about something perceiving itself that's the very word for meta self-referential for something to reference itself and so what the brother Wujiao is saying that the thing, the eyeball cannot be self-referential. I agree. Yet the self, when he had the word self up there though, I was being sarcastic, but that's what I was going off of, the word self. The self can be self-referential. The self can perceive the self. I perceive myself every day. I'm perceiving myself right now. So when you put the eyeball up there, Wujiao, I was just going off the word the self. So you write, and I don't want to say that I was confusing or being sarcastic on purpose or whatever, but I just felt like it was higher philosophical points that could be brought to the table on what you were saying. So I'm clear that I understand where you was coming from and you were right, Brother Rujal. I don't want to create no confusion. I know that the eye cannot see itself and I get the point. I know that the finger cannot touch itself, but there are, like the other brother said, on a higher level, there are ways in interpreting that and looking at that. Like I told the other brother, when he said, what am I holding in my hand? And I said, your hand. So last thing, when we get down to touch, like we all know that we can hear, see, smell, taste, and touch or feel. So feeling and touching is the same thing. So touch or feel is the common sense because everything we do, whether we see, hear, smell, taste, or feel, we all touching. And so if I say, can I perceive my fingertip? Only way I can perceive my fingertip is if I touch something or if something touched me. 
So if something touched me, I can't perceive my fingertip. I can receive that. That's receptive. That's it. Okay, so um, anybody else? Uh, oh, wait, good job. One last thing. I got one joke. I want to ask you, this is my question. I want to ask you, if we turn that eyeball around, if you'll pull it back up, if we turn that eyeball around and yeah, then we say yeah. that block of blue light gives off, I mean, that block gives off light, a blue light, could we perceive the blue light <laughs> I can't while the believe, eyeball is turned? I can't believe that you... Uh... <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't doing that right now, bro. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to close this this particular um uh, I said it was a joke, Wu Jow. I said no, I got I, one last No, I know, but see what's gonna happen is is <laughs> although it's a joke, it's gonna cause me to to say something and then you're gonna say something, everybody's gonna jump in and it's gonna be it's gonna spiral. So but listen, but this is a good opportunity, though. Uh, at least I'm going to take what due diligence did say. And, and I have to say that what you what you described about the limitations, because you're talking about the limitations of language. And this is the point of this show. Literal versus figurative. So now not to go down the rat down the down the path we just left. Now we now we switch into the actual uh, purpose of the show and back at the high level of liter literal versus figurative um, language. So I'm going to ask you, um, or any, any, anybody can answer it, but but I'm, I'm going to first ask due diligence. Um, uh, uh, assuming that you know what figurative language is, why do you think it was invented and had utility with with us, hum with human beings and everything? to express concepts to which don't exist in reality, but then you can con construct them with words and a person can get a, a feel of it. Okay, so now, now, based on the last thing you said about the topic we were discussing, you were saying that there was, you, feel, you felt that there's a limitation with language. And then now, by me asking you that, you, and I agree with you about uh, one of the aspects of figurative expressions being invented and utilized to actually solve that issue and so so what i'm what i'm what i'm asserting right now is that one there is no limitation of language because language would not be language if if there was a limitation on expression for for the, what the nature of language is itself the 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 difficulty is in the transmission of language the encoding and decoding of language from one person to another and so these other modes of, of expression, fi figurative versus literal, were invented to solve that issue. And so one of the ways that the ancient Egyptians utilized it was to, to use figurative language to explain complex things such as what we were just talking about, the self, not self, different parts of the being, um, outside of this or in addition to the self and so on and so forth. And so wh where we came from to go all the way back, I gave the example of Amen as, as the example of being figurative because I was showing the very meaning of the word contradicts the ability to speak about Amen. So the meaning means imperceivable but yet we're, we're looking at statues and I sh earlier I showed a statue. I'm like, how can we, e even if people just, just use the common translation of hidden, how, if, 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 if a deity is the hidden one, how is it that we, we can actually stand right beside and take a selfie with a picture of that which is hidden? And I only brought that up to show that um, this is overt, figurative expressions is not to be taken literally and so I, I just wanted to put that on the table that there is no there is no limitation it's just it's just finding the way to um to solve that that limitation there's on, the limitation is 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 not in the language it's in the encoding and decoding from from one person to another person so whoever is the speaker or writer has to do it in such a way where the where the receiver 
the hearer or the reader will be able to de decode because we're not telepathic. And so, so the limitation not in language, it's in, it's in our ability to utilize language. And the Egyptians, you know, pretty much uh, solved that amongst themselves by, by, you know, using figurative language. And that's- uh, whenever, you, whenever we get a chance, I wanna uh, dive into that too and bring up some scholarly articles about the limitations of language. All right. I wanna hear it. Okay. Just, no I mean, way. we don't have, but there, there's articles that, that express that, you know, there's certain words that don't translate and certain expressions that don't match, match words that don't match ex expressions or how we feel trying to put, put our match words to feelings. You know what I mean? And no, no, let, let's let, no, let's, we can set aside a uh, thing to do it because that's, this is what I do. So right. we're, we're, we're going to go. But we're going to go beyond that surface stuff and dig into the actual uh, nuts and bolts of language itself from its from the morphemic level to the morph uh, morph level from the phoneme level and the phone level, which is where we have to go. This is how you actually uh, resolve that, because I've been down that road many, many, many times. OK, but, but I'm warning you with y'all. He, he, he ain't going to be talking about that when he come with what he's talking about. <laughs> no, no, but that's but see, it it doesn't we matter. We're talking about the phonemes, though. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm saying it doesn't it doesn't matter because it's like somebody wants to fix a car and they don't come with something um, that's necessary to actually fix the car. Facts. So, okay. Yeah. So lang language or the phenomena of language, what we call language, um, you have to talk about um, the smallest unit of meaning. You have to deal with semantics and pragmatics and all of the above, which is I, I'm very much prepared, prepared to do. I do it all the time. Okay. Does anybody else on the panel feel like there's there's no limit to language that like language don't have a limitation? I just want to know how, if anybody else, how y'all feel? Well, I want to answer that. I feel like this right here, because, you know, like I said, I, I studied a little bit of Wittgenstein and I do a logic and Gottlob Frager and different people like that. So my my portion of understanding this language is a lot of logic, mathematical logic is where I'm referencing my thing from. Like for instance, even when would y'all say that you know like not knowing that not not being able to perceive. Uh, knowing that you can't perceive something does not mean that you know what you cannot perceive. I love that statement. At the same time, when you know that you can't perceive the unperceivable, you are stating something that's imperceivable. But I think that, you know, people try to wrestle with that. Just like they say, uh, people try to wrestle with, they don't know or they can't. Exactly. <laughs> They can't empathy. I feel like people try to wrestle with this other higher principle that I know. I know you what you're saying, bro. I feel like they wrestle with this other higher principle that we're talking about here. And the other thing is, I want to say this: Wujao, you mentioned something at the beginning when you first started with the literal and figurative. You mentioned something about a lie. You read a statement about a lie. You said this is a lie or something like that. I don't want to ain't quote, but you made a statement like this is a lie. Well. In, it's a, it's a, in, in philosophy, it's a paradox called a liar's paradox. Now, it, according to who's speaking that, let's say if I'm a liar, I'm a straight up liar, ain't no, ain't no going back and forth about sometimes I lie, sometimes I tell the truth. No, I just lie, okay? I'm a liar. Now, if I say that statement, that is a lie, am I telling the truth or am I telling a lie? If I say that is a lie. Okay, um, can I quickly answer to the other question then we can, to what um, due diligence asked and then we can move to that just so it doesn't get prolonged and then if that's okay with you, uh, Nuhil. I'm, I'm with it, I'm, I'm with everything y'all do. Okay, all right, so um, due diligence, you asked if anybody else on the panel feels that um, language is limiting. Correct, if there's a limitation to language. If there's a limitation, okay, so I would say that no, because... Um, the fact that um, language actually um, is a clothing for the, you know, concepts and, um, you know, some of the realities that uh, a particular people have or a particular culture, 
I would say no, because I, and I noticed that when you were talking, um, you know, um, that you mentioned something about matching, um, you know, languages and, and things of that word is that some, they don't have words for certain things when they might try to match certain words in a different language. And I think that's a problem of translation, but the language and that uh, people have will always reflect their realities. And so it will match their realities for those people. The issue that might come is when somebody else tries to match the concept of other people, try to figure out what it is and they try to bring it to their own. And they might not have those concepts in, an, in, 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 in a different language. But the language itself, for, the, for those people, that the language that is actually a placeholder for their realities has no, uh, is not limiting because it actually, you know, it's a placeholder for those realities. So that would almost be like saying that their realities are limited. Do you feel like their reality are, is their reality? Do you feel like there is a word for everything that can be conceived? Like, like we, like we dealing with, you know, mm. when, you know what I'm saying? Because this, I, I kind of stated that the word the wrong way because language is forever evolving. So once we grasp a principle, we can then start naming it. But whenever we deal with the edges of language to, like you said, what cultures believe and they hold a uh, lexicon of they hold, uh, of, of, of what they believe, all the words in their system of language, right? But then you still have people evolving and creating concepts and trying to express new concepts that come in a language that may not have all the way been thought out and people are trying to express them. So then you deal with the limitations of it. So I shouldn't say is language limiting, but you know what I mean? It's always, you, you're going to have its limits until, until we hash it out. Does that, does that make sense as, as far as like bringing in new concepts and new well, phrases? Yeah, I see what you're trying to say. It's almost like you're trying to say that um, a language should actually just come out of the gate with all the lexicons for things that exist and those that will exist in, in all the features. And that's not how language works. I'm language saying that it doesn't. Because I'm language is... I'm saying that yeah, it so doesn't. Then we agree. That's the limitation. Well, it's not a limitation. That's just a natural part of language, just like a reality. The things that come into your perception, uh, you don't have to have all of them at once, but when they come in your perception, they are in your perception. Once they, you know, a thing becomes, comes to be a part of your reality, like a car. A car might not exist like a hundred years before, but once it comes into that, then a word to, to describe that is formed. So that's just a natural part of language. You shouldn't work any other way than that. I mean, I, I, so, I, so I, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I, yeah, but, yeah, but you still. I just, I just wait, 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 I agree completely. I think that you see it a different way as, that, that I see it, but I, I would describe it as, as the limitations of it, but is it, it is a natural pr progression of language. I, I agree That's with that. Right. Okay, but here, here's the thing. I mean, either, either we're going to wait to have the conversation or we're going to have it now because I'm sitting listening and, and the, 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 there's a lot of prerequisites before we even get to, the, to this level of, of the conversation of language. Like we didn't even define what language is or, or anything. We, you know, you said you have some, um, some, uh, scholar, some, some citations from scholars or whatever the case is. We should table it until then because then it's not going to be fruitful because then everybody's just going to give like a kind of hodgepodge uh, gumbo soup of, of thoughts and opinions and things like that. So uh, I'm just, I agree. Uh, I agree with it. And I agree with you. I remember, I, you know, we just, I, it, we were just supposed to be swinging it around the table and say how you feel on it. Like, yes or no, really. Like, is what was it, that? What was that? The, is, does language have limitations to it as far as like your culture? You know what I mean? You only have so many concepts to describe what you know and the things that you don't know, you can't describe them in language. And remember, wait, 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 wait. So, so what you're, how, how you're describing, how you just said that, then that's not really a limitation of like, and this is what I said earlier. I'm saying language itself doesn't have limitation it's see maybe maybe i wasn't understood and that's no, what i'm saying because no, here, I, I agree i think that i worded it wrong you're right I, that's why i rephrased it okay well, right. all right well there I, we go i phrased it wrong i apologize okay but i, I don't want to ignore the chat so um just real quick i know it's at one is man it's almost two o'clock at the most i'm doing 30 minutes more so i'm gonna let y'all know right now so uh in case people didn't didn't notice it at the top of the chat pinned is the link to come on the panel so if we, you know, we run our mouth too much and you want to chime in, uh, come on in because we've been kind of ignoring 
Well, I've been ignoring the the um chats if any questions, but I did see one just now. It was um Ken something. It was from somebody. Let me just so y'all bear with me real quick. Let me just I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, it was what? Where is it at? Uh, Ken, do I see it? Oh, Jeremy. Why don't I don't see that? Um, oh, here it is. Jeremy um Chapman. The question is, can he put capital C A N? Can there be a word for everything that can be perceived? Um, the answer is yes, and we and we and we have to understand what an actual word is, you know. But the answer is yes by by its very nature, because when you perceive something, that in and of itself forms a definition, and a, and a definition in a true sense of the word is to is to is to distinguish some entity from all other entities, and so. What? We can we can we can give a a uh, word to it. We can create a, what's called a, a neologism for that perception of whatever that thing is. And humans have been doing it ever since humans have been humans. But but I'm saying but we but a person can't name that which is a word or a name cannot be given to that which is imperceivable, right? Because that's, that, a that's part that, of that, that, but that but that okay. wasn't his that okay. So let's understand. Oh, no, I didn't say that was his question. I'm just adding to the conversation. It's either right or wrong. It, it, what I'm saying is either right or wrong. I ain't saying what he said. I'm just saying that a word or a name, or just a statement, a word or a name cannot be given to that which is imperceptible. Okay, so let me, let me, right, and let me answer your question in this way. This is what I shared on the screen earlier. I'm not going to share it again. I shared on the screen what the Egyptians say about that because they give the answer. And you cannot name. That's what I just said. The, man, are you gonna let me say it? <laughs> I'm saying, you're, when, you, when, you, when you name something that is imperceivable, that name is, is the understanding that it's imperceivable. It's not the identity of, of the actual imperceivable thing. That's right. So in her can no, given to the actual imperceivable wait. thing. So, so wait a minute. So the very word I'm in is a label given to the acknowledgement that something is imperceivable, but it's not giving the ID, the identity of that which is imperceivable. And that's what that, the mm -hmm. that, that's what the hymn to I'm in that I read is saying. The whole, that was hymn, the whole that hymn, was the whole hymn is saying that. Because see, you, you see that we saying the same thing that I, but I know. I mean, he said this time, no, he, he's agreeing with you, bro. He answering the uh, question. He agreeing listen, with you. Up. New head rule. You gotta understand that I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to um answer it to kind of tie into the conversation uh earlier because I I actually like you asked me that question just now. I I, I could have just been real short and said I already answered that because I because I really did I literally did but I'm repeating it so I could try to tie it in for, so everybody else can. But that statement contradicts what you said. Then let me show you what I mean. No, you said that a word cannot be. You said that that you trying to play both sides of the coin here. You said that all. you said the brother asked in the chat. The brother said, "Is there a word for everything or a name for everything there is?" No, and you said, "Yes." Yeah. No, no, he, he did not say that. He asked. Can I'm paraphrasing. Well, say what he said. Let, let, me, let me let me read it because I got it right here. He okay, said, "Say what he said." Perceive, perceive. He says, "Can," and he put that in capitals. Can. Mm -hmm. There be a word for everything that can be perceived, and I say yes. Okay, and then and then uh, and I'm saying this right here. I said yes. There is a word for everything that can be perceived. So we agree. But in regards, wait, 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 wait. in regards, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. So we agree, right? No, no. Uh, -uh you get me with that now. No, nope, I'm wait, not agreeing. Now I'm gonna move wait. forward. I said no. I want to move forward. So wait, now, so wait, wait. So you, you answered you. So he he asked, "Can there be a word for everything that can be perceived?" And I and said, I'm saying, "No, I don't agree with that." Okay, I, I said, I, initially. "I said, I said yes," and you said yes initially, but now you changed it to no. No, I'm saying that I'm saying that I I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that statement. Wow. So you're saying that there can't be a word for everything that's, that can be perceived. No, I'm saying that I'm saying that there can't be a word for everything that is perceived. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that we cannot perceive the true Amen. We cannot perceive the Amen. And therefore, that's not what he, that's not what he asked. 
Therefore, there are things that's that not what he want. asked. Listen, listen, man. You got you have to pay attention to no, 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 don't interrupt real quick. I'm just saying you have to you see. We all got to practice this because I'm not going to try to I don't want to sound like I'm condescending or belittling nobody. We all need to understand what is said first before we we knee jerkly respond. And the brother's question did not ask what you're answering. Like you're 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 speaking to something that was not asked. He asked, can there be a word for everything that can be perceived? Not anything about imperceivable because you, now you invoke I'm in. And 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 what is not perceived? No, I invoked that from the start. My initial statement was, "Yeah, that's cool." But when you say, "Listen to what I'm saying," I don't think. See, you always say, "I need to listen." Listen to what I'm saying, just one time. Listen to what I'm saying. I will rewind. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it one time. If, if if a person says you can, that's why I gave the liar's paradox. If a person says it's something that's imperceivable, uh, uh, imp imperceptible. If a person says there are yeah, things, do that his are question. If a person I, says, I want you understand that that that's not his question. He's not asking about. I, I know. I heard the question. I mean, can can a person can a name be given to everything that can be perceived? Can a name be given to everything that can be perceived? I'm and, not and, a stupid answer, guy. Okay, no, answer, I understand no, no, the answer, question or the no, statement. Answer, I'm answer moving that, beyond the statement. Answer that question. Something else to say. Answer, Wait, 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 one second. Answer, answer the brother's question. Then let me. I'm, I'm gonna read it no, to you. It you, can't you be give done. An answer. No, it's not a word for everything perceivable. Now, can I, can I, can I get a reason why I say that? I didn't say that. Look, can you brother give me a moment? I said okay, no. Okay, no, I, no, hey, hey, Rossan, I, I, Rossan, I, I, I cut, I cut into his explanation. So explain why okay. you say no. Why, why is your answer no to his, to the brother Jeremy's question? Okay, the reason why I say no, that there is not a word, and this to refute some of what you said too, with y'all, not just say the brother, the question, the, the word, the thing is, is that when we say that, is there a name for everything, uh, is there a name for everything perceptible? Then once we say we perceive the imperceptible, I ain't saying we perceive the thing, like you said. I ain't saying we perceive what's around the corner. I'm saying that we perceive that it is, that the thing around the corner is imperceptible. But once we say we perceive that that thing is imperceptible, then at that point, we in a contradiction. We speaking about the unsayable. Oh, it's that, a man was named big, that was kind of big. Of, that was kind of big, man bro. Named Stein that wrote a book about it's this. It's about not. language games. Can you be patient for a few minutes place. while I talk? Can you be patient for a few minutes while I talk? Because you're not going to interrupt me. So it's a man named Wittgenstein that wrote a book on this called Language Games. And he talked about rules and signs and the rules of language games. And he talked about how at the end of the book, you're going to have to kick away the ladder. Anybody who read the book, they're going to kick away the ladder because he has been speaking on things that he has is talking about that are unsayable. And people at the end of reading the book will ask, how do you get to speak on the unsayable? And the question is, you can't speak on the unsayable. You can't say the unsayable. And I keep saying that over and over. I think that what you're trying to, what y'all trying to define or trying to say is the unsayable. But once you say that you perceive something, once you say I perceive that it is imperceptible, you are perceiving that it is imperceptible. Accept you that. You exceed. Yeah, you perceive it that it is imperceptible. And once you say that, then you perceiving something imperceptible. You brought it into existence. Okay. You okay. did. Right. So, so okay. after so, after after Ross so, son, let, let hold up, let, let Ross son get in and then I want to okay. come back and I want to yeah, I'm, just, I'm just gonna say this and I, and I got I'm about three hours late going to bed. I'm gonna be pain in pain tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the first thing go to the question, can anything uh, anything uh can you what's that question about uh, the name? Can you name uh can you name anything that's perceivable? He said, Let me I'll just read it to you. Can there be okay. a word for everything that can be perceived? Okay, now, to, to what you did, what you didn't do, the the, the other brother knew. I think it was uh, the problem. The, the the issue there is is that that when they said perceive everything that can perceive, and and and, and from the comedic perspective, which you were trying to address just then, that would be the uh, that would be the Roth aspect of of. I mean, not not the Amen aspect. That's the, you, you did them with the uh, the Ra, the perceivable. The, that's that's why the, you know the, the whole sun thing is it, you know, it, it, it's basically dealing with light and what can be seen. This is what's being implied there. So what uh, uh, so uh, 
the word raw in that to that extent would 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 be would mean everything that can be perceived okay but now does that get everything <clears throat> of course you have a whole whole uh dictionary you know full of other words that 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 really kind of uh, break down all the rest of the stuff you know that that that's within raw but you know when you talk about everything then Ra would be the word because Ra basically means uh, is, is a reference to the cosmos, and then it di- and as well as the different aspects that that, that it manifests itself. That's you know? filibuster, and none of that ain't true. But you go no, ahead brother, with that. brother, brother, none of that is true. Okay, no, I, I, mean, I can't. I mean, Ra don't mean everything, and I was with you when you said Ra means to see or to perceive. Ra, yeah, it means to see. But then that would mean that I'm in with me. No, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't not see or not perceive. I'm in would become the M as in not, and the Ra would become to see. So to not see, I'm in Ra. Or to not perceive, I'm in Ra. And you can't can't just make up definitions, man. No, that's what he said. I'm saying that that's what he said. No, he he didn't say he did. Ra means to see. And then I no, said that that's not what I case, said at all. Brother. Is everything you see, no, that's that would not make what I said. The imperceptible. No, let what him what finish, I, bro. I, let him finish, bro. That's not what okay. I said. Go ahead, go ahead, y'all. What I said was is that Ra represents the universe itself, the perceivable universe. That means it, mm-hmm. it has it has all the three. Uh, it has two primary aspects, and that's uh, the Atum and then Skepper. A uh, tomb represents the, you know, basically, you know, the possibilities, infinite possibilities. Capital would represent the manif- uh, infinite manifestations that that it would take, and and that's where all these other words come from, from the Kepler aspect of it. But Ra would kind of that would be in the realm of talking about. Like, that's what Ra represents, basically. Okay. But now, if Ra represent everything seen, then what does Amun represent? Amun represents the unseen. No, I didn't say Amun Ra. I said Amun. I, I just said I'm in as well, brother. I'm in is the unknown. The unknown? The, un, the, unperce- the unperceptible, the imperceptible. So then you are saying that I'm in, in your case, is the imperceptible, and raw is the things that that you see everything. Is that not right? Yeah. This is the uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, raw would represent the the perceptible aspects of uh, that, that That's came what I just said. So raw yeah. represents the yeah. perceptible, and I'm in represents the imperceptible. Is that not yeah. correct? Right, all that stuff that I was talking about—the little, 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 little bits of our men that that we can actually can learn about and stuff like that—that's okay. that's wrong. Now you realize that we well, just saying you that's making careful. all that up, and then none of that ain't in the text. Oh, uh, that's, that's well, I didn't say that. Um, I was talking about what you were doing before when you were interrupted. <laughs> interrupted yeah, but anyway, anyway, I gotta go to bed, y'all. Y'all, y'all. y'all all right, y'all, all right, peace, peace, so peace I, bro. I, I want, all right, peace. Okay, so I, I, I just want to unpack what you were saying, um, New Heru. So. You were saying that, and hold on, I don't know if y'all can see my screen. Okay, yeah, you can. So let me just. I was saying what he said. No, 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 not, was... no, 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 not, not, not that, that volley just now. I'm, about, I'm going back. I'm going back to what you said before he, he even spoke. Oh, okay. When, when you were saying that, um, you were saying, you were saying something that refuted what I was saying. And it really doesn't. And it's just, it's just that I don't think there's an understanding going on. Of of what I what I was actually saying and been saying all night, and I had I had to him to I'm in on the on the boat on the screen. I'm gonna put it back up in a second, but I want to deal with what you said. So you said and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You said that that per, the perceiving the perception of the fact that there is something imperceptible is a contradiction. No, that's not exactly what I said. Okay, so I'm um, so I said, please, I said, I said, I said, you, I said, that, I, said that, I said that you you said that you perceive the imperceptible is a contradiction, and that but is, that, but, that, but that's, that's not, perceive, that's not, you, that's not what I said. That's 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 not actually what I that's not okay. what I said. He, he wants you to he wants you to break down the concept that, that you said that whatever the dude you said you bought it from as far as just dealing with whenever something you perceive it the unperceivable whenever you say something is unperceived that that's the that's the contradiction. No, that, I, I want I want him to repeat because I, I I thought I that's had, what I'm saying. I heard you, bro. I heard you. I know what you're saying, but I you want you to repeat that. Out. Repeat that part. Yeah, okay. I want I want to get it right. I don't I, I want to get what you said right. Okay, first of all, what I said about Wittgenstein, 
what no. I said about Wittgenstein was that Wittgenstein showed that there is the unsayable. Now, get the word right. Get out your pencil. Don't say I didn't say this. Bro, I said, no. No, I said, no, listen. I, 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 I want you I said, to repeat I said, what, you said, said, what you okay, said Okay, I said Wittgenstein. I'm repeating it. I said no, that before, it, it was before you even uttered the name. Well, then Wittgenstein. I don't know what to repeat then. How, uh, how that's, can that, that's why if you listen, I'm, I'm trying to jar what, what I'm trying to get from you to repeat. It's, it's, when right. you, it's when you you said something to the effect of perceiving the fact that there is something imperceptible is a contradiction. And then you brought up the round the corner scenario. Yeah, okay, that? okay, I got you, I got you. I said that, I said that to perceive the imperceptible, mm -hmm. to perceive the imperceptible, I said, I agree with you that to perceive to that to perceive that the imperceptible is the actual thing in itself that's around the corner. That which is imperceptible is the thing in itself. And I'm you. This is philosophical, real talk. When I say the thing in itself, you can look it up. So the thing in itself is around the corner. As I'm using your analogy, the thing in itself is around the corner. So that's where it's imperceptible. But I said. If you say that you can't see it, that you can't perceive the thing around the corner, then you perceiving something about the thing around the corner. You perceiving that you can't perceive the thing around the corner. Okay, and what is your problem with that? No, what's that is your problem that is with imperceptible. That? That, that's a, that's, that's a, your that's problem. A what's your problem with that? Can, because can I, that means wait, wait, no, 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 hold, 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 Okay, right. So, okay, so here, so now, so wait, wait. So here, here, so, so I did have you right. <laughs> so you're saying, so you're saying, so I do have you right. Everything you just said is is saying, in another way, because I, I tried to type it as you were saying as you were talking, but that was a little too fast. Okay, I said I said it slow. I said slow. I said slow. Okay, the, wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 let let's establish what you said first. You said you said verbatim. You said the thing. The thing itself, uh, the thing it's itself, around the corner. The thing in and of itself is around the corner, and that is imperceptible. That is what you call imperceptible. Yeah, I know, right, 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 right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what's imperceptible. Mm -hmm. Now, not what now, I call imperceptible. What you call imperceptible. I, I got you. So, so right, and then what you what did you say after that? I said so. The fact that you can say that is imperceptible. The fact that you can say that is imperceptible mm -hmm. says that you know something about the imperceivable or the imperceptible. And the thing that you know about the imperceptible mm -hmm. and the thing that you know about the imperceptible is that it's imperceptible. All right, I try my best to type so everybody can see my typing skills on the screen. <laughs> okay, so to repeat, uh, and I may have missed a, a few words here and there. So you're saying that the thing, the matter of fact, I can get rid of this top person, top part. All right. So the thing in and of itself is around the corner. And that, according to me, is imperceptible. The fact that I can say that the fact that I can say that I can say it is imperceptible says that you know something about the imperceptible. The thing that you know about the imperceptible is that it is imperceptible. And you're saying that that is a contradiction. Yeah. Okay. That, contradict, that contradicts the statement that something imperceptible cannot be known because you said that I know that it's imperceptible. And if you say that you know it's imperceptible, then you know something about the imperceptible. You know that the imperceptible is imperceptible. And that's why, I say, the conversation, that's why I say the conversation is meta. That's why I no. say the conversation will, okay, will okay. end up calm, in the language calm, game. Calm, hold up, calm down. All, right, I, all I wanna do was make sure I'm not mis, mischaracterizing your, your statement. All right, so now that, now that I have that, now we could, now we could fix the problem. Because the problem uh -oh. is, yeah, the problem is you're confusing the direct perception of that which is imperceptible, which you cannot do, for the acknowledgement of the fact that there is something that is imperceptible. So you're 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 taking you're you're swapping the um the actual item 
that you cannot perceive and cannot know versus the acknowledgement of the fact that you can't know and you can't perceive. No, so, I'm not so wait, 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 wait. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let, no. let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. Okay, that's all because, I was going to say. Go ahead. Okay, so so I'm going to test. The, we, could, we could put the logic to the test by by um, setting up the same parameters using different um, a different scenario. So here's the question. Is the acknowledgement of the fact that you don't know something a contradiction? You asking me that is the acknowledgement of the fact that you do not know something a yeah. contradiction yeah. is the acknowledgement of the fact that you do not know something is yes, that's a contradiction. Yeah. If you acknowledge that you don't know something, it's a contradiction because you saying that you don't know, but the fact that you know, you don't know is a contradiction. All right. So that really puts me in this conversation because if you believe that that's a contra, if you believe that that's a contradiction, then everybody on the planet is a walking contradiction. And that's, that's and right. That's, and that's, that's what we're simply trying to say about that's the language a, right. game. No, 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 no. It's it's actually not. And that's this. See, I don't want to get into that unless we're gonna unless we're gonna pull out everything. But it, it's actually it's actually not, because I I worded this purposely, because do not know and then acknowledge or acknowledgement, which is to it's know, different. it's 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 acknowledging that you do not know. It's not acknowledging the thing itself. It's acknowledging that you do not know. I and understand so, that. I, but that's I know, but, but that's of the thing. No, hold on, no, no, hold on, no, it, hold it, on, no. It, it's it's actually not acknowledging the thing itself. And so now, hold up, now now let's go back to what the Egyptians are trying to tell us. Because man, they they answered this for they answered. Can this I interject? Can, can, hold on, don't don't move. Woo. Let me let me let me add, let me ask something on that point. When you go back, please, and it's gonna take three seconds. Go Do back it, to to go to back. Right. Yeah. Right. Do it. All right. Go ahead. Uh huh. So let's let's keep it on on that. Uh, the imperceptible right so mm -hmm. whenever we deal with perceive right mm -hmm. and then whenever you say and whenever you deal with the with the definition of perceive and you saying that something is around the corner that is imperceivable whenever you deal with the definition of perceive you actually perceive if you if you if you can say that statement right wow. you are perceiving that something is around the corner Wait, I don't, listen. Okay, listen to what you're saying. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna break down what you said now. If you since you want to uh, jump in here, so let's let's see what you said. No, so here, so here's the thing. So let me ask you. Here, this should clear it up. So due diligence. What in that scenario you just said? What is actually being perceived? Is it is is the object that is imperceivable being perceived, or is it the fact that you, the self, the agent, is acknowledging? that there is an imperceivable right i i do agree with that statement but let's bring it into oh no but that, that was a question wait no that was a question what what yes what it, is it, actually it, being perceived that you not that you can't perceive what's around the corner and that's a that's a so, language so, right but wait 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 so 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 that which is around the corner is it actually being perceived uh Whenever, whenever yeah. you keep it in that in that context, yes. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. I just want because because I'm I hearing to two people thing. answer. Wait, hold on. Just, just I, I didn't hear your your thing because I think two people was talking. So say so. So let me ask you again. In in the scenario that you just repeated, I'm saying, is that which is around the corner actually being perceived? It is, I'm going to answer like this, and I want you to let me finish. And it's going to be short. And I'm talking about short, short. So whenever you, I think this is this is where, because I said I said the definition, right? Um, let's say in, in, in that sentence, sentence structure, and I try, I'm trying to follow you within the sentence and the confines of the sentence, you are not perceiving the actual thing. But whenever right. we deal, okay, okay, but but let me let me just add this and I'm gonna let it go. All right. Okay, so let's let's deal with what we're dealing with with like uh I'm in. So whenever you say that in real life to say like I, I, I 
I'm trying to perceive uh, is is I, am I perceiving I'm in or or because I'm in it can't can't be perceived. But whenever you whenever you apply it to real life, it, it's a it's, it's a different scenario. You know what I mean? Whenever you deal with it in real life terms, when you keep it confined in a in a grammatical uh, situation, yeah. But the the fact that you can whenever you say and, and then here's the other enigma. There is no way to know if anything is imperceptible. We got to deal with that also. But then whenever you come into reality and say that something is imperceptive, you also are coming into the realization and actually manifesting it whenever you say that because you you pre, you you actually bring it into existence. You perceiving that saying that no. something can and, and, and it is a contradiction because you saying it can't exist, but whenever you Whenever you say it, it does bring it into existence. And I know that's kind of hard to grasp. No, no, but... no, 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 that's facts. Wait, 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 see, see I, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So I wanted you to get it out because here, here are, here's a, an additional problem. I never said what you <laughs> said. I actually said that something can exist and yet be imperceptible. You're acting like uh, the, the perception of something is, is, um, is a catalyst or litmus for something to exist itself. Oh, I'll itself. Oh, okay. So I, I never, wait, wait, wait. I never said such a thing. In fact, if you all would let me read, let me go back because. I don't uh, think he's saying that though, Ujia. No, he can speak for himself though. Uh, okay. Heru, he, he's, he's on here. <laughs> so oh, okay. I'm saying, I'm saying based you're on right. what he, based on what he just said. No, nah, you're right. I'm dead. I'm out of it. You told, okay, you told the right. truth. I'm saying, but I'm saying based on what he just said, it sounds like he misunderstands me as yeah. if I'm as if I'm saying that the thing is not does not exist and perceiving it, it brings it to existence as equating that the, the two. And no, what I'm saying is that and that's why I see if y'all pay attention to my examples, I, I, I said before you all met me online, I said I did not exist to you, but yet I existed I didn't I didn't exist to you until I came into your field of awareness, your your field of consciousness, your perception. So I became perceived by you and to you, I, I came into existence, but yet I existed the whole time, even without your your perception of me. So I gave that example earlier to cover what you what was just said. So that's not that's not it. But let me read this. Um this thing because because this this actually man this actually is the big what we start off with and it answers what what what's trying to be said and this is in a in a figurative language to explain this whole philosophical discussion that we're having it says unique is amen okay that means that there's some uniqueness there's some speciality to their concept of amen they start off with that wa amen Amenusu irsin, which means he who keeps himself concealed from them. All right, this is figurative language explaining this physical, I mean, excuse me, this physio, uh, excuse me, this philosophical conversation we're having right now. He, or oh, who, he who hides himself from the gods. All right, no one knowing his nature. And the word I said before is UNF, which is also the word for color in, in the respect of character attributes, because right, color, right. color is, a, is, is, is an attribute of something. The don't color, lose focus now, would y'all? We heard that earlier, but don't lose focus. We want to hear no. this point you make. Yeah, I am. You're supposed to bring it full circle. I'm, I'm bringing it full circle, I, and, okay. and, and, I'm, and I'm intentionally repeating it, pretty much what I was saying. Okay. Then the next line. He is more distant than the sky, and he is deeper than than the duat, which makes him very uh, expansive. Because because anything to the Egyptians, you gotta understand the sky and the duat were the limits. And and, Damn, they, and they sound like they perceiving. It. No, they 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 just said that they give an attributes know. of something that's unperceivable. You said it's like that's this. Right, it's right. like that's this. Right, it's right. like no. this. It's like this. No, no, no. But see, the, here here here's the thing. The title of this show is literal versus figurative expressions. And I asked you earlier, I never got an answer to, I asked you earlier, 
how would you visually represent wind that you cannot, that we do not see? How, and I said visually, purpose, purposely, vision, wind is, is, is um, uh, avoids our vision. So how would you visually represent wind? And the answer, I mean, you may have a different way, but the, but the, but the answer that anybody would have to do is you would have to represent wind using something that we can see even though we can't see when directly. And so that, that lends to the whole conversation or the whole title of the show, figurative versus literal. Um, but, you, but you said we can't see the wind, but we could perceive the wind, even though we can't see the wind, we could perceive I did, but it. I, but That's I, the okay, reason but, why we could draw no, a but, listen, of it. But, but wait, but wait, no, no, listen. And this is what you got to stop doing. I'm going to mute, I'm going to mute the next person to do it. Don't interject something I'm not saying. Don't argue against something that, that was not said. I said, see, I didn't say perceive right there. I said, we do not see. I, I even said in what I said, I said, I used the word visual purposely. That's what it I just sense. said with y'all. I think but a good there, example. There is not that, I was agree. I said, I said that you, wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead, guys. No, 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 no. You, 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 but you're in it. You're doing it. You're interjecting unnecessarily, man. I Listen, I, I am more than capable of explaining myself without, without a hype man. I really no, am. I'm saying, but I, I wasn't in agreement with you. But I mean, it's hard to make a statement because when you when you said the word when you said that it was perceived. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Right. Exactly. I didn't say perceive. <laughs> you yeah, said I was gonna, when I was you gonna... said the, when you said the word was see with y'all. Then I just came in. Listen to what I said closely. I just came in and said, "Yeah, you're right. You can't see it, but I can perceive it." Right. But there's no reason for you to do that. But you said that we can't. But you said that we can't. I don't need a hype man. No, I never but you, said I'm that. I'm not hyping that we, you. I'm a, I'm going against no, what you're saying. No. Listen, if, if you say exactly, that, but, if, but if you, you think you are. You're you're not. Listen, I how can no, you, let him finish. How, how can you go against something that I never even said just now? Yeah, he didn't even problem. finish the statement. I wasn't even finished. Number one, but I never even said what you said. Like it's 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 like it's like you you I don't like you like sitting on el electrodes like gotta jump up and say something, <laughs> uh for no reason I'm saying so let me finish what I'm saying, so let me finish what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. he now now you interrupted the flow but I was going back to the earlier question I asked due diligence to illustrate something else I was I asked earlier that how would you visually represent something that is invisible. And I and I specifically said wind. I said so. If you had the task of drawing wind, which is invisible, and the word invisible means it's not visible to the eyes. Okay, so we gonna keep it simple. How would you go about representing something invisible visually? And 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 everybody may have a different, slightly different way of of doing it. But the but the at the end of the day. You're going to have to use something that is visible to represent something that is invisible, like wind. And that's why on paper, you're going to draw swirls or whatever the case is, or do like the Egyptians, you're going to draw the effects that wind have on something. So the word for wind in the Egyptian language is drawn by the effect of wind. So they draw a billow, billowing sail on the ship, like as if the wind is pushing the sail uh, outward that's the word for wind even though they don't draw wind they draw the effects of wind wind so the point here is that you have to in order to in order to discuss and conceptualize things that are intangible or abstract you have to bring it into form and so the discussion on amen does not by any means um uh, is a way of saying that they're perceiving amen Amen is imperceptible. The statement Amen is imperceivable does not in and of itself make Amen perceivable. Can I say a quick interjection? All right, but I'm saying, do you find fault in that statement? If I say no. if I if I if if I if I say that wind is invisible, does that make wind visible by me saying that? Right. And the Asians express it a different way. Whenever they try to express something that that's uh, that's unperceivable, they say what it's not instead of what it is. Because saying that something it is kind of relate in a positive. You feel me? So in, in like the Asian system, they'll say 
what it is not. Anyway, anyway, I just thought no, I no, no, but but I'm saying e- even it's the same thing, but in vice versa. Yeah, I'm saying so. E- even if they do it in reverse, the the point is the same. the The end result is the same. Is that however you discuss something does not automatically make the something something different. So if I if I say that um, this rock is impossible to lift, by me saying that does not make the rock possible to lift. But when you say he is more distant than the sky, it's like if I was to take that literal, it's like but you're describing but you, but you something. Can't, but you can't. But you cannot. That's the whole point of this show. I was right. The whole show I, I, is is that was that is is not literal. It's figurative. <laughs> right. Right. Right, but 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 listen, if it even if it's figurative, you still describing something that's imperceptible. Is that is that not correct? Even if it's figurative, you are describing the imperceivable. Is that no. correct? No, no, no. You you're 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 actually, and that's why I go back to the wind thing. If, he is more distant than the sky. Is this? Uh-huh. You said it was an attribute. Okay. Of, of the unseen. So if it's an attribute of something, you are saying it's like something that's unperceivable, Ujawu. No, listen, if 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 you know, I want you see, I answer you directly, yeah, but you I'm, never I'm, answer me directly, Ujawu. And that's not fair. Wait, 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 wait. So when all right, so ask me your question, and I'm gonna give you a direct a direct answer so that you can stop saying that. Go ahead. You you said that these are attributes of Amit. And then whenever you say these are his attributes and then you describe something in a figurative way, even that, even since it's figurative, figurative, you are still describing something that's supposed to be imperceivable. Is that correct or not? And if not, why so briefly, directly? Because you, you, you see, because now we're somewhere else, but you'll spend a whole lot of time, but please, as brief as you can, if these are attributes of something that's imperceivable, how can you gather the attributes of something that's imperceivable if you're not perceiving it? Okay, very easily. The adjectival nature of attributes does not define the entity itself. You can have attributes for the entity without describing the entity itself or, or something could be imperceivable. All of these attributes lend, list out the reasons why it's imperceivable. So in other words, it's one A plus B plus C plus D is all going to equal imperceivability. So the, the attributes given, unique is amen. The word wa is an attribute of amen. The fact that I say amen is unique does not make me perceive amen. Just like no different than me saying that amen is imperceivable. The very name amen is right. an attribute. Is an attribute. That's for, exactly. for, for, for me. An listen, attribute. listen, wait, 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 wait. For an attribute me. is a part of something, uh, Wujaru. No, no, no. Listen, even if it's a part of a part of something. So here's the thing. Like I said to you, that if 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 I say that something is imperceivable, if I if I call something imperceivable. You're saying that me doing that is making it opposite of what it is. No, I am saying whenever you call something air, air, imperceptible and say he is more distant than the sky and say that's an attribute of the unperceptible, you perceived an attribute of the unperceivable. Okay, now this is where you are confusing figurative the the actual thing and for lack of a better word i'm gonna say thing what is the figurative for the literal you said is the figure figurative for the literal the figurative is actually a metaphor for the for the literal because we are actually talking about something Um, I was just going to say that I think I understand where uh, where you have a little confusion and, and just let me know if, if this is it. Um, because the attributes that are being um, that are being mentioned there are actually to describe why that thing is imperce- imperceivable, not the thing itself. Like how uh, we, we had the example with um, something you can't see something that is around the corner or something like that. Then 
I could li- I could actually say that um, you cannot see it, you cannot smell it, you cannot touch it. Me describing it, all the things that make that make make that thing around the corner impossible doesn't mean that actually now I am actually because I actually described what cannot be done on those things made that thing uh, perceivable. So that's I just an, so that's I the example that is uh, on the text. Well, no, he's describing the things, it in a positive though. So that that's different. No, Whenever you say it is not, I'm not talking about whether it. whether uh, it's a negative or, or a positive. I'm actually talking matter. about. Okay, listen. The descriptions are actually explaining why that thing is imperceivable. That's what you have to understand. It's not telling you about it's fat, it's tall. It's actually giving you reasons why that thing is imperceivable. So it's actually describing what, why it is being called imperceivable. If you just understand that simple thing, you're not going to overcomplicate yeah. it. Right. I, and, I, and I do I do understand that. But then whenever we use the uh, the rules of language and you say, this is like what this language and, and and then whenever you speaking in a positive and you describing something and you use an adjective to describe something that's uh and you stick with the definition of uh ir- imperceivable you know all right, let, me, let me let me all right let me let me all right let me, all right, let me one, let me one last question and i'm be i'm gonna yeah. be through because this is what you don't want to deal with with, with uh Wu this is what uh, you haven't dealt with yet okay and the question is they how do you how can you know something is imperceivable? Okay, so, okay. The reason why you can know something that is imperceivable is because of the limitations. No, that's, so too it's, it's, that's too vague. That's too vague. Okay, well, I, I answered you directly. So now let me expound because I'm trying to I'm trying to answer your way. So I'm going to expound. This is why I gave the illustration of the eye, because once you understand, and this ties into earlier when I talked about systems, I talked about systems earlier, uh, pedagogical systems that actually make you aware of the very fact that you don't know something or that, that there is an imperceivable. And so what you're actually training or acknowledging or getting to know are the limitations. And so there's this eyeball has limitations that for some reason, everybody's not acknowledging or they acknowledge it <laughs> on one hand, but then there's always butts after it. This eyeball can do everything, everything except for one thing. And that one thing is a limitation. Once this eyeball becomes aware of its own limitation, then it knows that it itself is imperceivable. And so it's a, it's a deduction process. It's a process of elimination. You spoke right. earlier, you said, you said that the Chinese or the Asians talk about it in the negative. Whether it's in the negative or in the positive, the entire process is a de- deducing type process. The educational steps that people take in, in, in maturing into this is, is a chipping away process of gaining, gaining knowledge of the limitations. And, and it's summarily said that the more I know, the more I know nothing or however that saying goes, because, 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 because when you say the more I know that's growth. So, so you're not, as your knowledge expands, you come to the realization that you, that you know nothing. But you don't know the limit, the, the, the limitations of why you can have a limitation. But see, and that's then what exceed, you're saying, though. And then exceed. Now, well, now that's what you're hold saying. On. Well, you did. You said the reason that we can can say that there's something that's imp- imperceivable is right. because we know we have limitations. And yeah. then also it's also true that we have had limitations in the past on how we perceive things and conceive things and have surpassed them those limitations. No, no, the, these are not limitations of, of what you're talking about. That's what somebody was saying to you earlier. Well, where, I was saying that the same you, thing about you with the eyeball, because the eyeball literally has a, a limitation. But then when we deal with perceiving something, we're not talking about nothing physical. No, no, no. I'm saying, but see, that's what I said. There's a difference between incapabilities of doing something versus being able to do something at a, at a future point in time. This eyeball at no future point in time will ever be able to see itself. 
But then Ever. when you move over to Ever. perception. Wait, 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 wait. First, 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 first acknowledge that. This eyeball. This eyeball will never, ever, ever, ever be able to perceive itself. And, 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 so, and so if this eyeball had to be taught that, once that eyeball is taught that and it becomes aware of it, it comes into its awareness, it has that epiphany, then that eyeball will also simultaneously know that it itself is imperceivable. That's deep. That's deep. And so let me just say this. I'm in. Let, let me let me clear this up in case anybody else. Has, After you do this, can I speak then? Would it be yeah. would it be a pro problem? Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not a problem. So let me just say this. The word I'm in itself means imperceivable. So, and, and, I, and I think that in this conversation, we, we uh, forgot about that a little bit, that we're, we're not like I'm in is not an object out there around the corner that you know these these are just analogy and scenarios given so it's i mean it's not a thing you know an entity that's that has height width length and you know none of that stuff and and then we just we just not seeing it that's why i always stay away from the word hidden because the round the corner scenario is closer to hidden and suppose as opposed to imperceivable i choose imperceivable purposely to kind of take away all of that confusion People translate I'm in as the hidden one, but it's actually better to say imperceivable because that's what it is in and of itself. It, it is the, the phenomenon of imperceptibility itself. And so you can't say something that is imperceivable is perceivable. That's, that's, that's just nuts to say that. And so, and I, and, and, and I want to say that this word itself is imperceivability itself. But the word I'm in is not it. It's a referent. It's a signifier for the signified, which is this phenomenon or, or this, this thing that we can describe as imperceivability. Just no different than this word here, E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T, which spells the word elephant. This word is not the elephant itself at all something that exists but don't exist to us pretty much is what you're saying it's like saying yeah. something exists and don't exist at the same time no it, it no but see this is the thing doesn't doesn't imperceivability the 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 state of of imperceivability that's that's a real phenomenon like that 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 is a reality how can you say that Ujawu? like competently like you cannot give no examples other than that, that I, which that's that's a uh, that's a vision thing and not perceptive because if the eye is conscious, it can perceive itself. No, it can't see. See, no. Now you you're actually adding into it, and this and this is why, this is why because, we, when we did because no, because conscious no. is in the definition of perceive. I know, but okay, I'm let me see. Okay, wait, wait. How how is how is a person conscious of of anything? Nobody knows. Nobody knows, Bujawa. We do not know what consciousness okay, so is. Now, what you, okay, so now what you okay, so here's what you just did. You introduced a word that will end that will that will lead to a pathway of nobody knows. And so and so you invoke that word. And so what but I'm saying, true. I'm not saying no, no, I'm not I'm I'm saying consciousness is awareness. And and there are things right now before you and I met, you were not conscious of me. And, and, and we could say it a different way. You were not aware of me, but yet, but yet I existed and vice versa. I didn't, before I met you, you, you did not exist to me, but, that, but, but yet you existed. But so, that's not so, the same thing as something being imperceptible, like that. It cannot be grasped. You just said, wait, wait, you just said, you just equated perception with consciousness and i just gave the example of you did not perceive me or you were not aware of me you were not conscious of me and you're you're the one that lined these words up as synonym yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't see how we i don't see what we, what oh, we differ. no but i'm saying earlier you said how do we know that there is such a thing a phenomenon called imperceivable or 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 something that is in you know not perceived 
Absolutely. And, and you, you, I'm saying we just demonstrated before this point in time. So let's just take 20 in the year 2020. That's not emperor. That don't mean it can't come into into being though. Like we, you know that. Wait, that, wait. That, now, you, two, now you, oh, now you, now you confusing into coming. In, now you confusing. Those are two different things. Distance. Whenever you say something is imp, 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 imperceivable, you mean it, it's it cannot happen. It right. can't happen. Right. But so to to you something that can't come into existence is not the same. And this is so. This is what I'm saying. I'm in is is the fact that that there is the imperceivable there's an imperceivable aspect of existence and that imperceivable af aspect of the, of existence is self not even the self it is self because i, I understand self. complete i understand completely what you're saying with Jawu. i just i just want to bring the enigma and the contradictory nature of the of the discussion because but that don't it's mean actually not it, there, 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 there's it, philosophers it, that that actually already work this out like like we're having this conversation but it's it's, it's not it's, it's not even an enigma it's but it's, i think it's, it's people it's, on the other side will that will that will argue against it you know what i mean because i mean everybody well, will argue. The, I mean, that's what i'm always, saying but you asking like arguing. the consensus is, is oh. there a consensus consensus with jawu Oh. No, there's no consensus on that oh, no, because the no, hard problem of consciousness has not been solved. And there's Wait. many open problems in mathematics, like division by zero denominator and different yeah, things. Like that. Topic, for God's sake. Yeah, now you're talking I'm about I'm on topic. It was, can I speak now? Then okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, you, you can speak, but let me just say this. Because he asked me a question, consensus. Consensus by what? It, does everybody agree? No, everybody doesn't agree because because there are people who are still, you know, adding to the knowledge or whatever. But there's a general consensus. Oh, Ja Wolf, where you go, man. Okay. No, I mean you asked me the question. You asked me the yeah. question. And it can't it, then, can't it can't it can't be there you go if it's not matching with something that you may maybe in your position or whatever. I'm saying nah, that, don't do me like that. I'm saying when we talk about consensus, we're talking about the majority. What does the majority say? And you saying at first you said there's no consensus, and then you said there's a general consensus no, no, on no. your end to match no, your no. side. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying there's a, a general consensus to match my side. I don't have a side. I'm saying if you, if you, if you, if you want to enter into the domain of logic, we could set up a logic table, and the conclusion will be very sound. If you want to do that, we could do that. Because, because if, I want if, to. if you want to, if you, if you want to do that, we we could do it. I want to. What the consensus say of the philosophers about uh, the the concept of imperceivable. And the concepts that we really dealing with and trying to hash out, I, I don't think I don't think there's a consensus of what we was talking about. But even if you set up a logic table, you know what I mean, and and it, and it goes to what you say, you know what I mean. I, I think that I mean no, we 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 could set it up it, it it don't. I'm not saying it may not go to what I say. We could set we could do the work. See, that's the difference when there's not a consensus or because like if we if we were to to um do the do the citation battle. I can cite people that agree with you, and you could probably cite people that agree with you. We're we're still would be left at a crossroads where we would have to um, get our feet wet and dig in and actually do the work because otherwise it'll be a, um, a what do you call it a stalemate in citations because I'm gonna find somebody to agree with me, you're gonna find somebody to agree with you. Then at the end of the day, it's like okay, we're stuck stalemate unless we actually do the work. So if you want to, as I said, if you want to set up the the, the logic tables. And 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 pan this out from beginning to end. I don't mind. I mean, we we might as well. If you don't mind, I'm gonna tag in new. Go ahead with the logic tag table. Bro. You said you're gonna tag in new. So new hero, you said you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say like, um, it's a such thing called the observable universe, and then beyond the observable universe. Everything beyond that is considered imperceptible. I'm going to say it again. There's the observable universe. And that's what everybody say, how old the universe is and everything. But all scientists and all physicists know that the observable universe is not the entire universe. It's just that which can be observed, that which is perceptible by the eye. By the eye. I'm talking about what was shown on the board by the eye, that which is, can be perceived by the eye. However, scientists logically reason 
that there is something beyond that which they can be observed. And right. that moves into another type of perception. And that's all being said here, that the word perception or imperceptibility or imperceptible is too broad to be put under the umbrella of see alone, like see and sight, that, that, that one um, category of sense. That's why I brought up the other senses other than that one sense. So oh, wait, I, 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 got, I got I to pause you for a second because you're, you're doing it again. Uh, you're, you're, you're bring, you bring up like an, a pushback or an ar argument in, a, in like a, refu a re refuting way of something that's not said. Like I, I, I'm not limited in anything to sight. The only reason why I use the eyeball, I mean, I know eyeball is the organ of sight, but I explain why I, I use the eyeball because that's an easy instrument to, to show. I, I could have used the, the car headlight which is not an eyeball. I, I could have used that as, as, as a scenario, the car's headlights with, which it would have fixed, you know, a fixed directional beam of light. It will never be able to see itself. Whatever the case is, the, the, the thing is, is that everything that you can imagine that you can't do, the limitation is what we're defining as the self. So I, I asked earlier, I want you New Heru, I want you to define self. Okay. Now, as I always say, I'll describe it because I don't think that there's no definition for any word. A word is like a picture. It's too many words to define it. But I, I will give you a description of what the self is. The wait, 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 I, wait, I, 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 I didn't understand what you just said. You that said, was hard. Wait, I don't know. Okay. How hard I'm, gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna just, say it wait, again. wait. You 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 just said you just said that there's no such thing as as a definition. Yeah, no such thing as a definition. There's no definitionary. It don't exist. Wait, wait. So so what is the definition of definition? There's no definition for a word. I just explained that. There's no definition for definition. Then then why, thing, then why? Wait, wait, wait. Happen, how how can you use? Happen, wait, wait, wait. How can wait? Wait, wait, wait. So, man, this is going to be good. How, <laughs> how, how can you use the word? How can you negate the, a word that there's no such thing for? You, you, you said, you said, you said it. it's a description for it, not a definition for it. I said the word. Can wait, be wait. Described. No, no, you just said. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me type this out because this is going to be good right here. <laughs> you, said, you said you said you said you said repeat what you just said. I got to type this out. We're going to type what you say. Boy, you slippery. When you when you when you said it, when you, when you, in the garden. I, I agree with what he said. No, no, okay. That, hey, well, we're gonna put you in this into this too, but he, he's gonna be the mouthpiece. All right, so great. What you say? You said you said there's so repeat what you said. Watch, I'm gonna show y'all something. This is gonna be good. Go ahead. He didn't express it well, but I understand what he's trying to say. No, no, no. Let, let him speak for himself. Go ahead. Okay, uh, well, go ahead. well, tell me which part you want me to repeat. Just give me a little hint. No, I'm saying you. I'm saying give me a little hint of what I was saying, bro. I'm trying not to say that I forgot what I was talking about. Okay, give okay. me a little hint on the sentence. You were no, you you were just now, um, telling me that there was no such thing as a definition, but you were good. You know, okay, I know what I was saying now. Good, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, so now I said that that was that that's it. So you said you can't hear. You need to bring that down. That's exactly what I said. Right there, there's no such thing as a definition. Okay, so there's no such thing as a, as defi a definition for a word. Wait, 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 wait. So there's no such thing as a definition. Okay, for, for a word. word. You can't okay, cut okay, right, it right. off. No, no. Yeah, I'm, 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 listen, I'm Calm trying, down, no. I'm, I'm trying I'm to get it in. I ain't, I ain't upset. I'm just talking, man. Maybe my speaker's no, no. too loud or whatever, no, but this no, no, is no, fun. No. I mean, okay. I don't fear. I this have to say good. this all the time. I do not fear the question. I okay. had more to man, say than this, and I'm no. Come on, no. Come on, come on, no. We're trying to go. All right, so here we go. So, so I have it correct. You, you said there is no such thing as a definition for a word. Now, yep. I have a, I have a follow-up question. This is your statement. Let me put your name on. I got, I got to sign your name on this one, boy. New Henry. <laughs> Okay, we're going we're gonna to sign. Right, man. You said right. you have people in stitches. I do be laughing, though. All right, here we go. So so we got, so according to New Heru, there is no such thing as a definition for a word. 
Can All I right, add now. to it? Wait, wait, hold up one second. One second. Um, here's I got I got two follow up questions. Is is definition a word? Yeah. Okay, so definition a definition is a word. All right. So Absolutely. Um, definition is a word. All right. Now let me say one thing. Your proof of a linguistic paradox is not a proof of me being wrong. It's a proof that there is a paradox exists because I already said that. But let's go ahead. On. Okay, so definition is where I want I want to put it in uh uh so we know. So definition is a word. Okay, mm -hmm. so, you, so you said there is no such thing as a definition for a word. That's right. And and definition is a word. That's right. Facts. Okay, so, all right, now here's my follow-up question to that. Define um, definition. No, no, not define definition, because he's gonna he's gonna go around in circles on that one. So I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm no, asking, not me gonna go around in circles. The question is circular. The question um, is a vicious cycle, um, not me. Don't throw it on me. If you ask me to define definition and I just told you there's okay. no such thing as a definition for a word, then you making it circular. That would be the okay. contradiction and the paradox. Let's move forward. Okay. All right. So I got two questions now since you said that. I'm sorry, but I'm, you, you, you maybe add on one. Do Can you agree that this statement, there is no such thing as a definition for a word? Do, can, we, can you agree that this, this is a negation when you say there is no? Well, would y'all, that's a good question. Now, let me say this, though, because I have <laughs> seen you use the word, wait, I ain't gonna go far. You know, I feel that. I have seen you use the word, though, negation in several different ways. Let me just be short. You said that in that the word a in atheist means a negation of theism. Then you said that a today can mean against. Then you said that M in imperceptible is a negation. Mm -hmm. I agree. Not M is not is not not yeah. Not is a negation. So you, you now say now hold on, hold on hold on hold on hold on. So now I said that the other day I said that when we read that statement and it, and it said that um the opposite it said the opposite of the word. So now it's opposite. Before I ask your question, just help me out. Because I want to be a fool, it's opposite a negation. Is the opposite of a thing a negation? I have to know this in order to answer your question. I'm not questioning you with a question. I have to know this in order to answer your question. Uh, not necessarily. So it's opposite a negation. Not necessarily. That ain't good enough. That ain't refined enough. <laughs> enough no, no. I mean, I mean, no. no I'm, 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 I'm saying the opposite. The no, yeah, I mean, I ain't trying to say what you got to tell me. No, but, but that I'm, answer is no. no I, that answer is no. Well, no, it's it's not, no. I'm saying that the the opposites is not the same as negation. No, you can say like uh, man is an uh, the man is like an opposite for a woman. That does not mean you're negating something. That's what I'm saying. Opposites, opposites, and negation. So he answered no. Where are you going a, with it? Can you continue? There's a, there's a little overlap, but that's why I said not necessarily. Right. Correct. And that's and that's that's perfectly sound. Like I don't know where you're getting your your stuff. So from. so but, but 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 by that reason, then we could say that not is not always a negation. Because no, when saying, I brought no, when, I'm, when I'm I brought, no, when I'm, I'm wait, 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 wait. I'm saying. I'm sticking to your sentence, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not thinking no hypotheticals. I'm saying these are your words, and I'm. I just simply ask you in your statement, can we agree that this is a negation? That this whole sentence is a is a negating sentence. It's it's, it's negating something. It's it saying is. there there is no like when you use is no. You're saying there is no. There is no such thing. Like I don't even have. To, Tag me in. No, 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 no. See, is the statement negative? In the negative, yes. But the word negative is not the same thing as negate in logic. What am I negating? The negation is you're like neg not negating. Hold, 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 hold on, let me just finish. I just got to ain't said but one. I have a sentence. A negation is to say a is is to say a thing is not like p is not p p does not equal not p so the negation of something is to say that a thing is not so 
And that's what you just said. There is no. <laughs> but when you say, but when you say, uh, is this a sentence of negation? Yeah. No, it's a positive sentence in the direction of there is no such thing as a definition for a word. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, this is what you do this is what you do. This is what you do. You 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 like you explain something that's not even being asked or discussed. I simply asked you. Okay, you okay. Let's say it's a negation. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Now, if I say it's a negation, where? Okay, so but I want you to commit to that though. No, I'm committing to, to it. I'm totally committed. Okay. Let's go. Okay. All right. So 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 I I want to be clear. So this there is no such thing. All right. So now my next question is. This statement of yours, I'm going to ask you a question. How do you know there is no such thing as a definition for a word? How do you know that? I explained earlier that the same, okay, now we're going to get into a hardcore thing, but I'm going to try not to say those words. But you can't speak in pictures. One cannot speak in pictures. I don't if have I any show pictures. You a picture, if I show you a picture, you're if I show about you a, you're about to talk about something that's not even wait, even wait, screen. wait, wait. This does have something to do with it. Now, I ain't that stupid for to no, not I'm just saying, all nah, around kill for listen, every time. I'm saying, I how it. how are you bringing up pictures right now though? Like like this my like, this my analogy. This my figurative speech. This my simile. <laughs> this my metaphor. This my linguistics. This is right. language. I'm talking I'm gonna, to you. All right, listen. I'm going to do that. All right, I'm going to become Elmer Fudd. And I'll go down this this rabbit hole. Or who, who who hunts the rabbit? Yeah. Okay. I'm, so I'm, for, I'm, so before you before you make it all that, let me finish. Okay, I see what you're doing, but let me finish. So now, no, I, it, I, I think you're going to lead us to a rabbit hole. But I'm 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 a walk with you. So let's go. So so you so pictures go. Let's go. Pictures. I'm I'm saying I'm saying this that. Wait, first, re-ask your question so I can put it in perspective. Goodness, okay. no. Your, your, statement, your statement is there is no such thing as a definition for a word. And I'm just okay. asking, I'm asking you, how do you know there is no such thing as a definition for a word? How do you okay. know? And, and my example, because I don't give definitions and you're asking the word, how do I know something? So when you invoke the word no, that turns into epistemology for me. And I say to that, I have to move to a higher ground than epistemology. And I have to move on to ontology, which is the ground of being, which is beyond just knowing something. And then so th at that point, I can say, yes, I know. This is how I know. This is how I know. That uh def that no such thing or no such thing as a definition for a word exists because of the word being, because of the ontology of the word definition, because the word definition would have to be a being, and the word definition is not a being, it does not exist in and of itself. It's a word Ooh. that is no Shit. Man, he said a lot. Epistemology, ontology, <laughs> yeah. what, 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 all the What are we trying to say? No, I just used two. Epistemology, which is knowing, and, and ontology, ontology, which is being. And so it's several people that wrote books on knowing and being, on sense and reference, on concept and such. Listen, listen, so, listen, so, listen, so, listen, wait, wait, hold up. Basically what you're saying is every, it's all relative. It's really what you're saying. It's just nah, words. Yes. No, the, no, question no, was, the question no, was, no, the question yeah. was simply, how do question. you know it's, no. that? I just said, I know, I know why, because I'm taking a higher ground, moving up to ontology, and I'm saying the definition is not a being. It does not exist until you invoke the word. In the beginning was the word. It does not exist. Until <laughs> so it's not a that being. Word. That's why it doesn't. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so wait a minute. It, it does so not listen. exist until you invoke the All word. All right, listen, so listen. Therefore, it, therefore, definition for a word. And let, let me tell you something. I mentioned Kurt Godell and I mentioned David Hilbert. See, David Hilbert was going with, along with mm. making logic and axiomatizing and, and, and mathematizing all mathematics, making it one language, one consistent, one complete language. Kurt Godell proved that you can't have a complete and consistent language in a system. And if you do have a complete uh 
consistent language in a system, then it's contradictory. Because like you said, Wujiao, the system cannot define itself. It's a man named Alan Turing who helped along with this by creating a thing called a halting problem, where a computer, even if you build a computer and the put Turing a computer in a computer, the Turing experiment, it cannot figure out whether the other computer halt because it has to That's halt true. or know itself if it's going to halt. So I know what I'm talking about. And I know when I say, um, when I be particular with my words, that the word opposite is a negation, because I study this. I know when I say that the word A against is not always a negation. And I know when I say that the word M in imperceptibility does not mean to negate perceptibility. So, you know, you still haven't answered that question apart from the fact that it is not a being. You said a lot, but you did not actually. How can you use so much words and actually Why you run away from the word? Now, listen, listen. You were asked a very simple question. You did a lot of talking, though, and a lot of, you know, you put in a lot of words just to not answer the question. The only thing I got out of you that was close to an answer was that because it's not a being. All That's the rest, it. I don't the, know. That was just filibuster. Everything else really. is my logic. I promise you. So you could have just said it. it's not a being and then just keep it simple. You see how that works? No. Yeah, but, but there's other stuff in this conversation that we was talking about, though, that I was trying to come Nah, because that, that's outside. I mean, we can understand what you're trying to say, but we understand what the question is. And when you, but, when you ask a question and you answer it, if, if, you, if you answer it, we can tell we're answering. So the only thing, and I had to, re, to, to re-ask because you went way somewhere else. Back and you just came back with this a being. I mean, because we all, you know, listen, everybody's speaking English here. So when some when something is asked, because I know when Wujiao even tries to explain something, it will be like, oh, man, just answer the question. So when you ask the question, just answer the question. Like, it's very simple, but I get it. It's not a being. So all the rest, we can, we can erase that. Okay. But, but it's but not listen, a being, okay. to you. Can, can I say something to you, though, guys? But, but the wait, reason oh, why sometimes... Wait, the reason wait, why wait, sometimes wait, wait. You listen, listen hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second, one second, one second. I'll, I'll give you a chance to finish, but... It's 309, so I'm definitely going to shut it down. So, And and it's unfortunate that it's, it's going to appear that I'm just cutting it, and I just have to because it's, it's late. I just looked up at the, at the time. So um, so get get what you were going to say out, and we could we could always pick up. So trust me, I'm, I'm, we go live all the time, so it's no problem. Just just remember, you know, what we're talking about in general, and then we'll, we can uh, find our way back. Uh, just leave some breadcrumbs. We'll find our way back to the topic. Um, so go ahead. You, you were saying... That, That's a great segue for me right there, the breadcrumbs. When I use those words and people say they fancy words, I'm expecting for the listeners out there, other people than the people that just on the panel or whatever, I'm expecting for those people to pick up those breadcrumbs because those are words that you that'll lead you to what I'm talking about and what they're let me, talking let me just about. Say, okay, let me say this. Everything you mentioned, I'm fully aware of. And okay. if you, if you, if I'm saying, if you, if you ever, nobody isn't though. No, 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 no. Let me just say this. I'm not saying you are saying that nobody isn't. I'm just informing okay. you that everything you were saying, I'm, I'm aware of. And if you ever watch this channel or watch my lives on Facebook or, or here and stuff, you'll hear me use um, ontology and taxonomy all the time, ontological and taxonomic labels and the whole nine. And everything that you just said does not apply to my question at all because no one said that the that a word is a is a is a being or the, or definitions of being um is a being so for you to like go on the whole thing about being and invoke ontology and epistemology and stuff which are studies of these things it to me it's just like it just confuses the whole it just confuses the whole thing instead of just answering the question of of how do you know that there is no such thing as a definition of child, do you know how do you know the question that you asking me how do i know if a word has a definition do you know the gravity and levity of the question that you are asking me maybe i oh. should ask that do you realize the question that you ask me no I, I, I really it ain't, a single, really, it ain't I, a single person it ain't a single person that you know but I know the answer. It ain't a single person that you know can answer that. Now you go to any physicist or yeah, any hey. philosopher and you pose hey. that question. No, hold up. Let me finish. You go to any physicist or philosopher and you pose that question and you bring that answer back to this show and put it on this panel and I'll stand corrected. But I know you ain't and I know you can't. Okay, okay so here's, here's, the, here's the thing then. Because if we're, if we're going to, um, I'm not acquiescing to what you're saying. 
Um, but if we were to hypothetically, yeah. if we were to hypothetically roll with what you're saying, then the the communicate the 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 phenomena that we call language and the phenomena that we call communication itself would would not even be it would it we we would not be able to even communicate. You so, use the word. So you, you made a you statement. Use the word Wait. Tacit. No, no. You, you use the word tacit. We tacitly use language, and there are many flaws in language that we overlook as humans, and we still able to communicate. Right, that don't stop but, nothing. No, what I'm saying is that you made a statement. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven so-called words in your statement. There is no such thing as a definition for a word. Now, ob now, obviously, when you're making this statement, you have uh, concepts that 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 these words or word patterns or sound patterns as you speak them are attached to. And this is what I'm saying. Although you you're familiar with with the word ontology and the word epistemo epistemology, I can tell by your by your lack of an answer that you do not know what a word actually is. That uh, that the 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 form I and meaning side, no at the form and sign yes. and, um and meaning of of this thing that we're calling the word because me asking you how do you know there's no such thing as definition of word you 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 really just kind of what they call no yeah. I said there is no such thing as a definition for a word and you just asked me how do I know if there's no such thing as a definition for a word and I said to you there is no such thing as a definition. So if there's no such thing as a definition, then how could there ever be a definition for okay. a word? Okay, when so I do me a favor. Said, when All right, I so do me a favor. Said, there's no such thing as a definition, how okay. could I proceed to even answer the okay. question, a definition okay. for a word? And okay. I said, so I already favor. know that that's going to lead to a contradiction. You're going to okay. have to keep down the ladder because that's a linguistic game and I ain't going to be caught with that. And then you said, so definition is a word. And I said, yes. Okay, no, no, no. So let's do this. Let's look up in a dictionary. The definition of definition. Definition. They're gonna give you a description, and you should man. Okay, but ain't oh, no so wait, definition so wait. in the dictionary. So you looking in the dictionary? Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying definition? Saying... So okay, you looking wait. in the dictionary? Oh no, 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 no. I'm saying that's, no, no. I'm yes. saying I'm saying because because you <clears throat> you you've used dictionaries before on this show, like with me. Yeah, and I use it as a description, not as a definition. It could describe okay. things. It could okay. lead you, like I said. Okay, so I'm going to use. I'm going to. Okay, okay, I'm going to use your vernacular, your your choice your choice words. Let's look up the description of the word definition. Yeah. I I know I sent you a uh, direct message, man. Okay, I don't know how to get it, bro. I'm dumb on the internet. So let's look, up, let's look up the description of definition. Can I give him my email or my Facebook or whatever? Yeah, Can yeah. You? Type it. Oh, yeah. You want to say it? Pronounce it out loud? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it, you, could just, you could just email me at um, aesthetics. That's A-E-S-T-H-E. Hold up. 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 Aesthetics. Yeah, that's A-E. Hold, hold up. Let me get my, let me get my pen. Let me. Hold up. Hold up. Sorry, we got what What is it? A E S T H E T I C S. Aesthetics. Mathematics. M A T H E M A T I C S at gmail.com. Okay. All right. So now you got that just real quick. Um, so, so we're going to look up the description of. Uh, definition, right? Yeah. Well, we, technically, we looking up the diction of definition. Wait. Oh, and, it's gonna give us, and it's going to give us a description. We looking up in the dictionary the diction of the word definition, and it's going to give us a description. I okay, repeat. So we are looking up the diction of the word definition, and it's going to give us a description. Yes, okay. that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, so what is the diction? 
like contradiction. See? So negation. Di- Contra di- is negation. Wait, so, so the opposite is of contradiction? diction is contradiction. But I didn't ask you what the man, do you do you hear? Like the, I do. I'm I'm listening. I'm I got you. I'm finna define it for you. I'm gonna define what I know, but why would you why would you I'm do that? Like I, I'm why, you. why would you see this is this is your this is, is the up, description up. of it. The description oh. of diction, the description of diction is the opposite of it. Contradiction. That's my description of it. Wait, That's my oh. description of it. Okay, so you feel you're, you're by my description. No, 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 I'm not a aff- listen, I'm not offended. I'm just saying it was a bit weird that I asked you for the description of um diction and you let me say and, this. And you gave, wait, 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 wait. And you and you get hold up, hold up. And you gave okay. me the description of contradiction when I didn't even ask that. And th- this is this has been no, your No, I your, describe your diction pattern. by using the word contradiction. I'm describing diction. You said where is diction? I'm describing yeah. it by saying it's contradiction. It's, it is the opposite of contradiction. Hold up, hold up. Hey, what, what, That's what, my what's description that? of diction. Okay, hold, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm trying to follow you, so help me out here one second. Give me one second. I, I need to write that down too. So hold up. I got to write that one down. Oh, man, I lost my, my spot. You know, I said earlier that this was my email. reason. Let me, oh, let, let me know if you got the email, no. Okay, um, but let me say this. I said it earlier that that was my reasoning and my logic because I said clearly that if I teach you the good, I'm teaching you the bad. If I teach you the right, I'm teaching you the left. If I teach you up, I'm teaching you down. This is not a contradiction. This is not a contradiction. I'm going to say it again. This is not a contradiction. You know what it is? What? It's a paradigm. It's a condition. It's a if. It's not a contradiction. It's a condition. It's a if and then statement. It's a if, then, and when. Or and all of that have to be involved. And that's logic, mathematical logic, really, but logic. So that's what I'm dealing with. And so what I'm saying is going to sound weird because the questions that you're asking, I don't think y'all realize how deep they are. They meta, they, they meta referential questions. No, they, they asking about the contradiction. You asking, you asking me a word about a word about the self of the word. So then how do you think the answer is going to come out? If you ask me to say, if you ask me this question, listen to the question. It's all define, relative. De- define definition. Now, if you that's already a contradiction because you can't define a word using a word. So I just keep I it simple. Um, I, 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 no, I, I, you, you just said, let, let him write what you just said. Just keep it simple. Diction is a contradiction. We just want to get no, right no. on it. Listen, I, this is what I have from you right here. I asked, this is what I asked you. I said, what is the description of diction? Your answer to me was the description of diction is contradiction. That was, that was, that was, it's the opposite. The opposite of diction is contradiction. I know. So, so I'm just writing what you actually said. So that's verbatim. You said the description of diction is contradiction. All right. I just, I just want to, um, follow you and, and get and get this down. let me ask you a question right quick what's the opposite of p the opposite of what p p as in the letter p uh-huh as a variable in mathematics if you will oh i, I don't know the the opposite of p is not p oh you mean but then you could have picked any letter for that any any variable i know i could have picked any letter that's exactly my point would y'all no, no so I'm I'm saying, saying, wait wait, wait. Okay, now, that's just pu- that that is no. pure com- uh, bad communication it's not actually what you're trying yeah, to explain that's, that's just bad communication flat out but hold up Here, here's the I thing i don't even know i actually wait 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 wait, wait. Let's, let's go back wait 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 but let's i know go, my point mate wait wait let's go back to what i asked you i said and this is man, y'all have made me stand for an extra 20 minutes. What is the description? And I'm using your vernacular because I'm not saying what is the definition of diction, I'm saying what is the description of diction because you don't like the word definition, you rather use the word description. And if I ask you to define description, you'll tell me that there is no such thing as a definition. I can't define description, I'll give you the description, but I could, description. But I could give you a lot of descriptions of what description is. Exactly. I sure can. You're gonna, and you're, I can make you gonna, understand in a language. But you just said, wait, wait, you and just I can said, communicate to you, you said, in a wait, language. Wait, wait. What but you just said, is. wait, but you just said that you can't use the same word, same word to describe the same word. You, you, but yet, you, if I say, give me the description of description, then you're stuck. 
But anyway, well, I, no, I'm not stuck. What, I said that it's a contradiction in the language. I'm willing to admit that. And it's nothing but I used a meta reference. That's not a contradiction. I just I, used it I, as a meta I, reference. I, I, wanna, I just said I want to get to the cleric. So so I asked you for the description of diction, and your answer is the description of diction is contradiction. All right. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Okay. So it's opposite. Is, it's opposite contradiction. I didn't say that the, that diction wait. is contradiction. That wouldn't make sense. That'll be D equals C. No, I said. But that's diction, what you said. So now you want to change. All right, I, but I, I said I, opposite. I, I was clear to say opposite. I clearly included the word opposite. But that's not opposite. what he asked you, no. I know. I, I, yes, he I, did. I, he just asked. He just asked me. What is the definition? What is the description of diction? What is the description? And the re first definition, but now it's the description of diction. And I said that the description of diction is just that a description because diction, when you look in the dictionary, the only thing it's going to give you is the only thing it's going to give you is a description. So I said, we are going to define the word definition using a dictionary. And it's going to give us a description. That's no, what you I said. said no, clearly. you said no. You said diction. You said uh, you you said you said you said when I when we go to the dictionary, the dictionaries don't give definitions; they give diction. And you Fact. said that you said. Fact. Okay, wait. Let's stop. Let's go. Let's go one for one. Fact. Okay, I agree. Okay, so you said that that we're going to be finding diction in the dictionary, and the no, diction. No, we was looking up definition. No, I didn't say no. we found the diction. We found no. a definition in the dictionary. No, we found a definition. Said, no, you said you said you had a problem with the word definition. You said there's no such thing as a definition. So don't go back on your word now. Yeah, but you said we were gonna look up what a definition is. And I no, said we gotta did. look up what a definition is in a no. dictionary. No, play I it said, back then. No. Play it back then. Listen, may, may, may we may I please listen, add man. whenever you get a chance, please. Nah, I, I, after I, after this, I'm I'm definitely gone. I'm I'm overtime. Trust me. So I'm I just want I just want to end I'm on saying, I'm, Let Listen, me say, say for the record. I'm Wait, saying no, this no, for no, the no. record. No, no, no. It, it doesn't. No, we I'm, are looking at the word it. definition. That was the original point. That was the original. Purpose. I know that. And Listen, I, I invoked the no. word diction Listen. by saying no. that is no such thing as definition. And then I said that, no. how are you going to look up definition That's, in a dictionary? To, wait, wait, I said the to, only thing the dictionary is going to provide is diction. You, okay, you're, 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 okay. Listen, I type what you exactly said. And 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 if you adding or or changing, that's perfectly okay. That I'm mean, that's okay. We all do that. That's fine. I'm just saying. You know I'm saying? If you show me what you typed, I'll tell you if that's what I said. The first thing you said was the description of diction is contradiction. That's what you said. So, so now, so I understand um, can that. Can you just give me that man that started that little tiny? I, I am trying. Listen, that you trying I am, to take on I, me? I, I said. Nah, I, you I, said that no. You said I, I, that no. You I may have misspoke, but you said that, bro. I am, but I am actually trying to give it to you, and you're you're like did didn't I didn't I say that M oh, is not didn't I say that M is a form of negation? I said that A against is Wait, a form of negation. Look, look, I said that these things are a form I, I have of negation. To, I have to mute, man, because I, I I'm 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 trying to get up out of here at this point. And so my patience is gone at this point. I'm just telling y'all straight out. So listen. Whether you, I mean, you did say this, but but you, if you clarify and expound on it, that is perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I'm giving it to you. So so you're in your in your um in your uh, way of doing things. You do not think that there's a such thing as definitions. You you rather you use descriptions, the word description to describe words as opposed to give as far as you rather describe words than define words. And so the dictionary doesn't have definitions. The dictionary has diction. And from the diction, we'll get the description. And that's what that's basically what you're saying. You're saying the dictionary provides the diction. And when we find the diction of a word, it'll be it'll be the description. And so. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's all I'm saying. OK, great. So. So now we, 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 have, we have arrived. OK, so cool. So next time we meet up, what I want you to do, though. Is because you 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 use dictionaries, and this is what I said earlier too. You, I said you use dictionaries while while we've been engaging and talking, and that's when you say, "Yeah, you 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 have," but you said you've been using them to get the descriptions and not definitions. 
So I wanted, I wanted to, in your, in your terminology, I wanted to look up the description of the word definition. Let's look it up then. <laughs> no, nah, not now. I'm, I'm, I'm out of it now. So we, we done. We, we done wasted time. You wanted to look up the word definition. May I say something in closing to, um, to the special but, maybe when, when we come, when we come back or whatever, like, um, I, I lightweight agree with, with what you say. No, I just feel like you you expressed it, you know what I mean, in, in a way that I wouldn't, and I would express it like this, rather, rather right or wrong, but I believe I kind of understand what you're saying. I, I would say definitions are not definite. I believe that words uh, are relative and using words to describe words is just too too vague you can, it's going to be synonyms through, you know what I mean? Through, through everything. You know what I mean? So I, I would say the definitions do exist, but they are not, they are not definite. And, and it's just, as he said, it is describing it. They, they actually all are adjectives. Words are, are like adjectives, all words, even <laughs> though they do have their different functions in, uh, in, in grammar. You know what I mean? But if you really think about it, it's all just describing stuff in reality, no matter how it functions in the sentence. You know what I mean? So I, I agree with you. True. <laughs> well, that's that's how I see it. You know what I mean? So it, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, we, we could work that out. We could we could work that we could work all that out. And and um and see if you know, it statement. stands for something, it has to be representing something else. Really, really. So the, the point that he was making is nah, but, but I don't I don't think you would know what an adjective is though. Yeah, we're trying to close out though. So yeah, I'm, 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 try, I'm trying to clo- I'm trying to close out because an ad you know, an adjective, both adjectives and um substantives are both nouns. And a lot of people don't even know adjectives are are, are nouns and all that. So we 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 deal with this. This is the kind of stuff we've been dealing with. I've been dealing with for 10 years, man. And I'm just <laughs> listening and stuff. And we would have to start off a show with with that kind of talk because to end it, nah, because it's, it's too many things that's that's left um un unclearly, you know, the ambig- ambiguity is not, you know, removed not and stuff. So and yeah. I don't mind being being wrong, uh, Wujawu. I, I don't. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to say nobody else is wrong. And if I'm wrong, so so be it. You know what I'm saying? But that's the way I see it. And I say peace to y'all. And and I and I have fun every time, you know what I mean? Re- regardless of where it go and how it how it get, I have fun and I love these conversations and I appreciate mm-hmm. your platform, bro. All right. So that's that's good close out. And I'm trying to get out of here. So, okay. so, so next, close out. next the next conversation though, um, if we're not in the middle of a different conversation, so if y'all, you know, if 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 it's caught early enough in the conversation, we could pick up. But I don't I don't want to derail another conversation just to bring this up though. So, you know, I just give y'all a heads up. So I don't, I don't mind revisiting it and we could pick up right with what I have on the screen, which is, um, which is the, uh, Merriam Webster's, um, definition of, of definition. No, no, I'm saying the definition entry I'm using it as an entry. This is an entry in the dictionary. And so it actually says to us, um, despite what Nuheru says, it says the definition of definition, which is and meta. I, and I understand that um, you rather use the word description, but the dictionaries don't don't do that. So you you know you kind of out there on your own. But don't the dictionary even say that you can't define a word with a word? And when they say definition of definition, I don't think you really understand what the word of mean. That mean of the essence of. So they define in the word no, definition no. with definition by saying definition of definition. That's meta, like I said. No. So they use a meta think. language. So they trying to they're avoid not. using the word description. But no, go they, ahead. They, no, they're actually not avoiding the using the word description. It only appears that way is because that the, we're looking up the word definition. But if I were to look up a different word, it'll say the definition of and then a different word that I'm looking up. But that's a figurative part so, of speech. Now so we can look that up on what you were just talking about by figurative and literal. Uh, no, you're yeah, not going to do it. Up, up, up. Not going to do it. I'm going to say that, peace. That, definition, say, that, 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 that when you use the word like tuning in. See, no, no, no. So you about to spark it up. Nope. So no, I ain't, Okay, okay. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, would y'all check this out, though? You mentioned yeah, just let him close out. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You said something about can God lift a rock, uh, make a rock that he can't lift? I'd like to address that another time. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, you know, so so let me let me um close out with my final. Uh, oh, oh, Amy Cat may want to um say something too. I forgot. I'm, I'm where my man is at. I'm just saying, but no, uh, I was just gonna say that um I, I know um on the chat Jason uh Thames had asked about the panel link. We're closing out, but um for for you and for anybody that's watching. Uh, we always uh, pin the, the panel link on the top of the chat. That's the one that you see with the blue background and the yellow uh, uh, letters with Sashuma, Animedinech, and Black. So, yeah, we always pin the, uh, the link, and everybody's always welcomed, you know. Yeah, so just that. All right, so I just want to close out and and um, with a statement and, and a question. So the statement is that, you know, this, the conversation is good, it's long, end up being long. But I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in, uh, hanging, because I know I know we get different. Like this, everybody who's watching now is probably nobody that was watching <laughs> from the beginning. Like every, like we, we get like a rotation <laughs> of people. It's probably everybody in London right now because the time zones or whatever. But um, so here's a, here's a question to think about. I'm not expecting an answer because I'm, I'm off a of demonstration uh, anyway. But here's a question. And I don't expect an answer. It's just to put on your mind for, for next conversation. Um, can, okay, here's the question. I'm writing it down. I'm letting writing you know. It, I'm writing it down word for word. Okay, you writing it down? All right, here we go. Yeah. Okay, okay. So can all of you, now here, listen closely. Can all of you 